Well, when you have some uh, plethora of recruits that, uh, well, I shouldn't say a plethora, that might be a, a bit uh, hyperbolic, but when you have uh, some late ads to the class around noon, that uh, takes me a while to gather myself. It's been a great day. Um, and I don't think that's, again, I don't think that's being hyperbolic at all. This has been a good, good day to be a Hawkeye. And I, there is more to come. Believe you me, there is more to come. Um, I alluded to, and, and again, I'm not breaking any news. I alluded to the fact that uh, there was at least one kid. I brought this up yesterday on my show with Mark Rogers. There's at least one kid that is going to be committing to Iowa that is going to be signing with Iowa. Um, and I can tell you that he has not announced yet. So Brian Allen, I see the real Hayden commenting on Brian Allen, big defensive end. Yes. Huge, huge get for Iowa, huge get uh, for Iowa. To land. Now you may not say it's a huge get, but of course, one of the late additions to the class and I just tweeted out about this uh, less than an hour ago, um, was the addition of Rock Valley athlete Landon Van Kikerix. And, of course, he is projected by most to be a linebacker at the next level. Um, but I know he's just a two-star kid. You want to say just a two-star kid, but he was recruited by LeVar Woods. Um, he's an in-state kid, was offered by – he had interest from from Wisconsin, according to Rivals, but he was offered by a couple of Dakota schools. I believe you and I was in on him as well. He was, uh, I believe, initially – and I, I wasn't as up to uh, speed on Ke uh, Van Kiekerix, but, uh, yeah, I know South Dakota was high on him. But the, just the fact that LeVar Woods <laughs> is the guy recruiting, I think we can all have faith in LeVar Woods and his ability to – um, evaluate talent. So they add Van Kikerix, they add Brian Allen Jr. Um, and we are going to talk a little bit about the guys who have already signed today that were committed already. Um, and so again, just lots to talk about. I'm going to get the caller lines open now. Okay. We're going to be here throughout the afternoon. So stick with us. If you're getting house chores done or you're here in Iowa waiting for this big storm to come in and rock your world, <laughs> keep us on in the background. I hope that our internet uh, and our electricity stays uh, on throughout this afternoon so we can continue to uh, take your calls and take your comments. Um, but let me get the number up here for everybody so that we can open the lines. If you want to, again, comment on the class, whatever you want to comment on, we're welcome. To this is an open call-in show. If I can get the right number here. All right. 515-635-1601. I want to mention something else too. We're going to have a couple people dropping by our show. So I'm not going to give away who those individuals are at this point. Um, and things always change. So I don't want to, I don't want to put myself out there. Maybe I already have, but Stick with us because this is going to be not just a show of me ranting. This is going to be a fun show. And again, we'll continue to keep you up to speed. I know a couple announcements still to come. Uh, before we get to that, let's go ahead and take our first call here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hi, this is Alex. Alex, how are you today? Doing good. I'm at school. <laughs> what class? I have open. Oh, you got open. Okay, so are you uh, are you in the bathroom? Are you calling from study uh, hall? I, yeah, study hall. Nice. Appreciate the uh, dedication to the show. Um, with, with Brian Allen committing to Iowa, what does he bring? Well, that's a good question. Um, I mean, he's a four-star kid. He obviously helps Iowa. I tweeted this out right before the show started that I think he certainly helps Iowa in pass rush. I mean, that's what Iowa needs right now. That defensive line really struggled this year at times with just straight up pass rush. I think he's going to help them immediately there as far as competition. I don't know if he'll play right away. They've got depth. And of course, Logan Jones is a guy who didn't play this year due to injury, but I, I think he just helps pass rush. That's, that's one of their big, that was one of their bigger needs in my opinion for this class late was to get a couple guys who could pass rush. And of course they got that with Allen and Aaron Graves, I think is, is it got a chance whether he stays inside or, or stays outside or in, he's got a chance to help them in pass rush as well. Honestly, I think Orlando traded from coming to Iowa. Well, 
He's he's going to be announcing in what thirty minutes, forty five minutes. Yeah. If that, if I mean, again, there's at least one more domino to fall, and uh, maybe more. So TJ Hall, TJ Hall. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I hope so. Hopefully, going to both. That'll be that'll be awesome. And we've still got K. Ron Crawford, I believe, as yet to announce as well. So, um, yep. thank you so much. Appreciate the call, Alex. Stay safe. Yep. Appreciate that call from Alex. Staying true to the show, despite the fact that he's in school right now. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm not responsible for any education being missed by our young listeners this afternoon. Appreciate him calling in. LH, go Hawks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, And I want to remind everybody, too, that if you do call, we've got one line open right now. Okay? So we just have the one caller line. So kind of have to do this one at a time. We don't have a queue like we do for our Iowa football post-game shows over at the other channel. Um, Spaceboy74, who is Brian Allen Jr.? Well, uh, he's a four-star defensive end out of Connecticut, top player in the state, according to at least what I've seen. Uh, and, of course, he's a late ad, but just committed today if you're, you're late to the party. St. Thomas More School in Oakdale. Um, and again, you know, he's not the biggest kid. He's six, four, two fifty. I say not the biggest. I mean, he's a big body. Um, he's not Aaron Graves big, but he is a big body. Um, and I think what he does again, we, we, I mentioned this to Alex here a moment ago is he immediately helps the, um, search for a dynamic pass rusher. Cause remember Zach Van Valkenburg is gone. All right. And he's been the best pass rusher on this team. And in Zach's defense, um, he probably shouldn't be the number one pass rusher on a Big Ten team, especially an Iowa defensive line. Um, I thought he really excelled last year playing opposite Chauncey Golston, Davion Nixon, of course, was on that team as well. And I thought this line kind of hit a wall midway through the season. Not that they didn't produce and, and they weren't good against the run, but I did feel that uh, a bit of a wall was hit. Um, Joe Evans, same thing, really good pass rusher, a little undersized. Of course, the kid from Ames, um, great motor. And that's what Kelvin Bell preaches. You can tell he wants to get guys who have great motors. You could say the same thing about Brian Allen, good motor, um, and has a potential to get bigger and really become a force on the outside. I think Aaron Graves, by the way, and I see uh, the comment from John, Aaron Graves, he does, he looks absolutely terrific. Um, we interviewed Aaron here a couple weeks ago. We'll be releasing that interview soon. I meant to release it this week, but with everything happening with the commitment of, uh, Marco Linez from New Jersey and, and just everything going on with signing day. Um, I don't want to, I don't want his interview to get overlooked. Um, so we're going to make sure we release that at a good time, um, on our, on our podcast. So let's go ahead and get to our next call. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the storm. Who's on the line. Uh, this is Craig. Uh, I live in Israel actually. And, um, if I could, I just, I don't call that often, obviously, but I just want to say three things and then you can address them. I know it's, uh, sure. this is about recruiting, but I heard you talk uh, today about a couple things. First thing I want to say is I think that people aren't giving, um, these two quarterbacks. We have enough opportunity. I, especially the new guy. He only played a couple games. All of a sudden, I can't remember his name. Padilla. The, Padilla. Yeah, Padilla. He only played a, He only uh, played in a few games. Um, and it seems to me that you've got to give somebody uh, more time to before you decide that he's not going to do the job. Uh, I also feel he's, uh, he was very accurate on a lot of those rollout passes. And uh, he shows a lot of potential. Uh, and I just think I, 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 I just heard so much criticism and, and as if, um, as if it's already been decided that he can't cut it. And I think that's, that's not fair to him. Well, I, I, uh, I, re- I respect your opinion. I, let me do, if I would just respond, if you, if, if I may, um, I, I, t- I respect where you're coming from, sir. And I, I, by no means am trying to dismiss Alex Padilla. I will say this. My and, and maybe you're referring to my conversation with Mark Rogers yesterday just about yeah. going out and getting a transfer portal quarterback. The reason why I'm so high on that idea, one thing is they lose a transfer quarterback in Deuce Hogan. He's gone. Um, 
so you automatically lose a level of competition. The other thing is here, regardless of who starts next year, you need to have guys who are elevating your performance. So, I mean, regardless if you get a transfer portal quarterback who ends up starting, maybe Alex Padilla wins the job. I mean, I've said several times this spring practice, it needs to be a wide open competition at quarterback. So whoever wins the job, maybe it's Padilla, maybe it's Petrus, maybe it's Joey Labus or somebody from the portal. But I just think there needs to be more competition in the quarterback room this this spring because I think we both agree the quarterback was not necessarily a strong suit of this team this past year, whether that's Padilla's fault or not. I only only got three or four starts, um, and, and I'm not criticizing him for young. what he He's only in his second year. So You're right. Um, you know, so I agree with I, I heard you say that that there needs to be more competition in the quarterback room and that makes sense to me. That was something that you said that I thought really made sense. But I, I, I think that I've just heard uh, there's just been a feeling, especially after the Michigan game, that um, you know that, that Padilla can't cut it and uh, you know I think it's too early to say. Uh, the, the other the other the second point I wanted to make was um, the offensive line. I think that. Uh, all the criticism of the offensive line, basically it's an undersized offensive line. And everybody said that, that they need to develop and grow physically in the off season. And yeah. I think that can happen. And I, and I feel like um, the idea that the, the team, a, a 10 and three team, um, that it, it's as if uh, Kirk did a, a bad job. I feel the opposite. I feel this team, a very young team, with an undersized offensive line, with a, a defensive line that uh, that was inexperienced, basically, I think he got more out of this team than probably he should have. I think they overachieved. Now, can you can, of- can you see the yeah. other side of it though, too? If 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 we're talking about perspective, and I'm not disagreeing with you, and 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 you've probably heard me say I'm a huge Kirk Ferentz fan, but he's not above criticism. But would you agree with the fact that? the defensive unit has been elite. The special teams unit has been elite and the offense has been more than poor, whether it be because of the offensive lines youth or not, the offense has been pretty darn bad. Can we agree with that? We can, I can, I fully agree with it. It's, it's obvious the numbers, the numbers support that. I mean, there isn't, you can't argue with the statistics, but I'm just saying, given the fact that you, that, that this, that, that the offense uh, uh, wasn't as young and I feel can get better. Yes. I think there's a lot of reason for optimism. And Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the last thing I wanted to say. Sure. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember. Ah, maybe I've said enough. I can't. Well, I, no, no. I think but, of something. I'll give you a call again. Let, uh, me, just but, res- um, let me just say one thing yeah. before, before you hang up. Um, I do agree with you pretty much completely with what you had to say about the offensive line. I don't think the offensive line and the youth with that line can completely excuse what happened on the field. Cause again, I think there's issues at quarterback. I think there are right. issues with play calling. I think there are issues with clock management. So those things go far beyond youth up front, but I will say this, I've been very outspoken about, I thought Iowa has done an excellent job, especially the class of 2021 with recruiting up front. And I have a lot of, I have high hopes for Connor Colby, I've got high hopes for Mason Richmond, David, David Cobb, Jennings, Dunker, all the kids they brought in last year. So I agree with you. I think the line will be just fine. I don't think Iowa needs to go out and get a bunch of portal kids from, for the offensive line. I agree with you right. there. Um, and okay. I think it will take some time. I was disappointed with some of the performance from the, from the guards. Um, you know, Jack Plum mm-hmm. is an upperclassman. He hasn't right. really developed the way you would hope he, he could. But you're right. There are a lot of young pieces there. Well, I, I hope we get some some guards. I agree with you. I, I did remember the last thing I wanted to say. You made okay. a good point also uh, when you when you said that um, Iowa is um, is number six in terms of putting people in the pros. But what I did what what I thought was an unfair thing that was said between you and the other fella. Um, the fact that this is a developmental program. And, and the fact that they place so many in doesn't mean that we're going to compete year in, year out with, with uh, teams that bring in the talent right away because those, they have so many more players already ready. And you're right. I think when you're, when you're developing talent, it's, it's going um, it's, it's to be sort of straddled. In other words, you're going to get some of them ready and some of them aren't, and it takes time. It so does. I think the, the 
logical conclusion for me is that, uh, again, that they're getting the most out of, out of what they're getting, and, and, but you can't compare them still with the major programs that are bringing in these top-notch players, four and five stars, um, and they're ready to go. You see what well, I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do know what you're saying, and 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 I, I see what you're saying, and I, I agree. I don't expect Iowa to be grabbing Big Ten championships like the likes of Ohio State or even a Penn State, but I do compare. Right. I think it's fair to compare Iowa to a program like Wisconsin, is it not? Because Wisconsin's not pulling in a bunch of four or five star recruits, and yet they are winning the West every two to three years at least. Right. Although I do think Wisconsin has Milwaukee. I think Wisconsin has more fertile ground for bringing in in some uh, you could be right you could be you could there. yeah i think you could be right on that i will say i was done very well in wisconsin this class with with several guys right. from uh, the wisconsin area and of course i was done well um you think about nate stanley a kid from wisconsin and then torin young was also a wisconsin kid so you're right though i think wisconsin certainly has the upper hand there um and i think your criticism criticism is fair i don't have any problem taking that criticism and um mm-hmm. you know my big thing is I do believe with how elite this defense is and how elite the special teams unit is. I think the special teams unit is going to be great for years because I think LeVar Woods, as long as he's here, is going to be terrific. terrific. I just think this offense, that there's a clock. This offense has got to get better. And I think you'd probably agree with that. Where it starts, Mm -hmm. that's up for debate. There's a lot of different areas that need attention, though. And I think they're addressing part of those those needs right now in recruiting. Okay. Well, I appreciate uh, you talking to me, Corey, and I appreciate enjoy your it. program. So, Thank you so much for listening all the way from Israel. I enjoy listening to Don a lot. So, I'll All right. You take care. I'm able to listen to you, both of you. Okay, okay. Take care. Bye. You as well. Bye-bye. Well, I want to know the time in Israel right now. Can somebody tell me that? Current time in Israel. I'm going to Google this because uh, I really appreciate that last caller. Hope he wasn't paying for long distance. I guess it's only 8.59 p.m. in Israel. Man, how is that possible? How is that possible? I guess my uh, my time, I figured it'd be like 8.50 a.m. Thursday. Appreciate that call and uh, some prime time listening from our uh, our caller there. And and uh, certainly, uh, I, I see where he's coming from. And, and, and I, you know, I, I, I agree. There's There are certainly young pieces... Uh, of that offensive line. I mentioned Mason Richmond. Um, we, we've talked about Nick DeYoung. I know a lot of people. I, I, I have not been, I've tried not to be critical of individuals that are young, you know, specifically Colby, Richmond, and DeYoung. Those kids are, you know, either true freshmen, redshirt freshmen. I think uh, Nick DeYoung is a sophomore. They're all underclassmen. Um, now, I think it's fair to look at what has happened with Jack Plum. Kyler Schott, Cody Ince, Justin Britt. Those are four guys, and I'm not saying those guys have been terrible, but those guys are three-plus-year guys. And so, you know, where's the development? And, and I'm not blaming those kids. If if either any one of those four kids have fallen behind in development, I that's coaching, right? That's, that's, that's development with your coaching staff that potentially could be pointed to your strength and conditioning program. I know Don Patterson has talked about some technique issues up front, which is concerning. Of course, Iowa's head coach, Kirk Ferentz, is an offensive line guru. Um, You lose Chris Doyle. Is that a factor? There are a lot of different factors at play here. But I do agree with the caller on this. I think the offensive line will be just fine. I really, I think it will be okay. Um, I do think I I would encourage the coaching staff, from my perspective, I think the coaching staff needs to look at schematics, especially in the run game. We've talked about the outside zone run that just never seems to work. I know that's oversimplifying it. I'm not a coach. But it doesn't take a coach to, to see that the outside zone just doesn't work. You're getting blown up time and time and time again. So I think that's more schematics than, um, you know, I know he Kirk would point to execution there. So it's probably a combination of that. But if it's not working and it's it's you've got years of sample size with multiple different units and dozens and dozens of players and you're getting the same results, at some point I would think you have to look in the mirror and say, maybe we need to change how we do things up front. And I think Kirk knows how to coach. I think Kirk knows, I would trust Kirk that he knows how to coach um, zone blocking, right? I think he knows what he's doing there. But again, I know the rules have changed on cut blocking um, and it's just not working. 
It's just not working. And maybe we're not getting the right recruits in here at running back to execute it. And maybe Jazzy and Patterson and, and Caleb Johnson, these two kids that I know Jazzy's already signed. I'm expecting Caleb to sign today as well. Maybe those guys will change things. I, I, that very well could happen. Um, but I guess my point is that offensive line will be just fine. I think it's important for Kirk and, and the staff to look at the run game and how we can change schematics or play calling or both to make the run game more effective because the run game just isn't good enough. I think we'd all agree with that. The numbers, the numbers indicate that now the caller brought up the quarterback um, competition. I respect where he's coming from. Um, I am not out down and out on Alex Padilla. And if I've seemed to have been that um, that's certainly not what I intend to uh, portray as it, as it relates to Alex. I think um, if, if I was, if I was making a decision, and of course I'm not there for, for practice every day, but if I was making a decision as to who starts in the Citrus Bowl, I believe he has more upside. I think Alex Padilla has more upside. And he's proven to have more upside as of right now. Um, again, just from what I've seen. So that's my opinion. But I do think Iowa needs to go to the, the portal for a quarterback. Um, now, quarterbacks, it's going to be tough to get a quarterback who's leaving a backup position unless he's guaranteed to start where he's coming. So that that's the tricky thing. But at some point, you have to be able to tell whether it be a Zach Calzada from Texas A&M or a Tyson Fumichan from uh, Clemson. you got to be able to tell them, look, we're going to give you a chance to play. Now, you're going to have to earn it, but we're going to give you a chance to play. Now, maybe some schools, you know, UCLA, I saw, got got the kid from Central Florida. Um, we saw Washington. They grabbed Michael Penix. I don't know what guarantees, if any, are being made to these kids. Maybe maybe there are no guarantees being made to the kids. But um, we, we've seen programs be able to, to have success with transfer quarterbacks. Joe Burrow, perfect example, goes from Ohio State to LSU and is terrific. Justin Fields goes from Georgia to uh, to Ohio State. Is terrific. Now I know those are your your top notch programs. I get that, um, but there's no reason to think that a transfer quarterback could not be successful here at Iowa. But again, appreciate the call there and respect the opinion of our caller. Um, absolutely do. Mark, Caleb Johnson, Jazian Patterson, absolutely huge gets for this coaching staff for this offense. Again. Iowa's been close over the years under Kirk Ferentz. They've been very, very close at landing the big boys. I'm talking Melvin Gordon, Eno Benjamin. You can go down the list. They've been very, very close. Sean Green was a huge get, right? They were able to get his academics. He was able to get his academics in line, and it was big. But could Caleb Johnson and Jazzy and Patterson be the backs of the future? Certainly, I like what I see from Gavin Williams. LaShawn Williams has looked good. Again, those guys are young. I hope to see a lot of both of those players on January 1st. The third scholarship kid on uh, on Iowa's roster right now um, is the kid from Des Moines, um, whose name escapes me at this moment, and I'll think of it uh, in a moment. But, um, you know, I don't even know if he stays at running back. Does he stay at running back? Does he transition to linebacker? I think that's a question. But I think Caleb Johnson, again, Caleb Johnson, Jazzy, and Patterson, these are some guys that are going to have opportunities at playing time right away. John Jazian did sign. All right. So Caleb, yes, he he's confirmed signing. I, I, I guess I maybe missed that or maybe I just overlooked it. But Jazian Patterson has signed. He did announce that on Twitter. It was posted on Twitter and I shared it from the Hawkeye of the Storm on Twitter. So you want to see that. Go ahead and follow my account. You'll be able to see that retweet. Um, Spaceboy74 concerned about the running backs not having signed yet, too. Again, Patterson signed. I was sort of concerned about that, too, because we hadn't heard a lot from Patterson. Um, but he is he has signed. Absolutely. J uh, Jermaine, good to see you here as well. Um, I was not yelling at Don Spaceboy74. Uh, I will say this. I did have a conversation with Don, and I think Don is excited about this class. So if anybody's wondering that, I think Don is excited about this class as well. Our line is open. Let me pop up the number here for anybody that wants to call. Our line is open. If you want to call about the Iowa offense, the Iowa defense, whatever, recruiting, we're here, of course, talking about this class, which has turned into a very, very solid class, potentially a top 25 class. Now, do rankings really matter, especially we're talking about a developmental school in Iowa? Probably not. But again, 
we talked a lot about how Iowa's class of 2021 was strong, a top 25 class, which is rare here. And the fact of the matter is they have an opportunity to have another top 25 class this year. And that is something to be excited about, whether you uh, read too much into the rankings uh, or not. Um, again, our number 515-635-1601, 515-635-1601. Good to see you here, Erica, as well. And Stephen, it is a great day to be a Hawkeye. It's always a great day, but uh, again, it, it's not often. This is sort of uh, an interesting day, and I don't want to give all the credit to Xavier Wampa. you got to give a lot of credit to these coaches for how they've recruited. I think um, Tyler Barnes, Kirk Ferentz's uh, son-in-law, deserves a lot of credit as a recruiting coordinator here. Um, certainly, he, he has helped, but yeah, springtime... He's here as well. Xavier committing, I think, has sort of, I don't want to call it an avalanche. I think it's far too soon to be calling it that. But the Brian Allen commitment, I have to think, now he maybe he would have committed either way, but I have to think that it doesn't hurt that Brian Allen knew that he's going to have a five-star Xavier Womp playing behind him throughout his career. That 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 could not have hurt it. Uh, hurt it? That's not a word. Could not have hurt. Um his chances of coming here in Iowa landing that commitment. So um, big time uh, get for Iowa there. And, and again, as we stay on here live throughout the afternoon, we're going to keep tabs on the latest in recruiting. And if we get any breaking news, we're certainly going to get that to you ASAP. So if there are a few moments of silence during our show, um, I ask that you please understand and, um, Stay here with us. If you uh, have anything to comment, you can certainly comment in the chat or give us a call. Um, John, that Rock, Rock Valley school up here is stout. It is. And again, Iowa benefited from that today with a kid who, again, flying under the radar, but someone that I believe Iowa will be able to uh, develop. Right. No, have no doubt about that, especially with LeVar Woods and what he's been able to do on special teams has been incredible. Space boy, who do we think for our awesome New Jersey, Connecticut recruits over the over the years? Well, Ken O'Keefe is one. I think he's done a really nice job out east. Um, I mentioned the Marco Lainez commitment. As you probably know, his quarterbacks coach, his private quarterbacks coach, um, is a kid or gets a kid is a uh, instructor from out east and is the same guy who is the quarterbacks coach for Nate Stanley and is the same quarterback's coach for Spencer Petras. So that has helped. I think there are several factors at play. Again, Ken O'Keefe is one. Um, you'd have to think that Iowa has used, like Kelton Copeland, I mean, what he's been able to do, Mir Smith-Marset uh, was from Jersey. Um, you know, obviously Arlen, Arlen Bruce and Keegan Johnson, those are more local kids. Nico Regani is from Connecticut. That has helped as well. So I would say Kelton Copeland and O'Keefe, they've demonstrated their roots out, out east. Um, and, uh, I don't know, you know, certainly Don Patterson having his roots out at Connecticut, you know, maybe I, I haven't really talked to Don, you know, whether he had conversations with any of these recruits or their families, I have no idea, but certainly he had connections to that program, uh, having been the quarterback's coach for UConn, uh, before retiring. So I was gotten some nice, nice connections across the country. Certainly they've also been able to, to uh, sustain some roots down in Florida, which has helped, especially skill position talent wise. You think about Makai Sargent, now Jazzy and Patterson, they're both, uh, they're both on. Um, and um, yeah, they've just been, they've been effective at being able to uh, start to hit areas of the country where they haven't always had a lot of success. Alex Padilla is from Colorado and they were able to get him to come here. And of course he was a fairly highly touted kid. Um, Jermaine Jackson, do you think Joe Evans could possibly move to linebacker in the spring? I, I seriously doubt it, Jermaine, because linebacker is just really thick right now. It's really deep. Um, Jack Campbell, Seth Benson, Justin Jacobs, those guys are going to be here a while. Now, maybe Jack Campbell has a stupendous um, year next year and he leaves early. That's possible, but I don't see Joe Evans leaving or, or moving, I should say, to linebacker. That would surprise me. Again, 
they're going to have to develop these kids who are coming in. They're going to have to develop Aaron Graves. I think he's the closest to being Big Ten ready. But again, we're also evaluating Aaron Graves against pretty m- modest. Let's also use that word, modest competition. Um, you know, kid from Gowrie, well, actually Dayton, Iowa. He played at, at uh, Southeast Valley in Gowrie, Iowa. Small little community. And again, he's been dominant, dominant, dominant. His motor has been exceptional. Um, he has shown the ability to use power, use finesse. He, he's got all the tools in the toolbox to be an exceptional defensive lineman at the Big Ten level, but he's going to have to develop. So I think they're going to need Evans next year, Jermaine. I really do. Um, you know, they're losing Van Valkenburg. That's another factor. You hope Logan Jones can come along because, again, we had heard good things about him. I feel like Logan Lee really developed on the interior. You've got Logan Lee. you got Noah Shannon, who I'm assuming is coming back next to him. Um, and then again, Logan Jones, potentially, if he can get healthy, would help them up front. Um, and then, of course, Joe Evans. Deontay Craig has had moments. He's had moments this year. They've got lots of pieces. But Kelvin Bell wants to run seven, eight guys. So Joe, there's no reason to think Joe Evans would would uh, not get playing time, even if somebody were to emerge who was uh, young. And, and certainly, you know, it's possible that a guy like uh, – you know, Aaron Graves gets playing time this coming year. It's possible because, again, I think Iowa needs edge, ru- edge rushers. And they're going to get that with Brian Allen and with Aaron Graves. All right. Um, let's just see here. And again, we are, our line is open if anybody wants to give us a call. Just grabbing some film here. So the latest year from recruiting today, Brian Allen, of course, committing from Connecticut. Um, four-star kid by some. Um, and he has played... According to his profile, and I'm not as familiar with I'll just admit this. I'm not as familiar with him besides just tape that I've been able to see and pull up over the past 24 hours. Um, you know, he's not the biggest. He's he's listed on his uh, on his personal account, 6'3", 250 now. So he's got some size, but is he, uh, you know, is he going to stay at defensive end? Is he going to move to linebacker? I think that's a possibility. Um, but again, he helps Iowa all around. And again, he's a guy who was not committed to, uh, heading into today. He's a guy who just committed. So I was landed two late commits today um, in Brian, Brian Allen. And then um, the kid from rock Valley, whose name I have a hard time pronouncing um, Landon van Kikerix. So, um, and again, he's a guy who's flying under the radar. There's no question about that. Um, Carson may signed on today. Of course, everybody was anticipating that four-star quarterback out of Jones, Oklahoma. Good to have him on. That will provide competition in the quarterback room. I don't know if he's enrolling early. If he enrolls early, it's an opportunity for him to really push Labus, Padilla, uh, and Petrus. That, that's, that would be great. But again, um, that's yet to be seen. John, was there a change in recruiting staff about three years ago? I don't know when Tyler Barnes started here. Um, I'd have to look back. Um I, I just know this. Tyler Barnes is a go-getter, and I think I, I think he's been a terrific addition to this staff. You know, nobody's nobody's crying nepotism over Tyler Barnes um, being uh, the the recruiting coordinator for Iowa. He has been terrific. Erica showing her support for Padilla. In Padilla, we trust. Um, I'm all for him starting in the bowl game, and if he performs well, then then I could change my tune about where I feel about about the quarterback spot. I still think Iowa should be looking into the portal space boy Ken O'Keefe discussion. Yes. He's the highest paid quarterbacks coach in the country. Highest paid quarterbacks coach in the country. I'm not saying that Ken O'Keefe has not been developing quarterbacks, but has Ken O'Keefe and this staff been developing quarterbacks enough to, you know, rationalize being the highest paid quarterbacks coach in the country. I think that's a question. I think that's a fair question. I don't think he, I don't think he would or should be offended by that question because, again, you you earn what you get, right? Um, has he earned being the, t- the highest-paid quarterbacks coach in the country? 
you be the the uh, judge of that. The real Hayden. I'm not talking or thinking about QBs today. Too much other good things happening for the future of the program. I ain't doing it today. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I will say this, Hayden. Carson May signing on today was big, and Linez committing was just two week, two uh, days ago. So, they, you know, they, this is still a good day for quarter, for the quarterback position. And, yes, you're right. The, the transfer portal has nothing to do with signing day today. There are a lot of uh, really good pieces coming in from everywhere, and that's that's a positive. Bora Rem, the OL needs a right tackle and a guard. I think they'll have it. I think they'll have it. Again, they were very young um, at they were, I shouldn't say they were very young at tackle. They weren't real young on the interior. Tyler Linderbaum's a, a, a you know a, what a fourth year kid. Um, you know you've got Shot who is a senior. Ince and Britt have been here three plus years. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy into the interior of the line was really young. It was young where Connor Colby was playing because of Connor Colby. But my question is, where's the development of those other guys? And again, not attacking any of those players personally, but I'm just questioning where is the development of those other guys? I think that's fair. And again, do I think they'll develop? Yes, I do. I, I, I don't have any question. Again, David, David Cobb is back there. Jennings Dunker is back there. Um, you know, we mentioned Colby. They've got lots of pieces. Lots of pieces. My, uh, you know, Michael Mislinski is another kid, another offensive lineman who came in during that stellar 2021 class. They've got po- a possibility of really developing this coming spring and summer. Summer will be huge. Strength and conditioning happens during the summer. Um, and I was going to need that because, yeah, there were some technique issues that need to be fixed. But there were also some strength um, and conditioning issues that... Uh, were were apparent from every from everywhere on the line besides probably Tyler Linderbaum who doesn't seem to have much of a weakness anywhere. And let's just think about this too, in in response to Bora Rem's comment here, with Tyler Linderbaum most likely going pro, that changes a lot because now you know now is Matt Fagan going to step step in there and play center? Are you moving Cody Ince into center? I I don't think that would happen. I think Kyler. I, I don't know who else has played center. I think Shot has been at least in the rotation at some point in his career. But, man, you need a true center in there. It'll probably be Fagan. If, if, if Linderbaum leaves, which is likely, it will probably be Matt Fagan at center. But, man, you, you, you an offensive line that already struggled this year in on, on, pass, you know, on pass defense and in um, pass defense, pass protection, and, of course, in rushing offense. So my question is, where do they head from here? Without Linderbaum... Do they take a step forward cumulatively? Because even if pieces of your line develop, you're losing a stellar one of the best one of the best offensive linemen Iowa's ever had. That that that's not an exaggeration. Linderbaum is one of the best offensive linemen that Iowa has ever had, and you're going to lose him most likely. So that's a question. Joseph, we either get good O line and quarterback, or everyone else is good, and the O line and QB don't do well. When we'll all fit together, and do any of these recruits help with that? Good question. Very good question. Again, Carson May is a kid. I saw Tom Kakert compared him to uh, Nate Stanley this morning. Um, one thing I've noticed with Carson is he does know how to take a little bit of the heat off the ball, which is something Nate struggled with, especially early. I don't think he ever really improved with that. Nate always threw the, the fastball. Everything was a fastball with Nate. And I do give credit to Spencer Petras. Spencer has learned how to take some of that pace off his deep ball, and that has helped. Um, I've, I think I've been fair to Spencer. Um, I, I think Spencer is the best quarterback on this roster. I don't, again, we haven't seen much of Labus at all, but as far as throwing the deep ball, Petrus has been exceptional. He's better than Alex Padilla in that regard. Um, now I would also give Padilla the nod in several other categories, but Petrus has a really nice deep ball. Um, and he's learned to take some heat off of it. And I could say the same thing about may from what I've seen on tape. Now, Carson may from Jones, Oklahoma has not competed at the level. Um, that would necessarily be a direct indication that he's ready to play as an underclassman in the Big Ten. Um, I don't know what level or what uh, uh, division he played at in Oklahoma, but it it, it, it was not necessarily um, best of the best. So he's got some things to prove. Again, if he enrolls early, that would help. As far as the offensive line is concerned, again, Joseph, I agree with the caller earlier. I think the line will be just fine. I think the biggest issue right now, personnel-wise, the biggest concern I have moving forward personnel-wise is quarterback. 
and you may criticize me for it and you may say that's that's just frankly not true that's fine we can have a difference of opinion but i believe the biggest issue right now is quarterback because i just don't know if the pieces are there i don't know if the right people are there i think the right people are there on the offensive line i just think again like the caller said it takes development it takes time it takes time in the weight room time in spring practice to get all these guys to fit Linderbaum leaving is a question, but I think what I was done with May could help. Kale Crow is another kid nearby here, actually, from Huxley, who's coming in offensive line. Um, who certainly Jack Dotzler, another kid from we mentioned Wisconsin and how I was done in Wisconsin. He is coming in as well and should compete for playing time at tackle. Maybe not next year, but at some point. Again, these are two big kids. I think Crow's like six six, and I believe Dots are six seven. So these are tackles. These aren't interior linemen. These are our tackles. So they've got pieces um, to be really good on the interior. I've heard people suggest that maybe Connor Colby slides out to tackle. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, you know, again, to play a whole season at guard, I know you want to kind of be interchangeable with your pieces up front there, but to play a whole season at guard as a freshman, I would think that would sort of be going in the wrong direction, trying to slide him over to tackle. But again, I could be wrong on that. And I'm no off offensive line guru whatsoever. Our line is open. If you want to give us a call, 515-635-1601, 515-635-1601. Um, and we're going to be here most of the afternoon talking with you, talking with some other people. We won't get into that yet. But stick around here all afternoon and share in the comments and the uh, discussion. Absolutely. Spaceboy74, can we just take a, a second to appreciate how classy it was for Ference to call Stoops to set up the donation fund for Kentucky? Absolutely. And we are proud that he is, is Iowa's head coach. As much as I, I'll criticize Kirk for the offensive woes, and and he can take that, and I think he he's he's an accountable guy. Um, his class and what he brings to this program, not only from an image standpoint, but from a fundraising standpoint, um, from a human standpoint, and, and certainly what he's been able to do with retaining guys like LeVar Woods, Kelton Copeland, I think Kelvin Bell's been really good. LeVar Woods, of course, he, he deserves a lot of credit for what he does. And it's not wrong to want more, but it is, I think, wrong to not appreciate a good human being. And Iowa has that at head coach here at Iowa. Thank you, Brian. Devin Hilson, you're right. Devin Hilson, the third running back on the roster right now. And again, I don't know if he stays. I don't know if he'll stay at, at running back. I think maybe some of that, I wouldn't be surprised. I will actually, I will be surprised if Iowa moves him before spring. I think you want to get a, a spring practice to see what he can do. It's a thin group of running backs. I don't expect Ivory Kelly Martin to return. Now, could that happen? I'm sure anything's possible. Um, he could potentially come back. But uh, I, I think Devin Hilson is is probably here to, to stay at running back at least until summer. Um, and then again, if, if Jazzy and Patterson and Caleb Johnson, I don't know if either of those guys are enrolling early. But if either one of those guys develops in the spring, if they come on and develop, then I could see Iowa moving Devin Hilson over to a different position, whether that be linebacker or somewhere else in the field. Um, you know, he's, he's a little, he's a pretty big back actually. Um, and you know, they're going to use him on special teams, which you're going to do with any of these young kids, but I think he could probably move to a different position again, if Iowa needs it. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the storm. Who's on the line. Hey, Corey, this is Vincent. Hey Vincent. How are you today? Oh, pretty good. Um, just wanted to ask your uh, take on something. Um, I know you were kind of just covering uh, some of the linemen that we have in, in David Cobb and uh, Colby, Bo Stevens, the, you know, the high rated recruits yeah. that we have on the roster. Um, I was watching a couple other videos uh, at the uh, beginning of this week. And I wanted to get your take on how much of an impact that you think. And I, 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 I agree with um, Chris Doyle. Um, resigning from his position, but how much of an impact do you think his resignation has on the development of the players that we have um, on the roster now? I don't know how to quantify it, Vincent. Um, I would say yeah. there is an impact. I don't think there's any question there is going to be an impact if there hasn't already been an impact. I will say this, though. 
that my my heart wants me to believe that uh, I was not going to miss a beat with Raymond Brathwaite. That's what my heart tells me, but my head tells me there's got to be some effect. So I I don't think we're seeing that yet. You know, I've heard people say, well, you know, we've seen guys like Richmond and guys like DeYoung and even shot at times get bull rushed by the likes of Carl Aftis and Aiden Hutchinson right into the quarterback. Well, that, that these are also Carl Aftis and Aiden Hutchinson are going to be really good players on Sundays. So I don't think that you can necessarily point to that and say, well, that's Chris Doyle not being here. But I think we'll see the effects in the in the coming couple of seasons if if we're still having problems with strength up front. Um, I am concerned. My one concern, Vincent, with, with the offensive line and, and Chris Doyle being gone is we had our caller earlier from Israel bring up the fact that Iowa is really small up front. And yep. that's not necessarily an indictment on strength and conditioning. I think that's just how I was recruiting. Um, now, Jennings Dunker uh, is, I think, a fairly big kid. Of course, Jaden Proctor, if they can grab him next year, he's, he's I think, what you qualify <laughs> as a big kid. Um, oh, yeah. And then, for that matter, Kale Crow and, and uh, Jack Dots are, are sort of big kids. They're tall. Oh. Again, I would expect them to fill out a little bit more. So they may be trying to change that up in recruiting, but they've also kind of recruited – the, the smaller types. They're not Minnesota or Wisconsin. I think maybe that needs to change with Chris Doyle. If they do have a hit, if they take a hit with development because Chris Doyle is gone, it may be time to start recruiting bigger kids. I know they've stated publicly, I think Kirk has, has commented on, on how they recruit on the offensive line, that they don't specifically target smaller guys, but that does seem to be who they've gotten in recent cycles. Yeah. Um, you know, when you look at Wisconsin, you look at Minnesota, you see big bodies, you know, six between six five, six six, usually hovering over three hundred pounds. Um, so they just have big bodies up there, which makes their run game that much more effective. And I know Kirk likes to with the zone scheme that he runs, he likes to have more athletic um, uh, interior linemen or more athletic yeah. linemen, so they they're going to be smaller. But I, I just happened to catch these videos earlier this week, and they were interviewing former Hawkeye players in one of the questions that I kept um, uh, hearing them ask was um, the impact of Chris Doyle on their careers. They'd looked at or talked to Jordan Bernstein, Pat Anger. Um, I talked to everybody. Uh, Jake Doozy, multiple former Iowa players. They asked about Doyle and the impact and what they thought about you know his resignation. And the moral of the story that I got from every single player was it's a very unfortunate circumstance and every player has a different um, story when it comes to Doyle. Most of them didn't have any of the, the same uh, allegations that were, were brought forth by other players, but every single one of them had the same thing to say that they wouldn't be where they were at or have had the success that they had had without um, the guidance and structure of Chris Doyle. So it just, it makes me as a, a lifelong Hawkeye fan. I know Doyle's been there since I think since Kirk got there, right? Yeah. I think he was a, he was a lifer with Kirk. Yeah. So I just, it's a, I, I wasn't really thinking about it too much when the story first came out about the impact that that could have. But anyway, I just, I, I feel even though it was a, a necessary thing to do to have him resign, given the, what was going on, at that time, I really think there's going to be an impact. Kind of like you're saying, you're going to see it more so in the next couple of years um, with the loss of Chris Doyle. But I think also we may have seen the beginnings of that this year with the struggles with the offensive line um, and player development. Um, but you kind of answered that question. I just want to get your. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. You're a lifelong <laughs> Iowa fan. Um, are you tired of the zone zone running scheme? You know, I, I am. And my buddy's little brother is, is I don't want to quote him because he was telling it. Pat Anger is my buddy's little brother. Um, and I've kind of heard some conversations or had conversations with him. Um, we've always been a run oriented offense, run first oriented offense. That's probably never going to change. Um, I'm sure you'd probably agree on the same thing, at least from what I've heard. But yes, when you're asking me, do I want to see us go away from the zone scheme? Yeah, because we can't execute it. If you can't execute it, stop going right. to something that's not working because it constantly is putting you behind the chains or behind 
the chains when it comes to your offensive uh, series. You saw and, it just too much this year. And, and that would be my, yeah, that would be my only other complaint with the theory that, well, we're young, we're going to get better. Maybe they will get better. I have no doubt the offensive line is going to improve, but I think you alluded to it, Vincent. The, when is the last time the run game's been good? It's never good. So, I mean, I don't know. That- <laughs> it, it's just Sorry. 2008. 2008, the run game was really good. And you know why? Because they had an NFL running back in Sean Green here. And they've had yeah, decent kind of- years. Last year, you know what? Last year was good. That's what nobody talks about. Last year, the run game was actually really good. But I'm starting to think it was a bit of a outlier because of COVID. I don't know. How, I don't know how else to describe it. That offensive line. I mean, Iowa ran at will against teams last year. That's why we didn't talk about the offensive woes, uh, you know, in pass protection and, and at quarterback as much because once they got rolling and they won those six straight games, um, they were just running the ball down people's throats. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think. It, it, to me, we need to do a, um, or look at a different strategy when we're recruiting linemen. And I thought we did a really good job last year in getting four four star guys, highly touted guys, um, to kind of help bring more bulk to the O line. But I, in my own opinion, I just think we're too small in the interior, and it's because we're we're constantly sticking to that zone scheme where we have interior linemen that are you know, 6'2", 285, uh, just smaller linemen because we're trying to pull, reach. Um, and I know we want the athletic, or Kirk wants the athletic guys up front to be able to reach those blocks, but we're just not, we're not executing that. We're not, we're not making it happen. So, right. um, and, and again, you, you also have to make sure, because I've, I've coached myself, you have to play to your players or coach and scheme to your players' strengths. You Absolutely. Can't, and I know, Coaches have a bad habit, a very bad habit of sticking to what they feel is the best scheme fit for them as the coach. But if it's not working, you have to make changes to what you're doing to make sure that you're you're putting your players and your team in the best position to be successful. And I don't want to go on a rant, but no, that's um, fine. We're just, we're, to, to, anyway, to answer your question, am I tired of the zone scheme? Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm tired of seeing as soon as Petrus or Padilla hands the ball off to whoever the tailback is, if it's Goodson, who it was most of the year last year, uh, getting caught in the backfield for negative five, six, seven yards, and then we're in second and 15 versus, you know, second and eight, even if we only got a couple yards. Yeah, I'm tired of seeing it. We were much more successful um, on uh, double teaming um, the interior of the line when it comes to the defensive line to, to get gaps, to get holes, seem much more successful. Our zone scheme or our zone scheme sucks. We're not executing it, but yet we still stick to it, which I don't understand why. Um, I don't know. Also, we see other Big Ten teams do it. And I'm sorry for rambling, Corey, but um, I it's see right. other Big Ten teams in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. You're even seeing them doing it. They got big bodies up front to create uh, lanes uh, and to move a defensive line to move or to create just a running game for their backs. And Iowa just hasn't done that. It's so frustrating because it's just, you continually see the same thing. You see it. Yeah. No, I, I, I uh, see where you're coming from. And um, I also will say this, you, if you're wanting to execute what you're trying to execute, you recruit to your scheme, but you're right. Once you've got guys in here and if, if, if guys just aren't able to, if you're, Mid season or preseason, you realize that guys aren't able to execute the scheme. You've got to make, I'm not saying you overhaul the offense two days before the start of the season, but you have to make schematic adjustments to fit what you have there because you're not going to be able to change your roster mid season. So I think Iowa needs to do a better job mid season being able to make changes because it seems to me like we just, you know, the focus is, well, we got to get better. We got to get better. We got to be better. And that's, that's great. You want to develop, but development is largely for the offseason. And if you've got some serious development woes that prevent you from being able to execute, for instance, the zone blocking scheme that helps that run game along, I think you need to be able to to uh, make more adjustments, whether that just means running between the tackles more or whatever that may be. And that's up to the coaches to be able to figure out how to do that. Yeah, if you don't have the horses, you know, to do whatever you know scheme you're wanting to implement, you got to go with something else. You know, if I have a... Um, uh, a wide receiver room that doesn't have very good hands, you're probably not going to see me throwing it a whole lot. I'm going to do something different. You just have to, 
you got to change it up to be more successful. But I understand, you know, Kirk's been in the position that he's been for such a long time. It's hard to break habits, especially for coaches that have had success. So hopefully we'll see that um, uh, this upcoming year or for the 2022 season where we see some, some alterations to how, you know, the, the offensive line scheme is and the, what the running game scheme is. Real Absolutely. quick, um, I, I, I've been watching the, uh, uh, re- re- or excuse me, watching the recruiting um, stuff. I know you said we just picked up two recruits today. I saw the kid from Iowa. Who was the other one from Connecticut you were saying? Brian Allen. Kid on the screen. Brian Allen then. Jr. from um, Oakdale, Connecticut. Uh, defensive end slash um, outside linebacker. He's a little undersized at defensive end, but he is 250 pounds according to his his uh, huddle profile. And I, I really didn't know a whole lot about Brian and his recruitment, but I know at least according to some metrics, he's a four star and he does have a bit of Deontay Craig in him. That's just the first guy that if you want to, you know, we always love to play the comparison game, but he, he looks like he's got a good mix of power and certainly motor. And Iowa is not going to recruit a defensive lineman unless he has a good motor. So it's a, it's a, this is a good get for Iowa. Yeah, I got to look at him and, and um, read up on him. I, he was not on my radar either. And I look at the offer list um, on Rivals myself. I'll have to kind of do more checking out on him. I did get some or view some video of the the youngster from New Jersey, Marco. Is it Lainez? Yeah, I think it's pronounced Lainez, I believe. Or Lainez. I'm curious to see what he can do. I know he's a four-star guy. I think they had him rated as a top 20 quarterback nationally. I know the tape doesn't show a whole lot because it's a, a lower, um, not conference, what do they call it in high school? Uh, yeah, class. Like yeah. your class, you're like 3A, 4A. Um, so I'm curious to see what he can do. But if, if you think about it, before I let you go, um, by 2023, you know, depending on what happens with Petrus and Padilla, Iowa could actually be looking at, which we I've never seen since I've been you know watching, we could actually have – three, possibly four, four-star quarterbacks on our roster, if you think. Yeah, May's a four-star. Uh, and you'll have Marco, and then also, I I know I mentioned to you in the past about Jay. He's actually yeah. earned another star for rivals, so he's now a four-star quarterback, and he's awfully mobile, and he's got a heck of an arm from what I've seen from his tape. And again, it's Iowa football, but um, that's something we haven't seen in a while as, as Iowa fans having that much competition with that highly rated of a, of a QB room. That would be, I'd be curious to see what, what comes out of that. Well, I'm not a, I'm not a recruiting expert. I've never claimed to be that, but I do wonder if Linez's commitment affects Iowa's interest in JJ Cole. I hope not, but how, I mean, he's 2023, right? So, I, yeah. Do you see Iowa bring in two quarterbacks in in that class? Uh, he's an Iowa kid. Do I see him doing it? I don't know. Do I hope so? Yes. And just based off what I've seen from watching the very few tapes that are out there, Cole has the much stronger arm versus Linez. But Linez is obviously way more mobile. He's a heck of a runner. Um, from what I've seen, I've watched his QB camp videos. I've watched his highlight uh, videos from this past year in high school. Uh, I hope we can get all those guys um, and let the, the quarterback competition play itself out. But uh, to answer your question, I, I don't know, but I hope we do. I would agree with you. Cause again, yeah, you, I, uh, I know you've talked about him before and of course he's gotten a little bit more, he got that fourth star and, and he's gotten a little bit more attention um, nationally here recently. And I think I would probably like to get both kids. I just, it's hard to re- retain quarterbacks, as you know, I mean, with Deuce Hogan leaving and all these quarterbacks are in the portal right now. So I can't yeah. expect, you know, the, the idea that you're going to have four guys, maybe you get four guys in a spring, but I, I can't imagine. Did you say four, three or four? Um, you'd have by 2023, the start of spring ball, 2023. Yeah, you'd have four. Um, if that, yeah, if Spencer stays, you'd have four because Spencer, right. Spencer's a four star. Linez may just earn his four star, and so did Cole. So you'd have some awfully good QB competition. Um, but again, then it's going to fall on uh, Brian Ferentz to you know put these guys 
in positions to be successful with you know what he does offensively. I hope. Well, I hope Ken O'Keefe gets some more input on how the offense goes. But yes, it'd be four guys at the start of 2023. Yeah, you're right. That would be and that would be interesting. I don't know that that's ever happened. I doubt it. It's never happened, and competition breeds um, breeds success. I'm sure you've probably heard that before. But yeah, I agree with that absolutely. <laughs> That's and that for the record, I don't want to go back to the portal because nobody wants. I, 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 you know, I know people don't want to hear that today, but that's why I believe Iowa needs to go to the portal right now for more competition in the I room. Would too. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would too. You have there's too many guys out there in the portal. I mean, too many. Um, I know Bo Nix from Auburn, uh, Johnson, the kid from LSU. Uh, you got too many guys out there that are really talented quarterbacks to not entertain that. Boy, you almost, I hate to say dumb, but you'd be dumb if you didn't. You're right. I agree with you, Vincent. Oh, sorry. Uh, Anyway, um, uh, lastly, I don't know if you've heard anything. I know you have a lot of sources out there. Um, I've heard Wampa talk about, you know, now turning in, I've, uh, are now turning into a recruiter for Iowa since he signed. Have you heard anything about Proctor, about him having any, any? I don't want to say influence or sway, but are there any chances that he might be able to have some influence on Proctor? Oh, uh, I, have you heard anything? About- I mean, nothing, nothing probably more than you have heard. I think there's a great chance now that, that uh, Proctor comes here. I'm not saying, I say great chance. I'm saying 50% or better, whereas before Wampa's commitment, I would have probably said there was a 20% chance of landing Proctor, but I, I have a feeling they might be able to get it done. Now there's a lot of time left. Bama could come in there. I mean, Bama's already in on him, but there, there could be other schools that, that figure out a way to, to uh, sway him. But I think right now, if I had to, if I had to put my money on one kid, it would be, or excuse me, on one school, it'd be Iowa for Proctor. But again, that's just my speculation. Yeah, I certainly hope so. Um, well, I certainly appreciate the coverage today. I didn't know. Um, I just happened to catch it when I was browsing. Um, on my internet. Uh, so certainly appreciate the coverage. And also, um, again, Corey, thanks for taking the call and, uh, we'll see what happens with the bowl game. Hopefully we have some success with it. All right, Vincent. And as, as right, we're just talking here, I just got this and maybe we're, we had this in the comments, but uh, just so you know, uh, three, <clears throat> excuse me, three star cornerback, Orlando Tucker just committed, or excuse me, Tucker, Orlando trader. I don't know why I had Tucker up there. Orlando trader just committed to Iowa. So, um, another oh, wow. big time get today. That that's huge. It's exciting when you get when you hear that stuff. It's nice to see these kids coming to Iowa. Oh, I was going to tell you. I know my brother said he called into your show. Yeah. Um, I've I've put I put the uh, CC on him for right now. So hopefully he's not bothering you. <laughs> I I couldn't. I didn't know who I was talking to. He <laughs> said he was uh, Vincent's brother. I'm like I, I thought this was Vincent. I I couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. I was still listening after I hung up with you last time. I, I heard him get on. So now you have two avid followers from the Bet North area. So appreciate again, that. Great show. Always appreciate it. Um, always appreciate the content. And we'll talk to you later, Corey. All right. Thanks, Vincent. Have a great day. Yeah, that's the, the breaking news. Three-star cornerback Orlando Trader just committed to Iowa uh, and signed. All right. He's committed and signed. So, um and again, I'm sorry that if I missed that in the chat here a moment ago, but uh, that just came in here within the last few minutes. So um, what what a huge, huge day so far for Iowa. And I know he's just, you can say, well, he's just a three-star court, th- three-star player. That, that doesn't really mean anything. All right. That just doesn't mean much of anything. Now, I think it does mean something when you can, you can sign a, a kid who's four or five stars because doesn't mean they're going to pan out. You know, Jordan Bernstein, you know, he, he was, a, what, a five-star kid and didn't really develop at Iowa the way, you know, again, struggled with injuries. Same thing with Blake Larson, who was a five-star kid here. Um, but Iowa, I mean, especially at defensive back, if we're talking about, if we're really concerned with star ratings at defensive back, we might need to uh, be a fan of a different school. So, uh, Orlando, I'm going to give you some information here on Trader. Again, this just came in. So let me, I'm going to adjust this banner. Our line is open if you want to call in. So 515-635, there at the bottom of your screen, 1601, 515-635-1601. And again, we're uh, we're talking all things Hawkeyes here on signing day.
Yeah, and again, that just broke. So um, for anybody who doesn't know anything about Alondo Trader, six one, six foot, right around there, uh, about a buck eighty five. If you're interested in his other uh, recruiting offers, because I know we all get giddy about that, right? He was offered by Central Michigan, Vanderbilt, and Nebraska. Um, and I know he just announced at one thirty, so we got caught up in that conversation with Vincent. So I'm glad that I'm glad that I got alerted to that. But uh, this is a kid that Iowa was high on. Again, somebody who I believe was in town this past weekend and visited with the likes of Wampa and TJ Hall and all these kids. Um, and so defensive backfield, and, and again, they're going to lose Riley Moss. For anybody who doesn't know, I saw somebody I saw somebody that runs an Iowa website, not part of necessarily the Iowa media, but somebody that runs an Iowa website wrote an article the other day, was it yesterday or the day before, that indicated that Riley Moss could come back. That's not just simply not true. All right. Riley Moss is playing in the senior bowl. He's done. Okay. Now, if somehow he opts out of that, my understanding is he's already, I mean, if he plays in the senior bowl, he is gone. And that's confirmed from the university of Iowa. The university of Iowa confirmed that for me yesterday. So he is done. So any speculation that Riley Moss could be coming back, say goodbye to that because that's not happening. All right. He's in the senior bowl. He's gone. That's just all there is to it. So Iowa does need some help at defensive defensive back. They're going to lose their top two defensive backs, or excuse me, their top two cornerbacks. Matt Hankins is gone. Riley Moss will be gone. Do they lose Dane Belton? That's a question. I think he could be a candidate, certainly, uh, to leave early for the league. Um, we don't know that yet. I don't know if Jack Kerner is coming back. I'd like to see Jack coming back. But again, Alondo Trader coming in is huge. Obviously, Xavier Wampa is is equally, if not much, much more um, impactful for this defense. But that's it's a big development for Phil Parker in that secondary. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Uh, you got Austin from Des Moines. Austin from Des Moines. How are you this afternoon, sir? I'm um, doing doing great. Uh, doing a lot better now that I see that we've got a couple more kids in yeah. this class. Three um, already I added today. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, three additional guys who have committed and signed today alone. So that is, uh, so far, it's been a very successful um, recruiting day and signing day. And I'll just say this. I mentioned at the outset of my show that there is going to be at least one additional guy who signs on. And, and the guy that I was speaking of was not Trader. There is another guy who I can I can confirm he is signing today. All right, and I don't say who that is. I'll give him his moment, but there, there is more good news on the way. So this has been a terrific day. Uh, here's hoping it's uh, DB from out west. I think he'd be a really big hit for us. I wanted to talk real quick about the kid from uh, Boyden Hole, the linebacker we got. From where? Is he from Boyden Hole, Rock Valley, the Iowa? Kid, oh yeah, um, the linebacker. Yeah, Van. I, uh, I have a hard time pronouncing his last name. Let me pull it up here. Van Kickrin or something? Yeah. Um, again, I, I'm probably butchering his name, but let me uh, let me try to phonetically work it out here. Yeah, uh, Landon Van Kikerix. I'm hoping that's correct. That's right. Um, um, I, I watched. I work at a, a high school in the in the Des Moines area who plays at a 3A level, and I watched him play against that school. Uh, um, I'm going to age myself a little bit here. I went to high school with James Morris. Okay. And that kid gave me big time James Morris esque, just understanding the game and yeah. understanding how to impact the game regardless of what position he played, whether well, he was on offense or defense. And I think those are the kind of kids that Iowa needs to keep getting and of turning into two year starters at linebacker. I could see him being a Seth Benson, Josie Jewell, Jack Campbell. James Morris as hopefully type guy in the future. Yeah. That'd be um, huge. I mean, he's the most, he might be the most underrated kid in this entire class. If you just look at ratings, if you really want to read into ratings, Addison Estringa, it would be right there as well. But if you just want to look at, at ratings, Landon is going to be probably the most underrated recruit in this class. And that's okay. Especially if, when he's on the de defensive end of the, of the ball. Yeah. And I just, uh, that's another thing. Uh, listening to some uh, 
talk shows and uh, reading some stuff on the message boards, it's like, I think we get people who are too hooked on, oh, he's a three-star this, a four-star that. When some of the greatest players that I was ever have have been no star, two star, JUCO guys who come in and absolutely changed the way that people perceive them when they came out. I mean, like James Morris was a undersized linebacker who only got to play because everyone in front of him got hurt. Yeah, and he ended up being I think was he seventh now in all time tackles. So, you're right, and you brought up Josie Jewell. Does anybody remember where Josie Jewell was from? You probably do. Yeah, De- Decora. Yeah, <laughs> Decora, Iowa. And and Seth so, Benson, I believe, is what Sioux, Sioux City. So Sioux City. So yeah, they, they, listen. There, there's no question whether it be defensive back. I don't care about. I just don't care about star ratings when we're talking about linebacker, defensive back at Iowa because Phil Parker. And Seth Wallace, these guys know what they're doing in developing these players. Oh, absolutely. They find diamonds in the rough every year, it seems like. Anybody who comes in, uh, and I hope, I'm hoping Blomka's got his finger in the D-back recruiting pie, and he's working on these guys. Hopefully, uh, Trader's been a bird. Uh, yeah, Orlando Trader's a big get, I think, for us, flipping from Central Michigan, so... Absolutely. Hopefully we got uh, Doughboys 2.0 coming up in a year or two. Doughboys 2.0. I like it. I like what I hear here. Uh, thanks for taking my call, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Have a great night. And, yeah, the, the announcements continue to roll in. Um, let me get our number back up here. So there's our number, 515-635-1601. And uh, I am sending out a tweet here. If you're not already following uh, from the Hawkeye of the Storm on Twitter, please do so. Um, and it would help if you would to share this show out because um, I've been on here, been racing to get on this stream. I, I was, I had to run to the bank. As you may or may not know, um, I keep being told by everybody in my friend's friend zone that uh, we're going to be hit with a huge storm here in a few hours, a couple hours. Um, and that it's going to go from bad to worse and, and, uh, from there to, uh, even worse. So, uh, I keep hearing the word historic. It's going to be a historically bad weather day here in Iowa, 80 plus mile per hour winds, threats of tornadoes, blah, 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 blah. So it's a very serious situation. Anyways, my point is I jumped on here cause I was already late to the stream and I was not able to really share this show on social media at all. So if you're here listening, please do us a favor, do me a favor and share our show on social media. It would help me. It would help this show immensely. Um, and again, we've got some exciting things to come. We're going to be here for the next couple of hours discussing what is continuing to be an impressive, impressive turnaround. This recruiting class, people were not talking about this class being very consequential. People were concerned. I was concerned about this class last summer. And I don't know who to thank, but it's turned into a very, very, very inspiring class. That I mean, that maybe I'm people criticize me for being too critical. I hope that's not being hyperbolic. But again, please share our show out on social media. Tell people we're live. We're taking calls. We're talking Iowa recruiting all afternoon. And again, feel free to call us 515-635-1601. If you're not already subscribed to our show here on YouTube, please do that as well. That will help us immensely if you subscribe and share our show. Um, and as I send this tweet out here, this is the most, I'll just say this. This is the most, I've been, I've been a lifelong Iowa fan. This is the most excited I've been on signing day that I can remember. I mean, probably ever. So now when I was a tyke, I don't know that I got too excited about signing day, but, uh, this is a, this is a, I could say this is a historic for a couple of, a couple of reasons, not just because of the weather coming our way here in Iowa, but because of what Iowa has been able to do with this recruiting class. Thank you, Jermaine. Just saw he shared um, our post out on social media. Thank you for that. Appreciate that Twitter share from Jermaine Jackson and appreciate you here listening again. Please do that. If you haven't already done so, it does help us in the algorithm. It just helps us get more views. 
please hit the like button as well uh, right here on YouTube. And that helps us as well. So again, thank you, Jermaine. And thank you everyone else who um, has sh- has already shared the show out, but we'll do so here uh, hopefully soon. Um, I am behind on the chat here. Again, our line is open. If you want to call, we've got about a hundred people on the, on the uh, platform right now. So you're welcome to give us a call. 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601. Let's get back up to where we uh, fell behind. Justin, how are you this afternoon? Good to see you here. John, if Don is excited, I'm sold. I don't want to speak for Don and say he's excited for the whole class. I know he's excited for at least one or two of these kids. So I'll, I'll just say that. We'll talk to Donna more about that later this month, I'm sure. Yes, I know. Hair Trigger, the, the different uh, recruiting databases, they rank them differently, right? Some say they're four stars, whatever. I, I know that um, Brian Allen is a four star, at least according, I believe, to rivals. Let me confirm that. I'm sure I don't want to get that information wrong for everybody here. And again, strong side defensive end. He lists himself as an outside linebacker as well. He is considered to be a four-star according to rivals. I don't know what 247 and ESPN rank these kids. That's I don't really, again, does it really matter? It matters when you get up into the four and five-star status. I don't really care if he's two or three because, again, um, Phil Parker and, and Kelvin Bell, these guys are recruiting these kids for a reason. He is a flip. By the way, he is a flip. So I know our caller a, a second ago mentioned that Trader is a flip from Central Michigan. Um, Brian Allen Jr. is a flip from Illinois. So they steal him from Brett Bielema and the Illini. That is going to be a thorn in Brett's side. And if you didn't already know, let me r- run through some of the recruiting interests, I should say, uh, and offers for Allen. And again, we're talking about Brian Allen Jr. here out of Connecticut. Um, Arkansas State wanted him, Bowling Green, Central Michigan. So a plethora of um, group of five schools, UConn, of course, they're in the dumps, Howard, um, an HBC school, and then Eastern Michigan. But Illinois, again, had him committed. Iowa State wanted him. Kansas wanted him. Uh, North Dakota State out of the FCS. Purdue wanted him. Oregon wanted him. Virginia Tech, West Virginia. Cincinnati, uh, Michigan, and Notre Dame showed interest, did not um, offer. And according to rivals, Ohio State, Penn State, Wisconsin also all showed interest in Allen. So um, that's an impressive group of schools. There's no question about it. And again, the offer list includes the likes of Virginia Tech, West, West Virginia, Oregon, Purdue, etc. And again, he's a flip from Brett Bielema at Illinois, which I think is a huge, you may say, well, Illinois, I think Brett is doing a good job recruiting there. And I think he's going to do a good job recruiting there. So this is a huge get for Iowa to be able to grab a kid that you could argue was stolen from Iowa by Brett Bielema to be able to get him to flip on signing day. That is huge folks. Um, and again, if you want to uh, talk about Brian Allen and, and what he brings to the table, as far as the defensive end, again, whether he stays at defensive end ends up playing, um, you know, linebacker, I would project probably defensive end. He's not the biggest. He's six four two fifty, So he's not, he's not a small kid. Reminds me a little bit of Deontay Craig as far as his build. Uh, but again, high motor, he's got good strength, good power, it seems like, for his size. Um, and he also seems disciplined. I have written down in my notes his motor, slightly undersized, but good strength and good discipline. And again, that first one, motor, is probably the most important thing that Iowa looks at. If a kid has a good motor, they can develop them. They can get them in the, the gym and work these kids out and get these kids bigger and ready. And again, it also makes a difference when you have seven or eight guys that you can turn to on the defensive line that help you within a game. And that's what I was been able to do under Kelvin Bell. I give Kelvin a lot of credit. He has come in here and consistently gotten six, seven, eight guys in the rotation. Think of the guys that Iowa lost even last year. Austin Schulte leaves, Jack Heflin leaves, uh, Chauncey Golston leaves, Davion Nixon leaves. I mean, you just go down the line here and yet they come back this year. Logan Lee plays, Deontay Craig plays. Joe Evans plays, Noah Shannon plays, um, Zach Van Valkenburg plays, Ethan Herkett was playing until he went down with an injury, Lucas Van Ness is playing. I mean, they just always have six to seven, eight guys, and I wouldn't bring these guys up if they weren't playing well. They need to get better in pass rush, especially one-on-one matchups. Again, they don't have the likes of an Anthony Nelson or an A.J. Epinesa. 
I think Aaron Graves could be the solution to that. I don't want to put a ton of pressure on him, but he could be a solution to their woes in pass rush, uh, especially as the season has gone on. They're good in in uh, stunt formations and stunt plays, but they're not as good one-on-one. Van Valkenburg can get home at times, so can Joe Evans, but Evans is undersized. Again, I don't know, you know, Brian Allen looks to me like possibly your hybrid uh, pass rush uh, specialist um, that could come in and, and be the next Joe Evans or better. He's bigger than Joe Evans. I don't know what Joe Evans is even listed at right now, but he looks bigger than Joe Evans. But again, slightly undersized, but he could very well get bigger. Four star, according to Rivals, the number one player in Connecticut. You say Connecticut's not big. There's some good players in Connecticut. Um, Nico Regani came from Connecticut. We've talked about the Fumich, uh, Fumichan kids, the quarterbacks, the ones at UConn, ones in a transfer portal, but went to uh, Clemson initially. So there are good players out of Connecticut. Brian Allen was the number one player in the state, according to rivals, the 19th best player overall at his position, which again, he is listed uh, on rivals, I believe is an outside linebacker, strong side, excuse me, strong side defensive end on rivals. So, Boy, that, that's just a huge, huge get. Uh, again, we talked about Orlando uh, Orlando Trader. And did I miss? I think I missed the... Uh, let me find that banner so we can pop that buck back up here. Yeah, three-star cornerback Orlando Trader signs with Iowa. And again, if you're just joining us, Trader... Um, Obviously, class of 22 was a commit to Central Michigan. Nebraska was in on him as well and offered Vanderbilt and Central Michigan. Now, this is according to, I don't know why I have 247 Sports pulled up here, but um, while I'm getting that figured out, let me, uh, let me, let's take this next call. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hey, this is Alex again. Yeah. How are you, Alex? Are you in uh, a different class now? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> has anybody else committed? Yeah. Orlando Trader just committed at corner. Hell yeah. Yeah. Good day, man. And there's more coming. There's more coming. All right. Just wanted to, just wanted to know. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Alex. Yeah, Alex is uh, Alex is in school right now. I'm surprised he's in school. I should have asked him, like, where's he at in Iowa? Because all the schools around Ames, we're talking Ballard, we're talking Story City, all of these schools, Colo, Nesco. Give a shout out to Colo, Nesco. Um, they're all releasing early. I think they're all out right now. So the weather is uh, a concern of a lot of people in the area, and rightfully so. But yes, uh, Orlando Trader has not only committed, but he has signed with Iowa. Huge, huge, huge. Just big time. Stephen Lang, Ferentz has been here now over two decades. In your opinion, how much effect does stability have on recruiting? Well, Xavier Wampa brought that up. The stability of what Ferentz has brought to the table, I brought up the fact that I, I do wonder if, you know, Kirk Ferentz stating to his team prior to the Big Ten Championship game that he'd be back in 2022 and beyond, I wonder if that was almost a recruiting pitch. I do think it helps. It helps a lot. Um, now, how many years he has left, I don't know. But obviously, it was enough stability to get a five-star like Xavier Wampa to commit. And I would have to think that if they're going to land Jaden Proctor and Proctor's all in on Kirk Ferentz, he's going to have to convince Jaden that, hey, I'm going to be here for a few more years because Proctor's not until 2020, uh, 2023. But certainly the, the stability of this program and, and the coaching staff uh, has to help. DW, any meetups in Orlando? I don't know what you're referring to there. You're going to have to explain yourself. I don't think he means Orlando Trader. Explain yourself, D-dubs, please. Uh, Nick, we need a tight end to step up. Been a while since we had two stud tight end sets. Okay, so let's talk about tight end while we have this question up here. Um, if you're not already familiar with who Iowa has at tight end, um, understand that Luke Lachey and Laporta are both back. All right. Tom Kaker was on our show on um, what last week sometime, Friday, I believe. And he made it very clear, and I trust Tom on this, that uh, Sam Laporta is coming back. Sam Laporta is coming. He's not going to the NFL. So you can question that all we want. Sam Laporta is coming back, which is a good thing because if you think about Iowa's uh, outlook at tight end, they did lose Josiah Miaman at tight end. 
Um, and they did miss a, on a, a tight end or two in this class. The one kid, um, I have to look at Iowa's commitments or excuse me, offers from the class of 2022. And I already forgot his name, but the kid from out, uh, Western Iowa or, uh, Omaha area, I believe. Um, but for the most part, I think they're just fine at tight end. Again, they do have a couple kids coming in this year. Kale Vanderbush is one uh, three-star tight end at a playing field, Indiana. Sort of an, a late ad. I believe he committed mid-season. And um, you know, I think I, I we, we produced a video on Kale and just what he shows on tape. Um, you know, he seems to be a good route runner with good hands. Um, but he's going to have to improve his blocking, of course. I mean, yeah, that's going to go for any tight end. But just from what I saw on tape, He's going to have to to uh, endure that learning curve blocking as a tight end at the Big Ten level because you got to be able to block at any at any tight end school, but especially at Iowa, you've got to be an exceptional blocker. But he does seem to have good hands and he's a good receiver. And again, Iowa likes those types of kids, and then they can make them better um, as uh, blockers down the line. And typically, you have Iowa guys who excel at both. Now there have been the exceptions to that rule. Noah Fant, we always were told that Noah Fant wasn't a great pass blocker or excuse me, a great run blocker. He seems to be doing just fine in the NFL for the Denver Broncos right now. Um, you know, I know a guy like Jake Doozy never made it to the league, but he also dealt with a lot of injuries. Um, you know, you look at a guy like, um, and now I lost it kid right before, um, boy, I lost it now. They've had a couple guys who have been basically blocking tight ends. Jameer Outsey is one that comes to mind. Um, and I've got a kid in my mind, and I just can't think of who it is. Um, Weeding, Nate Weeding. I don't know why I couldn't think of Nate's name. But Nate Weeding was, I thought he was an okay pass catcher, but he really spent most of his time blocking at Iowa. And, of course, they had a lot of uh, a lot of talent uh, at, at tight end. Of course, Sean Byer, TJ Hawkinson, and we mentioned Fant, all when Nate Weeding was here. But Kale Vanderbush, again, he's got good size. He's six foot six. Um, and I would expect him to stay at tight end. Also, another tight end. We'll be talking with him. We've already actually done that interview. We'll be releasing that interview right here on this channel in the coming days. Addison Astringa, a three star tight end, 6'4, 230 out of Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Iowa has been doing good in the state of Wisconsin. We mentioned Astringa, uh, Jaden Montgomery, a linebacker that signed today with the Hawkeyes. And of course, Jack Dotzler, the big uh, uh, offensive tackle. For the Hawkeyes, three star out of Wanakee, Wisconsin. So Iowa's done very good in Wisconsin. A string is a guy who's going to fly under the radar. Um, I again, we had this discussion with um, Addison the other day, and we'll be releasing that interview. Um, but uh, I put this banner up here. According to two four seven Sports, a stringa is the one one thousand one hundred twenty eighth best prospect in the class of twenty two. Which I think we can all agree that's completely bogus. Um, I, I just just no way that's true. But again. Um, a guy like a stringer can use that as motivation. And I have no doubt that a string is a kid who's going to be able to come in here and compete. He's got a high motor on special teams. That's one thing I brought up to him during our interview. He seems to have a real commitment to special teams. He's got good speed. He's got excellent hands. A string of played wide receiver in high school. Um, he just started lining. I believe just started lining up at tight end this past year, his senior year. He's a dual, dual, uh, athlete kid, dual sport kid. I should say. Um, was originally going to play baseball, ended up deciding to, to go the full football football route. He's not planning on, on playing baseball in the Big Ten. Um, and he grew up a Wisconsin fan. And so he's going to have motivation to want to beat the Badgers because the Badgers never offered. And um, we're, we're happy. He's, he's a nice, nice kid. I mean, again, um, you'll be able to see that interview here, right here on our channel from the Hawkeye of the Storm in the coming days. He is a nice kid and I think a great addition. And like I said to him on their interview, he's going to have a chance early to play on special teams. They're losing. I was losing some guys on special teams. I believe Henry Marquez, he's a senior. He's been one of Iowa's best special teams guys. We know about Terry Roberts. He should be back, but will he continue to play on special teams? I would think he would, but again, he's going to be one of the top two cornerbacks with Moss and Hankins leaving. I would expect Roberts to be a starting cornerback. So they're going to possibly, possibly lose uh, Roberts on special teams, but not necessarily for sure on that. I could see Iowa playing in both positions. Of course, you're risking more injury to one of your higher profile players. And then Ivory Kelly Martin, he could come back. I doubt he comes back. And so there's going to be some opportunity for guys like Astringa to come in here, young players and play right away, even if it's on special teams. And I think he's all for that judging by what we, uh, by what he said during our interview the other day. So um, yeah, I think Iowa's going to be okay at tight end. Um, whoever that question was from, 
uh, Nick. I think I think they're going to be just just fine at tight end. Um, stud wise, I think Laporta and Lachey both have an opportunity. I mean, Laporta is already excellent, and that's a huge development. Him coming back is massive because even though I like Lachey and I like the young group of tight ends they have, of course, Yelverton, they're a little thin at tight end. But if they can, you know, they got five guys now with uh, Astringa and Kale Vanderbush. They've got five guys there. If they can keep those five guys here um, and developing together, uh, Laporta leading the charge, I think they'll be okay. CJ here, good to see you. Lucas Van Ness, he has been really good this year. I agree. Um, we've got two tight ends, in my opinion, probably has been the line QB play and play calling. Yeah, I think they've got good two good tight ends. Again, um, I think you're going to add some of these younger guys to the mix as well. Um, CJ, wonder what the running back depth chart looks like. Well, this is what the running back depth chart looks like. You want to know? It is Gavin Williams, LaShawn Williams, um, Devin Hilson, and then the two freshmen. You've got Caleb Johnson, who I don't know if has he. I don't think he's signed yet. Maybe he has, uh, but he is signing today. Jazzy and Patterson signed today. You've got those five. I don't know who. I don't know where Iowa turns to after those five. Um, I know they've got probably a, a couple um, walk-on running backs on the roster, and you'd think five would be enough. Again, I like the five. I like LaShawn and Gavin Williams both, and I like Devin Hilson. If you followed my channel, if you followed my show for months, and maybe you haven't, but if you have, you could look back, and you may remember me bringing up Devin Hilson. I liked Hilson when they added him out of Des Moines. Um, I know he was a late ad and, and made history at, at Hoover being one of like what the only Division One recruit to come out of Hoover and the history of the school or something like that. He has been um, working hard as from everything I've heard on special teams and I'm sure on the scout team, he's going to have an opportunity though. Um, if he stays at running back, you know, maybe they'll move him again after spring, but if he stays at running back, they've got an opportunity. Uh, he's got an opportunity to maybe uh, get some snaps. Drew, do you think Goodson will be drafted? If so, what round? I'm not a, a draft expert by any means. Okay. Um, but if you, if you had to put a gun to my head, I would say Goodson gets drafted late and I'm talking fifth, sixth round. Maybe, um, I, I have a hard time seeing Goodson drafted anywhere above the fifth round. Um, and I would bank more on the, the sixth than I would the fifth. I, I hope he gets drafted high. I hope he plays. I'm rooting for Makai Sargent to succeed in the league. Iowa needs success in the NFL at running back. They haven't really gotten it since Sean green. They need it. You look at teams like Wisconsin with Melvin Gordon, Jonathan Taylor has just been spectacular in the NFL. Um, you look at a guy like uh, James White, Corey Clement, all these guys have played in the league and have been successful. Um, Agumba Wale down in Jacksonville is another Wisconsin back. Iowa needs to start producing NFL running backs. It will help with recruiting and certainly it helps with performance on Saturdays. Um, CJ, yes, Patterson, uh, Caleb Johnson, it does seem like it. Well, I wouldn't call it real deep. I mean, again, you're losing. Um, it was it was sort of thin even this year with just Goodson and the two Williams, um, they're not brothers, but the two Williams running backs, and then of course Hilson. It, it's not the deepest depth chart in the world, but I do think it, it gets deeper. My only concern with saying it's deep, yeah, they have five guys. That's that's plenty of guys, but the problem it becomes. Caleb Johnson and Jazzy and Patterson are going to be true freshmen. I don't even know if either one of those guys are. are enrolling early. So that affects what you're able to do. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect those guys to immediately come in and compete for playing time. So I think it's important that the Williams guys stay healthy. Um, and again, I think there's no, I, I think there, I would guarantee you that Hilson, I could be wrong on this, but my guarantee would be that Hilson is, is here during the spring at, at running back. I, I have a hard time seeing him. Um, I have a hard time seeing him switching positions at least before summer. Jermaine Jackson, I believe Hawk Central said Carson May won't be enrolling until early or until May or June. I could be wrong. That's what I remember reading. Would not be surprised. And that just, again, lends itself to what I continue to say that I think Iowa needs to go after a transfer quarterback. That's just my opinion. I think they need to do it. Will they do it? Um, I'm not going to predict that, but I think they should. That's just my opinion. All right. Um, Josh says, where's the new offensive coordinator? Not going to happen for a while, Josh. Not going to happen for a while. I, I 
understand uh, the frustration, but uh, not going to happen in a while. And you're right. Best punter in the country, possibly. A lot of good punters out there right now. Top five defense. Yeah, the offense needs to be better. We're not debating that. And it's not just the offensive coordinator. And I'll say that. It's not just the coordinator. Brian deserves some of the blame. Some of the blame has to go to the players. Some of the bl- some of the blame has to go to Kirk Ferentz. I think a good amount of the blame. There's no question about it. Username invalid. Corey said one of the best offensive linemen at Iowa that can include worse. I don't know exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I guess you're talking about Linderbaum. Yeah, Linderbaum is right there with Tristan. I mean, I'm not saying he's better. I'm saying he's one of the best. Tristan Wirfs would be right there as well. Tyler Linderbaum would be there. Robert Gallery would be there. Brandon Scherf would be there. And again, some of these guys don't. I mean, Gallery wasn't great in the league. So some of these guys don't end up panning out. You look at a guy like Marshall Yonda, who was good in, in, in college, but you could say he's been the most successful offensive lineman from Iowa in the league. Um, let's see here. CJ, who are you more excited for, May or Linez? Well, I'm more excited for Linez just because he brings more of that dual threat ability. But let's be honest, Linez won't be here for another year. So let's get excited about May. Um, if May doesn't enroll early, I, I I just hope somebody emerges and creates more competition in that room. And maybe there's plenty of it now. But somewhere there's got to be someone that ignites a flame of development this coming spring. Spring is going to be huge. I mean, we're, there's no question. The I, for to, for me, the quarterback position is going to improve the most in during spring practice, which I don't think is any question. That shouldn't be up for debate. And the offensive line is going to improve the most during the summer. Not that it won't improve technique wise in spring, but they're going to have to figure out a way to figure out some strength and conditioning issues that they've had up front, and that starts with Raymond Brathwaite and that conditioning staff. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hi, this is Chuck. Hey, Chuck. How's it going? Hey, just <clears throat> I've listened to you and talked to you before. Was curious what your thoughts are on Keaton Slovis with the <laughs> transfer portal. I'm all for the May kid. Um, the other one coming in is that from Connecticut. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. And the competition at quarterback, I think, is just going to make that room better. But bringing in somebody who maybe has that one year eligibility, I know you've talked about the transfer portal, creating that. Um, uh, but curious what your thoughts are on Slovis from USC. <laughs> My thoughts on Slovis, um, I would love for Iowa to reach out. But it's yeah. it, it starts with just acknowledging that, I said this yesterday on the show, it starts with acknowledging that we need help at that position. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we don't igno- if Iowa doesn't acknowledge, if, if Iowa doesn't believe that it needs help at quarterback, then they're not going to reach out to Slovis. They're not going to reach out for to Calzada or Fumachan or whoever it may be in the portal that you like. It starts yeah. with acceptance, and then you can move forward. And I don't know if Iowa believes that quarterback is a problem. Yeah, and I don't know. I get Ferentz's loyalty to Petrus. I, I, I actually like Padilla. Um, her, I don't know if that's what I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. Yeah. But yeah, I like Alex. I think he's a little bit more mobile. There was more... Uh, you know, movement w- with the offense, more fluid when I watched him play. Um, but and the reason why I bring up Slovis is the fact of, A, he torched us a couple of years ago when we played them. I can't remember what the bowl game was. We fortunately won it. But I remember when he was still in the game before he went out with the injury, man, he was throwing it all over the field. On yes, us. he was. Yes, he was. And Iowa should be his, very familiar with Keaton Slovis because that right, his right. injury turned that game. Yes. And the accuracy that he's displayed to me with kind of how our receivers are. I mean, we don't necessarily have extremely, extremely fast receivers, but we got guys that can get open. But if you have a quarterback that can hit him on those slants, hit him on those hooks or those, those post throws, those flag routes, you know, coming out, which he seemed to, to, to demonstrate that at will in that game a couple of years ago. And I just was like, you know, he, he's entered the, the portal. Um, I know that uh, they like to develop their quarterbacks with Iowa, um, and I like that as far as who they've got coming in. But to me, he could kind of be a stopgap with what we've got, help those other guys develop as well, and then Absolutely. let them kind of you know take take over the helm, so to speak, when it comes to the attrition of that offense. So, oh, absolutely. 
I, I'm all in it, on what you just said. And um, Slovis is a kid that I think a lot of schools will be after. And I think a lot of schools yeah. will be after Zach Calzada as well. But I think my guess, this is my just gathering what I know and, and trying to compile it into a, a, a logical theory. I think Iowa would have a better shot at, at getting Calzada because yeah. Calzada was recruited by Iowa. He was offered by Iowa. He doesn't necessarily have the household name that Keaton Slovis does. I think a lot of schools are going to be after Slovis. And I, again, Iowa has a relationship with Calzada. So I'm all for either guy. The reason I've kept bringing up Calzada is because I just, I doubt that Iowa is going to reach out to Slovis. Should they? Absolutely. Yeah. But I just don't think they will. And I don't think they will with Calzada either, but I think there's a greater chance that they do with him. Now, is he the Clemson kid or is he the Texas a and I'm trying to think he's the where A&M kid. from. Yeah, the kid that beat A&M, Alabama. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And he's more mobile. I'm not, I'm not saying Slovis isn't mobile, but I mean, yeah. Slovis just to me, I, I thought he'd have been a first round pick at some point, how he played, particularly towards the end of 2019, um, coming into 2020. I don't know as far as what the offense did. I didn't follow them that regularly last year as far as how he performed individually. I know that USC had their problems on its own, but yeah. Right. Yeah. So, no, uh, you're any, right. Um, any, I was going to say, go I was just going to say real quick, as far as mobility is concerned, uh, Chuck, the, there, there is no, there isn't a player out there that's probably less mobile than, than Spencer Petrus. And I'm not trying to knock Spencer Petrus. That's just not who he is. So Calzada, I mean, Calzada is just as mobile as Alex Padilla. Padilla, we, we act like yeah. Padilla is just some athletic freak because we're so used to a statue at quarterback. Yeah, right. Padilla is not, I mean, he's good. He's got good mobility, no question about it, but he is not Kyler Murray. No, no, no. He's just better moving in the pocket as opposed to Petrus. Right. Petrus seems to get the happy feet when that, you know, that rush is coming. And, and I don't know what it is. I, I've gone back and forth with my brother, Vincent, who calls in and talks to you. And yeah. you know, him and I had that debate during the you know big 10 championship game. I wanted to see Padilla come in earlier because Petrus just as strong as, as an arm as somebody might have. I mean, if, if, if you can't accurately deliver the ball, you know, I don't care where you can throw it but you can't get it to where it's supposed to go, then give me somebody who's a little bit more mobile in the pocket and a little bit more accurate as far as even throwing on the run. And that's not Petrus's forte. Yeah. And, and I don't know if you, how long you've been listening, but we had a caller um, at the outset of our show that called in from Israel and basically defended Padilla and said, we're not, we haven't given him enough time. And I agree with that, that we haven't given him enough time, but that's, what's concerning yeah. to me is I will went back to Spencer Petrus against Michigan and I, I just, I, to me, the, the leash has not been nearly long enough for Padilla. Uh, that's just my right. opinion. I agree with that. And if we're not going to go for a portal quarterback, we need to give Padilla a, a good, we need to give him uh, a fair chance. I think he should start against Kentucky in the Citrus Bowl, and I think we should let him play the game out. We're not going to pull him at halftime because we never pulled Petrus at halftime when he wasn't playing well. We didn't do that. Right. We, well, we never did that. He finally came out yep. when he was hurt against Northwestern, but Iowa refused to pull Petrus even when he didn't play. If we're going to play that game with Petrus, we need to play the same. We're going to give the same leash to Alex Padilla because there is not some huge gap between those two guys. Yeah, and I was listening to you. I can't remember if it was yesterday or maybe the day before. And you you had brought up the whole Jay Christensen, Ricky Stanzi, you know, example. And that was the same thing. You know, Christensen, that left arm kid, you know, he was a four star coming out of high school, but he just did not. And I know people were probably, I guess, expecting a second coming of a Drew Tate, but just obviously that did not <laughs> that did not play out. But yeah. I thought Stanzi when he came in. Now, granted, he was he was very pick prone, but I think as he got better with the offense, got more experience, I thought he was the better quarterback. Obviously, and it showed that as he as he played more. Our our record probably didn't reflect that as far as wins and losses, particularly his senior year, but his junior year. You know, he, I think he had more touchdown or excuse me, picks to touchdowns than his senior year. He was, I thought he was excellent. You know, particularly in, in his ball placement. But even he, he would, he would throw a, a pick from time to time, though. But he was just better overall. But just Absolutely. another example. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, I would rather. But here's what I. This is what I feel, and I could be wrong on this. But when when I watch how Kirk Ferentz and his offensive coaching staff, how they evaluate QBs, to me. It starts with one thing, and, I, and I'll see if you agree with this, Chuck. It, it starts with, does he throw interceptions or doesn't he? And right. 
the fact that Spencer Petrus rarely throws interceptions. He had some problems last year with him, but mm-hmm. uh, they were going to roll with him no matter what last year. But the fact that that Spencer Petrus doesn't throw interceptions, I think that is such a focal point of Kirk and this and this staff that it's hard to overcome the fact that he plays clean football. Even if he's throwing all over the yard, as long as he's not turning the ball over, I think we're satisfied. And I don't, I understand why we're satisfied because you don't want to turn the turnovers are a huge part of the game, right? That's the number one Mm -hmm. indicator of win versus loss in the big 10 conference and in any level of football. But again, you, you've you've got a really low ceiling. If, if that's your only, or if that's your main indicator of who starts is, is turnovers. And, so, I, yeah, I think one thing that, that scares Kirk Ferentz is Alex Padilla. If you noticed against Minnesota and against Northwestern, he got in the bad habit of throwing the ball to the other team way too much. And he had a lot of yeah. passes that were dropped by the defense. I know he threw the one pick against Illinois, but he had a lot of passes that were dropped by defensive players. And I wouldn't be surprised if Kirk looked at that looked at that on tape and said, that's just we're playing with fire. And, and that's why I think he's had the shorter leash. Yeah, no, and I agree with you. I mean, and it, to me, that's Kirk's philosophy and his staff's philosophy. They play, they play not to lose, not necessarily to win. And how I view games: it's special teams, solid defense, and then don't turn the ball over on offense. So yeah, I, I 100% agree with you there. My only, I guess, objection with that and being subjected to the actual issues, just when you get to that point and you're having these seasons where you're now competing that big 10 championship or you're wanting to compete for that big 10 championship to me it's not that's not just get there and get there based on not just what we've done before in the past but if you want to win those games you want to get to the play college playoffs you have to you have to do more oh yeah that's where i think we fail we fail as a team is hey we got there we're good enough you know we got the big 10 championship yeah we got our you know you know what's handed to us but at least we got there you know and that to me i i just don't like that you know i think when you get there you got to do something to open it up. I mean, if you're going to lose 40, what was it, 42 to three or however yeah. it was, I mean, at least try to take some chances and doing something, not just let them ram the ball down your throat the whole game. And Well, we could say the they, same thing. We could say the same thing about every Wisconsin game for how many years now, especially oh, yeah. this year. You, you go into that game, and I think from most fans' perspective, it's like we're going to have to do something different, and we rarely do. I mean, there's not really much. Right. It, we yep. just kind of bang our head against the wall and hope that we break through. And usually we don't, especially against Wisconsin. Well, what does Kurt say? We know them and they know us. Yeah, yeah, know, no. like, yeah well, Make them not know you. Try, just try to win the game. Yeah, I, <laughs> don't, I don't like that. I don't like that comment from Kirk, but I've heard him say that. I know. Yeah. You heard anything else as far as, and I know Caleb Johnson, he was scheduled to do, I think, something around 215 as far as his either signing or commitment. Has that anything come up? come up with that? Good question. Um, what did I have written? Let me check my notes here. Um, I had him. I had him written down for noon. Oh, was it noon? Maybe well, maybe it wasn't. I, let me just see. I've been uh, again. I've been on the show, so you know, looking yeah. at. Uh, I was uh, just curious at, if he had signed yet. I know him and both both the running backs that we had, had committed. It seemed that they had not officially signed yet, but I thought I saw something. Yeah, Caleb Johnson has signed, and we just got breaking news in here. Tyrone Tracy has committed to Purdue. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's an Indianapolis native. Wow, yeah. That's that's uh, kind of ironic, though. Wow, yeah, that is ironic, and and we're going to see him wear number three. I don't think number three against uh, for, n- number three in a Purdue jersey has been too friendly for Iowa. So hopefully, hopefully it's a different story. We got a couple though. I remember Kyle Williams when he was five star back in probably 2004, maybe 2005. Now, granted, he had some off the field issues. He went and signed with Purdue. Nothing really materialized. And then who was the DB we had a couple years ago from Alabama area, maybe or. Oh gosh, he went and signed with Purdue, and then played one year. Now he's out of the DJ he Johnson. Play from anymore. Yes, DJ Johnson. There you go. Yep. So I mean, I hope the best for the kid, and I understand where he's coming from as far as the attrition and wide receiver. But and I even like you know you you were uh, touching on the recruiting. I think with what we've got this year and the the success that we've had, is just going to help bolster with Caden Proctor next year, Casper next year. I even saw some other guys on our offer list that I think that it would behoove them to look at that and 
where we're going with things, where we could go and say, hey, look, I want to be a part of that. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I do want to give you this information real quick while I got you on the line here, because uh, why not share the breaking news with you? Cohen Intringa um, has just uh, committed to Iowa as well. So he was one of what? six guys who were up in the air about whether he was going to commit it to Iowa today or not, or sign with someone else. Mm -hmm. Uh, He is just committed to Iowa's. He was of course pursued by Colorado, Wisconsin, Boston college, et cetera. He is a three-star athlete um, out of uh, Wald Lake, Michigan. So Iowa lands two Michigan kids back to back with trader and now in Tringa. So again, the, the, the news for Iowa recruiting has only gotten better throughout this afternoon. You know, the only, Looking at it, it makes me very excited going into these upcoming seasons because you have competition everywhere, even with the wide receiver position that we've lost some people, but ones that we've got kind of coming in, the potential of next year. The only area that I saw that I was surprised I didn't see Iowa doing a little bit more extensive recruiting, which I know Ference has, you know, that uh, developing players, and he'll take tight ends and move them to defensive tackles quite frequently, but the kid out of, that out of Orange and the one two that committed to Iowa State, you know, maybe it might behoove us to look at maybe some, you know, and I don't recall if there's any big ones in the transfer pool now, but some defensive tackles, you know, because Davian Nixon, very underrated. I was surprised he went so low in the NFL draft, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah. having somebody that can kind of get that, that pressure up the middle, um, you know, but who knows? I least, think this, this recruiting isn't over. Yeah, I think they hope that uh, that Logan Lee and Logan Jones can really develop. And, uh, you know, John Wagoner, I think, has been a guy that needs to get there. He's got, what, maybe one more year? Maybe he's got two more years. He's got he's to gotta get there. Um, they haven't you done a – Do you think he needs to go inside at all? What's that? Do you think Wagoner – and I've talked about this with people that are, are Iowa fans, but I wouldn't uh, be opposed to moving Wagoner inside on some downs. I know he's a big yeah. kid, 6'5", six, six, almost 6'6". Six, six. They have done that. They have done that a little bit, but he is a big body. There's no question about it. Um, I don't know. He's been, he's dealt with some injuries. Um, He's got to take a step forward. I really thought he was going to take that step this year. And I don't know how much he was on the field. I mean, I'd have to look back at snap counts, but it seems like his snap counts uh, ended up shortening as the season went on. That's just my, from my perspective. Again, I haven't looked at the numbers. Hmm. So, yeah, and I, I think it'd be I, I Iowa to do that. Was, yeah, and I, I thought Griffin Lytle would be a good get uh, out of Bettendorf because that's actually where I'm from. I'm from the Quad Cities, Davenport, Bettendorf area. I was surprised to see them flip him to, to offensive line. You know, he's a big kid. I remember watching some of his highlights when he was at Bettendorf, but maybe they just think he's better in the trenches on the offensive side, which, you know, that, I'm not going to question much with that. You know, Kirk is an offensive line guru. But then again, we've had our offensive line troubles. So, right. You're right. But well, I'll keep you, man. I appreciate the, appreciate the phone call. Um, I'll be calling you again. All right. Appreciate the call, Chuck, as always. And uh, again, I'm glad you identify yourself early because I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between you and your brother. Yeah. Yeah. We have the same voice, almost identical. So it's almost like you think people are calling in twice, but you can give him a little flat. Just tell him I'm a better caller than he is. If he calls them. I will do that. I appreciate it, sir. <laughs> All right, Corey. Take it easy, my man. You as well. All right, and I did see we did uh, have a caller try to reach us while we were on the line with uh, Chuck. So, again, give us a call back if you have uh, tried to give us a call in the last 10, 15 minutes. Our line is open now. Our number on the bottom line there, 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601. The breaking news, Tyrone Tracy Jr. has committed to Purdue. So we some of us saw that coming, but... uh, the the storylines continue to become more and more interesting. Again, 515-635-1601. Uh, I'm going to try to get caught up on the chat here in a moment. I want to make sure that I'm not behind anything here on the Twitter sphere. I do see that it's official that Brian Allen um has not only committed but he did sign so if that was a question again you assume if a kid commits today he's going to sign but um we'll ch- go ahead and change that uh 
All right. So we've got a lot of uh, breaking news, developing stories here. Brian Allen Jr. out of uh, Oakdale, Connecticut, class of 22, of course, has signed with Iowa. Rivals considers him a four-star defensive end outside linebacker at 6'4", 250. A little undersized, but man, 250, he can, uh, get, assuming he can gain some weight, he looks a little bit on the field like Deontay Craig. Uh, and I like Craig's motor this year. And again, all these kids they play on the defensive line are going to have solid motors. Orlando Trader, another kid who has committed, committed today uh, to Iowa. He is, he has now made it official as he has signed three-star cornerback flip from central Michigan. All right. Jackson, Michigan, um, Jackson, Michigan product class of 22, six foot 185. And as far as my um, thoughts on trader. And again, we'll come out with more content as the week goes on and then the weeks to come on these different prospects, but trader on tape from what I saw. And again, you're looking at highlight reels and, you know, just cuts. So you can't really, this should not be what I say here should not be law. This is just what I saw from my perspective. He's first of all, got really good hands. He played a lot of receiver in high school. And again, t- typically you're going to have that uh, for a corner Really good punt returner. We saw him on tape uh, excel on special teams and, and punt return uh, efforts. Great pursuit to the ball. Iowa needs that with its corners. You got to be disciplined. I don't know if, you know, again, you, you we've seen Riley Moss and even Jamari Harris struggle with discipline at times on double cuts. We saw the double pass against Michigan. So that's something that I always, I think Iowa corners can improve on is discipline in reading run versus pass. But for the most part, Iowa does an exceptional job with its defensive backs, and that translates over to NFL um, talent. I think Hankins and Moss both have a chance. I would not say either guy is a lock to get drafted, although I think Hankins I think Hankins is the better of the two. Um, that's just my opinion. How Riley plays at the Senior Bowl certainly could help him. Um, but an opportunity for both of those guys to make it to the next level. And now a guy like Trader can come in and compete for playing time, maybe immediately, even if it's just on special teams. Um, Iowa loses a lot, and that's okay because I think some of these guys who are coming in here this year, specifically Wampa and Graves and possibly a guy like Trader, I think they're going to be ready to play right away. Let's take our next call. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Alex. Alex, how are you? Okay. I'm doing good. You said where, where's my high school at? Say that again. You said where's my high school at? Yeah, where's your high school at? Iowa City West. So you guys haven't shut? They haven't shut down the the school here because of the storms. Nope. Wow. Well, they shut everything down over here in, in Cyclone Country. So, um, and I'm assuming you did hear the news. Cohen and Tringa has now committed, uh, three star athlete yeah, out Tyrone, of heard Wald Lake. going to Purdue. And Tyrone Tracy's going to Purdue. You got it. My cousin goes to Purdue. So, I mean, it's a great play. If I was Tyrone Tracy, I'd go to Purdue. <laughs> I mean, it's a good decision on his part. I just hope he doesn't burn we, Iowa. We play him. We play him. Yeah, we play him. Is it at Pinnick? Uh, No, it's at Purdue. That would have been cool if it was at Pinnick. Yeah, well, it's going to be a game. Iowa struggles with Purdue every year. And, boy, you you know that Tyrone Tracy would, would love nothing more than to beat the team that he lost his playing time uh, on and then, of course, do it for his home field uh, Boilermakers. I mean, he's an indie kid. So, yeah, it's a good storyline. Yep. All right, thank you. Appreciate it, Alex, and stay safe. Uh, again, apparently Alex is in Iowa City. We are here in Ames. The the world has sort of shut down, and I just got word. If you want, if you're a fantasy football guy, I just got the final nail in the coffin. I've been decimated with injuries all year. DeAndre Hopkins has been ruled out for the remainder of the regular season. Kill me now. All right, let's move on to uh, Cohen and Tringa. We talked about him a little bit ago. Uh, Rivals considers him the 18th best player in Michigan. Um, again, he's a three star. And, and he was actually, I mean, you look at his uh, recruitment. We talked about who he was who he was um, wanted by. Colorado offered him. Wisconsin offered him. Boston College offered. Um, Michigan offered. Maryland offered. Notre Dame offered. Utah offered. I mean, I, I know there's a lot more than just looking at, um, you know, they're just looking at who offers a kid, 
But I mean, did anybody just hear that list of offers? We're talking Notre Dame, Michigan, uh, you know, again, Iowa, Wisconsin. That's another really good pickup and a kid that was not guaranteed before this afternoon. Let's take our next call. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hawkeye Howard. Hawkeye Howard. You out there driving, Hawkeye Howard? No, I was sleeping. <laughs> I woke I have my alarm set up so I can get on here and listen to listen to you and jump into your show. So well, I, I missed part of it. I was going to ask, uh, do we have any old linemen coming in? Do we have something for the offensive line? I hear a lot of defense, which is great. But I'm um, kind of concerned. I don't hear a lot of offensive line guys. Well, you came at the right time, Hawkeye Howard, because in about eh, 20 minutes or so, um, we're going to be interviewing one of Iowa's offensive line recruits. We're going to have them on the show. So stay tuned. You'll find out who that is here in a moment. But Iowa does have a couple really good, uh, I think, really good prospects. Again, they got to develop Kale Crow from Huxley and then Jack Dotzler from Wisconsin. Both are six 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 seven. So they're your prototypical tackles at Iowa. But I think both of those guys have the opportunity to play. Iowa needs help at tackle. I think you would agree with that. And then again, with the oh, yeah. 21 class, which was really strong up front, those guys developing plus the guys early or uh, excuse me, committing this year and signing. I think they'll be okay on the offensive line. Okay. Do we have any maybe coming through the portal just in case our Lindenbaum goes to the NFL to replace him? Yeah, they've got the kid. They have, uh, they have offered. I know they've been attached to a few O-line recruits uh, over the past few days. Let me pull up the one. Um, yeah, Hunter Norzad from uh, Cornell is a kid. He's a grad transfer that Iowa offered. You know, Iowa, of course, went to the portal for Koi Kronk a year ago. So there's a possibility they could bring in somebody from the portal. Um, I think that'd probably be a good idea because some of these guys are young. I mean, if, if they think David David Cobb from last year is is ready to take a step, maybe you don't. Or maybe it's Jennings Dunker, or it's Ma, you know Michael Mislinski. Uh, they got a lot of guys from that 21 class that could develop and play right away because they need help. But you mentioned it. If Linderbaum leaves, it's going to be Matt Fagan or someone. Someone's going to have to step up at center because, man, this is Linderbaum. I think you'd agree with this, Howard. This is one of the best individual linemen Iowa has ever had. Yes. I mean, that's, I mean, I haven't seen. There's been one other center, but I can't remember his. I think it's Balaga. He was. Yeah. I think he was a lineman or or center. Well, I can't remember. But yeah, he ended up. He ended up playing guard. And he, I don't think he played center ever at Iowa, but he ended up playing guard. Um, yeah, he's he's. I didn't mention him earlier. He's one of the better guards that Iowa's produced. And, of course, Austin Blythe is a kid who's been really, really successful in the NFL who played center here. So Iowa does a good job all across the line at, at development of individuals. Now we got to make it a collective thing and, and get a unit that can actually run the ball effectively. Yeah, because uh, if, we got, if we can get a quarterback and the offensive line kind of filled up, with our defense next year, it uh, doesn't scare me as bad. But you're right. If they don't, it well, is the same thing like we think it's going to. It's going to be a long year. I think you can. Uh, I think we can. I'm not saying it's a guarantee. I wouldn't guarantee anything, but I would be very surprised if Iowa goes after a transfer quarterback. You know my yeah, opinion. Don't hold I your think, breath. I think they need to, but I don't believe it will happen. I hope they prove uh, me wrong. Well. Me too, but sorry I haven't been around much. I have been working a lot. And That's so. okay. That is okay. But, all right. All right. Well, I'll uh, sit back and listen and uh, go Hawks. Hey, i got to ask you, how's that uh, that shiny new automobile treating you? Uh, this is pretty good. Um, uh, been pretty good. I mean, I mean, I got some uh, Hawkeye things that can be putting on it, and I'll be sending you pictures uh, later on after it's done. Nice. I got a wrap. Gonna, I got a wrap. I'm going to put on it and everything. But people don't know is my ve- my truck got stolen a few weeks back, and I got another vehicle, which I did get the truck back, but it's been trashed. Yeah. So, well, did they catch the guys who did it? Uh, then no, they haven't. It was not even. <laughs> I don't really want to go on that. Sure. Because our police force work hard and everything, but some places they didn't care. So I understand. And but, let me ask you one more question: Were you guys uh, at all affected by the the storms? Um, the other day, I was on the road and I was hauling double 
and I was going north on 13, and there's a couple times I thought that back trailer was going to go over, and I had to pull over. And uh, before, um, kind of north of us, this next storm coming in right now, we have really high winds. We have guests up to 22 mile an hour right down here right now, and which is the tail part of which your guys are going to be getting here in a couple of hours. Yeah, we're supposed to be getting gusts 60 to 80 mile an hour. Yeah, we don't, you guys don't need another derecho. So, <laughs> no, we do not. And like I told everybody, if our, if all of a sudden we get to a point where the stream goes down, you'll know why. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope that doesn't happen. Well, just holler. I got generators. <laughs> okay. Appreciate it, Hawkeye. <laughs> when you live in, the, when you, when you live in the South with the ice storms we have down here, I, you know, I would been down about 22 years, but I've been down here for two ice storms. You have generators. <laughs> Absolutely. So. You're right. All right. Well, go Hawks and uh, uh, keep up the good work, Corey. Appreciate it, Hawkeye Howard. Have a great night. Mm -hmm. All right, man. This has been a news filled afternoon. Tyrone Tracy committing to Purdue. We talked about Brian Allen Jr. signing on with Iowa. And then the latest, let's go ahead and make a banner here because if I don't, I'm going to totally forget to do this. Um, and I don't want to just uh, give. Allen and Trader the uh, spotlight here because Cohen and Tringa, man alive, this kid, I know he's a three-star recruit and uh, I know rivals are at 247, whatever, all these different platforms don't have him ranked real highly, but man, he has been a big time get. Uh, if you look at just his offers, um, and again, we can run through those again here in a second. Let me get this banner up for everybody. And I believe we have Iowa offensive lineman Kale Crow, future Iowa. Well, he's you can call him official. He signed today, so we're going to be able to talk with Kale Crow here in a second. You're wondering about Iowa's offensive line, wondering the future of tackle, wondering the future uh, of Iowa's run game. Look no, no further than this show here in just a few minutes because Kale Crow will be joining us live following his signing right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. So if you haven't already done so, uh, be sure to um, share this show out on social media. And um, again, uh, just a, an all-around great day. And, and you saw the, the news that we popped up here a moment ago that Tyrone Tracy has committed to Purdue. Um, that's big time. I mean, you know, it's an opportunity for Tracy to revitalize and regenerate a career that sort of went sideways. And uh, not necessarily all his fault. He's he's had to deal with some competition from uh, some, uh, I would say, really young and talented kids, athletic kids. You look at a guy like um, Keegan Johnson. You look at a guy like Ar Arlen Bruce. Uh, those guys have been really good. And so it's not it's not Tyrone Tracy's fault. He'll get an opportunity again. I think he's been a good teammate, and I wish him all the best. And he gets to play back home, and that's uh, that's got to be a positive for Tyrone. All right. I'm going to pop this up here. Making sure I have all the uh, details here on Cohen and Tring. And I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Um, again, kid from Wald Lake, Michigan. All right. That's the breaking news here, folks. If you didn't already catch it, 2022 athlete Cohen and Tringa has committed to Iowa. Um, Wald Lake, Michigan, class of 2022, again, offers according to, I'm going to grab rivals here. Not that I don't trust 247 sports. Those are kind of my go-tos. They do a great job on the recruiting circuits. But according to rivals and Tringa, is the 18th best player in the in the state of Michigan, 41st overall athlete. Now, he was also previously committed to Central Michigan. So Iowa is not doing Central Michigan any favors in this class. Now, you may say, um, why was he committed to Central Michigan when the likes of Michigan and Wisconsin were recruiting him? Well, couple things and i don't know again we'll we'll produce more content as the days go by on guys like intringa but um you know oftentimes 
teams end up going a different direction before a kid makes a, a decision. Or maybe they offered him early in the cycle, and I wouldn't say would retract the offer, but they stop really showing a whole lot of interest. And so, you know, that affects a kid. And I'm not saying that happened with Intringa, um, but he did commit to Central Michigan, and maybe he's got connections to the Chippewas otherwise. But uh, again, we'll see where he ends up uh, at Iowa. Was com- it was recruited by Phil Parker, visited this past weekend. So that's the past weekend ended up being a really big, really a real help to guys like Trader and Intringa. Uh, and I'm having some problems. I'm sure Rivals is getting plastered right now with uh, people trying to visit their site. But if you want a complete list of who recruited Intringa and offered. So here's the offer list for Intringa. Iowa, of course, Boston College, Wisconsin, Central Michigan, Colorado, Eastern Illinois, Eastern Kentucky, Howard, Maryland, Michigan, Morgan State, Notre Dame, Syracuse, Temple, Tulane, Utah, Vanderbilt, and Youngstown. So, um, you know, you got some FCS programs in there, some HBCs. You've got a couple uh, group of five schools. Again, he was committed to a MAC school in Central Michigan, but he also had Power Five, Big Ten offers: Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, Maryland, and Notre Dame. So, you know, I'll be anxious to hear, and we'll learn more about Intringa. Some of these guys kind of flew under the radar for me. Of course, we knew Intringa; there was a possibility that he would commit. Um, and now that is official. And I told you that. Uh, there would be at least one extra. There would be one, at least one extra commit today. We've so far gotten, if I'm counting these up correctly, Iowa has landed. Who again, were questionable. Would they commit to Iowa? Would they not sign today? Um, again, these are guys that weren't committed heading into today. And, Iowa has landed four out of four by my count, four out of four. And if I'm wrong, somebody call in and correct me. But the, the, the guys that were really on the Iowa radar today were Landon Van Kikerix committed to Iowa early this morning. Brian Allen committed to Iowa this afternoon. Orlando Trader committed to Iowa. Conan Tranga committed to Iowa. My understanding now is that we may have news Let me see if we can find this here. We may have news on K. Ron Crawford. And again, uh, our line is open. I know that uh, we were taking calls and we kind of got behind in the chat. But if you want to give us a call, this would be a good time to uh, give us a call. 515 635 1601 and K Ron Crawford. So he is going to be announcing sounds like at three 30. So I, I thought that was at two 30. So K Ron is committing at three 30. So I don't believe we have an announcement from K Ron yet. So we'll keep that on the back burner again. Uh, in moments from now, we're going to be talking with uh, Kale Crow, who is uh, an Iowa commit and now signee. Um, six foot six, two sixty seven out of Huxley. All right, Huxley. If in case you didn't know this, Huxley is what ten miles south of Ames, maybe less than that. Uh, and so it's an opportunity for Iowa to improve tackle play. Uh, and I just got a text from Mister Don Powder- Patterson, so let me respond to that. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Um, I'm just saying TJ Hall is committing in three minutes as well. Appreciate that. Um, we'll see. I won't I won't give it away, but I, I have a good feeling. Yeah, okay. Sure. Appreciate that. That's a, you're, yeah, I appreciate you letting the cat out of the bag on that. So I can and I can neither confirm nor deny what that caller just got done saying. So if you caught it, great. If not, well, we'll uh, we'll wait a few more minutes. 
Um, all right. Having a few problems with connecting our recruit here. Kale is trying to get on StreamYard with us, and so... All right. And I believe we have our guy here now on. Kale, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Kale, it is a pleasure to see you today on one of, I'm sure you'd say, one of the uh, biggest days of your young life and your career. And I know everybody here uh, has been following the news throughout the day. Just a, a big day for Hawkeye Nation. And you, of course, been committed for quite some time. Uh, and of course, I'm intrigued by your commitment because you are a local kid here in Story County, specifically Huxley. Yeah. First of all, let's just talk about the journey. I know we can talk about today and, and how you're feeling now that you've, you've made it official, but just talk about the journey and, and the fact that you're now a Hawkeye. Well, it feels really good to finally be a Hawkeye and make it official and sign it down on paper. But my journey, uh, I would have started my freshman year. Coach Neiman came in. He was just uh, arousing the area, just seeing – who's around asking coaches if they had anybody who they thought had potential. And so that's when my first connection with Iowa started. And it'd be like weekly phone calls, text messages, and then it progressed into getting a visit my sophomore year. And then with COVID, I was never able to get out there because they had visits and stuff shut down. So it's always through the phone. And then I got my camp over the summer. I got the offer and then co or committed like two, three days later. And I just knew it was the place for me. Talk about what the, the Ballard community has meant to you. I know a lot of our listeners on here are Hawkeye fans. We've got Hawkeye fans from all over listening. But talk about the Ballard community because I'm, of course, familiar with 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 Ballard. And, and it's a very tight-knit group, whether you're talking Huxley and Slater and Sheldon and all the way across the, uh, the highway there. But just talk about what the community has done for you and what it means to you. Yeah, as you said, it's a very tight-knit community. And there was an event called the Rachel last year, which was actually – it was a very bad thing that happened, but it was pretty cool. We as a community really united together, and that's the tightest I've ever seen us. As a football team, we even skipped practice for three days just to go out in the community, clean up trees, and we would be working with locals and just people from Slater, Huxley, Cambridge, all over. It's so like we are a really tight-knit group of people. We care about each other. We're going to do everything to help. And then after the Rachel, it really showed because – we would see everybody that we were helping in the stands on Friday nights, whether it be for basketball, football. It was just really cool. And I don't want to bring this up. I know we're talking about football, but another tragedy that occurred was the the Slater parade accident mm -hmm. uh, this past summer. And I, I personally, you know, I got friends in, in Slater and saw that community really come together. Um, and again, I've just always been impressed with, with the Ballard community. So let's talk a little bit about football here because of course uh you're, you're focused now on your career moving forward of course you got to you know you got some school to, to finish out there uh at ballard but um what appealed to you about iowa of course the, the the roots at offensive tackle but what appealed to you specifically uh besides the roots and the success they've had on the o-line was the people the people really stood out to me they were real they told me exactly what i needed to hear not things that recruits might want to hear they weren't like putting fluffy talk into it as me and the O-line coach would sometimes call it. And you can see um, with how long they're, the longevity of the people there, that's not going to change. And that's exactly what I'm going to get when I get there. George Barnett, talk about your relationship with him because a lot of people don't really know George yet. Um, you know, he's, I'm sure he, he was added during your recruitment process. So did that change your mindset at all? Or, I mean, I know Iowa state was also in the running for your services, but what was how has that evolved your relationship with Coach Barnett? Well, my relationship with Coach Barnett actually started when he was at Tulane. And so I had an offer from him early. Right. And so when he got to Iowa, I'm like, this is a good shot for me because I already know this coach. We have a good relationship. And he told me, uh, it would have been like first two weeks of him being there, that he wanted to offer me right away, just the way Iowa does things. They want to see me at camp and make sure I check off these boxes on their list. But Coach Barnett. He's a straightforward guy. He's going to tell you how it is, and he's going to tell you if he likes it or he doesn't like it. So he's super straightforward, and he's going to get to the point. 
Okay, so I'll just I'll, I'll speak for some of the Iowa fans who have called in this afternoon, and and most have been very positive. This this class has, I'm sure you'd agree, this class has really uh, elevated itself, and I Absolutely. think a lot of Iowa fans were concerned. You probably heard some of that. They were concerned this past summer that it wasn't, you know, we don't have enough recruits and it's not high enough rank and all that garbly goop. But the recruiting class has really evolved and it's really taken a leap forward these last few days. And certainly Xavier Wampa helped that, I think, no question about it. But talk about what you've seen from Iowa on the recruiting trail. How are they getting it done now more than ever? Because they did it again in 21 as well. It seems like maybe a, a corner has been turned in recruiting. For them right now, I think the big thing is uh, they've always told kids exactly what they need to hear and what Iowa football is. They're not putting fancy stuff on it. They're not selling them something that they don't have. And so kids are starting to realize that, okay, if I go to Iowa, I know exactly what I'm getting into where there could be blank spots in other schools. And that's why it's picking up really quickly right now, especially just in the last couple of hours of picking up more people. Absolutely. Um I also speak for the Iowa fan base in saying there have been some frustrations with pass rush or excuse me, pass protection. And you, I think, I mean, I, I look at your tape and I'm, I'm no, by no means an expert uh, on the offensive line. Um, I would probably consider George Barnett and Kirk Ferentz to be experts, yeah. uh, but you, I would have to think you're, you're a natural tackle. I mean, is that safe to say that you're, you're not moving from tackle once you get to Iowa? Yeah, no, tackle is my most likely projected spot. Coach Barnett said in times of need, if they need to move me down the guard because of my aggression, if he could see me there during like a important run block or something and such, but mostly going to be a tackle. And so your size, I mean, I look at you 6'6". Six, six, I mean, I'm assuming these numbers are correct. You're 6'6", six, six, what, 265? Am I getting that correct? Yeah, I weighed in about 275 today. So it's just up from last time I weighed in at Iowa, but yeah. Okay, so... um. As far as playing time, you know, I, I always hear, talk to recruits, I always hear whatever is going to get me on the field um, and however I can help my team, whether it even be on the scout team, whatever it may be. So what is your your plans moving forward? First of all, are you enrolling early? And if not, what are your, your plans as far as when you get to Iowa City? I will not be enrolling early. So as soon as I get there, I'm ready to get to work and do whatever is necessary. And I just want to start with doing whatever I can do to help the team, whether it be being a practice guy, whether it be working in a way into a three, a two, possibly a one if I could, like a Connor Colby has done this year, which is just awesome. Yeah. And it's just going to be kind of that O-line mindset of being able to help however you can, and that's what I'm going to be going into trying to do. Um, okay, this, this is an important question because there is more to life than football. What? Uh, tell us about your hobbies. What do you like to do when you're off the field? I like to work out, um, especially with my friends, lift weights, play basketball. I've started wrestling this year for the first time. I love that. And then I love to hunt and fish when I have free weekends to get out and do stuff like that. I apologize. I had uh, baseball up there. And, of course, you're a wrestler, so let's change that. Um, what, did, what have you learned from Tyler Linderbaum watching him on tape? I know he plays a different position on the field, but you have to have learned just from his motor and his dominance what he's done these last two years. Well, exactly. You just said the two big ones right there. His motor and his dominance are huge. He does not give up on plays. And, like, there's big examples of it in the Nebraska game. He was taking guys. The whistle might be blown, and he's still going for another two seconds because he's going to play the game, and you are going to play to his pace. He's not playing to yours. And so, like, I'd like to be like that play as dominant as he does. One thing that I will say, Kale, and this is what I've observed. I've observed it on defense. I've observed it certainly – um, on the offensive side of the ball as well. seems like Iowa's staff, what they pride themselves on, and I've seen it even more in recent years, is motor. The kids got to have a good motor. And certainly Linderbaum, as a center, it's probably the best motor that I've seen. I, I don't remember a guy at Iowa finishing plays the way he does. So, And I see the same from you on tape. Um, what would you, and we can talk about your strengths, but what would you say you need to work on as far as weaknesses? If, if we want to, you know, you're on paper now, so you're, you're all in. So what do you need to work on heading into uh, this coming year? Uh, biggest thing I think I need to work on is just getting out of my stance faster and delivering that initial pop quicker, because sometimes, especially when we're moving up into higher levels, you're going to get guys who are really well at getting off the ball. And so it's gonna be a big advantage if I can get to them before they can get to me. Absolutely. Goals. Um, Again, we can talk football, but this could be anything. Goals for your community, goals for your family, short-term, long-term. What are your focuses right now, now that you've made it official? 
Uh, on football related for basketball right now, we've been to state championship three years in a row. So that's every year I've been in high school. And I hope to do that for a fourth because I have never finished the high school basketball season before March. And so that's a big goal in the community as well as in just Ballard and as the team and long-term goals. I just want to get to Iowa and then be able to get to work, work with the guys and then earn my way into a spot. Is there a guy on this roster right now that you're, you've already developed a, a relationship with or somebody you're friends with on the Iowa roster? Yeah. Is there anybody on there that you've gotten to? Uh, get I am to? fairly tight with Mason Richmond. He is, uh, was my player host on the OV. So I talked to him a good bit when I get the chance. And then I'm tight with the commits as well, especially Aaron Graves and Jack Dotsler. Yeah. We interviewed Aaron here a couple of weeks ago. And I remember him bringing up the fact that you guys, I mean, you're what? See Huxley's temp because of course we're named. So you're you're eight nine miles south of us here in Ames. Yep. Gowrie's hour fifteen. So you yeah. you got about an hour and a half drive. Um, how how has your relationship with Aaron been able to grow since the since your commitment? Oh, as soon as after I committed, we started texting a lot. And every Saturday over the summer, we were getting in at the Ames field and getting in workouts. And so. We developed not only just like a friend relationship, we developed like that workout relationship and like pushing each other and working out together. People are going to look at you, Kale, and this will be the final thing. And I'll let you get back to, uh, I'm sure you, you have a big day, although we're waiting, we're awaiting storms here. So yeah. <laughs> you're going to have a memorable signing day. I'll say that yeah, for sure. But, um, I will ask you this, as far as moving forward um, and, and thinking about what Iowa needs, their, their needs really, um, heading into this recruiting cycle. I think they recruited very well in 21 on the offensive line. And you got some young talent. You mentioned Connor Colby, Jennings Dunkers, another guy, yeah. Miles, Michael Mislinski. You can go down yeah. the list. But one other kid stands out in this class as being very similar as far as stature to you, and that is Jack Dotzler. Yep. You have a, a relationship with Jack, and and how do you – have you been able to look at you your tape together, and how do you compare to Jack? Um, so me and Jack, we're fairly tight. We text a good bit on Snapchat. We've seen each other on the visits. Um, stature wise, we do uh, line up pretty close. We are a lot alike. And I think we're going to be very similar players and pretty much all around. It's going to come down to just us battling out every day in practices and workouts. Well, Kale, it's been a pleasure getting to know you here for a few minutes and I can speak on behalf of, uh, Story County, storycounty.news, and here from the Hawkeye of the Storm and all of Hawkeye Nation, congratulations. And um, I hope that we don't need you for this, but you may need to be going around Story County and lifting some trees up. Yeah. <laughs> and clearing. I'm assuming you did a lot of that after the derecho. I mean, you Oh, for that. sure. We have pictures and stuff of the football team. We were carrying around logs, and guys would just start piling the logs on top of me. And so it's pretty funny. <laughs> Well, use your use your your skills and your your strengths to your advantage, Kale. And hopefully, we don't have to deal with that this afternoon and tomorrow. But again, best of wishes, and we look forward to seeing you in a Hawkeye uniform soon. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Kale Crow joining us here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Um, it was a pleasure talking to Kale. And again, uh, if you want to call in and uh, discuss this recruiting class, the lines are open. We took the lines down while we had Kale on here. But uh, you're welcome to call in. Let me pop the number back up here for everybody so they can see it. Uh, 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601. Again, thank you to Kale. That was a, a pleasure to be able to talk with him fresh off what was a major, major day for all of the Ballard community, and especially Hawkeye Nation and that offensive line. All right. Um looking to see if we have any updates that broke while we were in that interview. And we did. So the, uh, I've been teasing this for a while and we had our caller call in and kind of spoil the news. That's okay. Whatever. Oh, this is a, this is great. Um, TJ Hall has committed to Iowa. All right. That is absolutely huge news all right and and we knew this was coming I, I knew this was coming for a while i'm sure others did as well um this is likely going to cap off what was i think an historically good signing day all right 
And TJ Hall, of all the kids Iowa added today, he may be the best. I'm not saying, you know, again, these guys play different positions, but he may be the best, all right? He's a long, long defensive back. All right, let me pull up his profile for anybody that doesn't know TJ Hall. I'll give you a bit of a background on TJ Hall. TJ's dad, Terrence, TJ's dad, Terrence, played at Western Illinois as a receiver for coach Don Patterson. All right, so I'll just say that. Um, again, just a, just an absolutely huge, uh, huge development. And Hall is a California kid. He was originally committed to Arizona. He then flipped and went to Washington. And now he's an Iowa Hawkeye. And uh, this, I don't think this decision is changing. He is all in on the Hawkeyes. All right. I'll give you a, a bit of a breakdown here. Rivals is having problems with their website. All right, class of 22, he's listed as six foot. I've seen him listed as high as six two. Now, he, he might be closer to six foot, but he is a long, he's a um, athletic defensive back. Uh, you want to know his <laughs> list of schools who are in on him? Again, we're going to have to ditch the Rivals site because I tell you, I, I love Rivals. I love Tom Caker, but man, that site is just running like a snail right now. Um, and by the way, again, our, our line is open. You want to call in. Um, yeah, so six, two, so two, four, seven's got him listed as six, two. Um, he was recruited and offered a course by Washington and Arizona. He was uh, at one point committed to both of those schools at different times. Colorado offered Colorado state, Fresno state, Michigan offered. So Iowa scoops another kid from Michigan. Uh, the grasps of Jim Harbaugh. Nevada was in on him. New Mexico, Oregon State, Cal. Uh, Cal did not offer. Cal, uh, according to 247, was in on him, but did not offer, as did UCLA. San Jose State also offered. But a good, another another really good, and I think underrated prospect here. And again, he's got really good football roots. His dad, Terrence, played wide receiver at Western Illinois uh, under Tom uh, Don Patterson. And um, and again, I'm trying to to manage a bunch of different things right now. We've got so much as as far as uh, news here this afternoon. Um, T.J. Hall committing to Iowa and signing. Let me ma- let me change this because. It is official. He has inked. He has he actually, I believe he signed earlier today and the announcement just came, but TJ Hall has committed to and has signed with the Iowa Hawkeyes. All right. I can run through the uh, latest here. want to remind everybody, if you have not already subscribed... Please do that. What are you waiting for? We got 111 people on here. I'm assuming all of you have subscribed, and if you haven't, please do so. It helps immensely. Um, of course, you can you can donate to our channel as well below in the description. But uh, again, it helps immensely if you at least subscribe, and uh, certainly if you share our show on social media, it helps. It's free to subscribe. It's on YouTube, so please subscribe if you can, and uh, certainly we'll we'll continue to produce. Um, regular Iowa content as far as recruiting uh, and as well as preparation for the bowl game, which we'll focus on here soon. I know I'm way behind on the chat, so let's uh, try to catch up on everybody. It's been a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, my voice starts to give out. It's because we're, we've are we been on here for almost three hours. That's okay. I'm enjoying it. Like I think hopefully everybody else is as well. All right. Um, Space Boy, 74. Is it just me or whenever a four or five star kid commits to Iowa, they get downgraded a star, it seems? Well, not the case with Carson May and um, with, uh, uh, boy, I can't think, Caleb uh, Caleb Johnson. Uh, both of those kids committed and actually were upgraded after their commitment heading into signing day. Now, Jazzy and Patterson did lose a star. His team, I know Tom Caker of Hawkeye Report explained this to us the other day. They've had a weird year. 
at Deerfield Beach. Um, and uh, so it, it certainly helps to be able to uh, look at a kid with a team around him that's that's meshing and that's playing well. And I don't think Jazzy's probably had that this year. But again, Iowa's got Aaron Graves is a four star. Carson May's a four star. Um, you know, Caleb Johnson's a four star. I consider Jazzy and Patterson to be a four star. You know, I know he lost a, four, a fourth star on Rivals. And then again, we mentioned Brian Allen uh, committed today, and he's a four star according to Rivals. So it's it's been a very, very good day for Iowa recruiting. Um, Yakov 22, why did Iowa pass on in state QB JJ Cole and instead go for Marco Linez? I don't know that they passed on him. We had. Uh, I believe it was uh, Vincent call earlier and brought up the fact that could they go up, could they go out and, and take both of these kids? I, I have a hard time seeing that happen. Um, but I think both of these kids, I think they were, would have been happy with either one. Yakov. I think they would have been happy with either one. Both guys can move. They're both four stars and I, I like Linez, but we'll see JJ Cole. His stock continues to uh, go up. Appreciate you being here, Steve. I know this is a while ago, but I, I didn't forget you. I appreciate you being here as well. CJ says, what do you consider a good rushing season? I consider anything over four yards a carry to be a good rushing season. Uh, I believe last year they were over four yards a carry. Um, you know, I don't know what the numbers would indicate as far as Wisconsin um, is concerned. I know it's a different run scheme there, but I would consider anything over four yards per carry to be a good, good season. Uh, username invalid brings up Goodson, maybe too shifty behind the offensive line. Vision just wasn't there and missed gaps and holes at, at times. Yeah, I think that he had his, his, his downfalls. I mean, he's not a perfect running back and certainly the NFL is going to give him some feedback if they haven't already as to what he needs to do, uh, to, uh, improve and, and, and end up getting a shot at the next level. He's, he's got time now. He doesn't have a bowl game to prep for, so he's got time to, uh, to, uh, improve. Hair trigger 83. Don't see Kurt going for a portal QB. I agree, but I, I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Mr. CEO, 40th class ranked, ranked class. Well, I don't know if that's sarcasm. That's gone up, Mr. CEO. I would have to think. I don't know if we even have that. Is that even, I don't know. Um, again, I don't really pay too much attention to that. I, I think pieces of this class are more important than cumulative ranking and I would have to say that Iowa has done uh, a lot better than most people expected. And I think the class shapes up well. I think they've got a good class and a lot of guys who have come in here today and helped specific needs. And they need help at defensive back, especially with Moss and Hankins being gone. And they got that today with Hall and Trader. Seth, tuning in late. Uh, yes, we've we've talked about a lot of the signees, probably not all of them. We'll get to that before the end of our show. We're with you uh, for at least another hour here. And, um, again, we'll take your calls, take your comments, um, on this marathon of a, of a signing day show. Good point here from space boy 74. Yeah. Desmond and, uh, Riley Moss. Those guys were not highly recruited kids. Hyper local Moss is not coming back. He is not coming back. He cannot come back. He's, he's playing in the senior bowl, which means he's moving on. So that, that's a that's per the University of Iowa. This is a question that I reached out and asked about yesterday. He is not coming back. He's going to the Senior Bowl, which means he's moving on. I will agree with you on this, though. Iowa is crushing it on signing day. Absolutely. Eli, good point. Benson from Sioux Falls. So don't count out kids. Um, you know, the, the, the kids like, um, well, we brought up Benson, Jewel. Um, James Morris was brought up earlier. Um, they, they, they continue to get guys like this who exceed expectations are local kids, Midwest kids. Um, and, uh, Van Kikerix is a kid from, uh, it was at rock Valley, I believe. Yeah. Rock Valley. Um, who's going to have an opportunity to become, uh, a kid like, I don't want to compare him directly to Benson. Cause again, I haven't watched a whole lot of tape from Kikerix, but Van Kikerix, excuse me. Uh, he's got an opportunity to, to turn into uh, one of those under the radar type kids that develops and ends up playing and having a great career at Iowa. Um, yes, Ray, absolutely. Everybody stay safe this afternoon because these storms are a coming according to uh, the weather people. John, that defense is going to be nasty for years to come. I think they've done a lot to help that cause, John, especially on the defensive line. That's where I feel like there was a step that needed to be taken 
I didn't think pass rush was was good enough this year. That's just my take. It was good, but it wasn't good enough. It can improve. Um, it's some young talent. They had some injury issues there as well. You know, uh, Craig missed some time. Herkett missed time. Um, but uh, they've got an opportunity. Logan Jones was out as well. They've got an opportunity, especially Aaron Graves and Brian Allen. Boy, those two guys could really help in pass rushing. Absolutely. Spaceboy74, I'm 47, been a lifelong Iowa fan. This is literally the first year I've followed signing day for Iowa. The excitement is real. Thank you. That's a, I mean, that's not a compliment to our show, but it's at least a compliment to what this, this staff has done this year. Hawkeye Howard, I got Twitter for the first time ever. There you go. Uh, Charles, I think one of the positive benefits of this season, which raised hopes and then fell short, is it may have created impressions with recruits. They can make the difference. Yeah, that's that's possible. Um, and certainly being number two in the country doesn't hurt. That Penn State game was big. Um, it, it just, uh, again, we, we know what it did for Xavier Wampa and his impression of Iowa. And there were a lot of kids, including um, Kyler Casper, who were at that game. And, of course, Casper and Proctor are going to be two of Iowa's biggest priorities heading into this next cycle. Iowa now eighth in the Big Ten in recruiting. Um, yeah, and that may go up. I don't know. Again, I've not been following what anybody else is doing on the recruiting trail today from the Big Ten, but um, absolutely could go up. Kelvin Bell has done an amazing job. That's even understating it. He has. They need to get, again, good at pass rush, but they've had good success there since he's been here. It's just been kind of a down year as far as that's concerned, but they did lose a lot with, again, Golston and Heflin and and Nixon. That That hurt. I did see this from, um, is it Allen or Alon, the number one recruit in the, the country signed with Jackson State. Um, I believe he flipped from, was it Clemson? Um, but he's playing for Deion Sanders, right? So that doesn't really, I mean, it's incredible that Jackson State can land a kid like that. But uh, um, the HBC the HBC poll is real with some of these kids, and I, I don't uh, I have anything against that at all. Um Connecticut is small, has 400,000 more people than Iowa. Yeah, so they've had success there. We talked about Nico Regani and, of course, some success today uh, with Allen. Um, yeah, they've done well out there. Uh, of course, Allen is from Oakdale. Um, so, absolutely. Username invalid. You're 25 mi miles west of Colo. Hyper windy, not looking great. Um, I would like to see what it's doing outside, but I can't because I'm on here. That's not a complaint. It's just a fact. I got the report. My wife said it's cloudy. So it's cloudy out. Is it windy out? I'm assuming it's windy out. It's got to be windy. You're like close to us, username invalid. Where yeah, you close to, close to Ames, I'm assuming. Um, John, good question. Does Xavier start day one? That's a good question. Um, I, I think I think he's going to have a chance. I don't know. It depends on what Belton does. If Belton leaves, I think he's got a chance to start immediately um, at cash. If Kerner leaves, I think he's got an opportunity to start immediately at safety or cash and maybe move Belton to safety. Bora Rim, Hilson, yeah. He, what did I say? Hoover? You're right. He went to Des Moines North. Um, I don't know why I said Hoover, but you're right. Um The Outlaw Josie Wales, great day for Hawkeyes. Any wide receiver prospects for us today? Well, Jacob Bostic signed. He's a, a bigger kid, 6'1", 6'2", so he provides some length at that wide receiver room lost with the departures of Brandon Smith and Desmond Hudson. I don't think we're weak at that position, Outlaw Josie Wales. I don't. I, I don't think we're weak there because I like what Keegan Johnson, Arlen Bruce, I think Charlie Jones is coming back. I have no inside information on that. That would just be a, a hunch. I think he's coming back. Um... And certainly, if they can get Bostic to develop, he could be an excellent X guy a year or two down the road. But I don't think they're too. I, I don't think there are too. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think they're too uh, thin there. I think they're okay at wide receiver. But Bostic will help the cause. Bryce, good to see you here. Yes, uh, I saw that username invalid uh, did uh, mention the Cohen and Tringa uh, news before we did, and. Um, Again, I'm kind of behind on the chat, so I'm trying to keep a bunch of... I've got two screens here, and I'm trying to juggle social media, and I knew we had Kale Crow coming on here as well. Um, so, uh, again, I appreciate it. And I, I, right now, I, I don't know if... We might have... I think we've got cell phone cover. We have cell phone service down right now? Yeah, 
I, I I don't know if we're having some problems with cell phone service or if a tower went down or something, but having some issues with uh, with social media. Maybe Twitter just broke. Maybe Iowa's recruiting class was so good that Twitter broke. Is that possible? Um, okay. Uh, okay. Charles Harris, I think Kirk Ferentz would be a reluctant to bring in a prima donna quarterback from Portal. He would develop, prefer to develop a, a young mind to conform to the Ferentz way. Well, I don't agree with that, but I, I mean, I agree with you, Charles. That's probably what he's likely to do. I don't agree with, with going that route. I think they need to go and find a quarterback in the portal. That's just my opinion. Um, Ray, anyone from Western Iowa, is this storm for real? Again, I'm, just, I'm totally disconnected to what the weather's doing right now. I just know it's supposed to be bad. Quincy, if we don't start a freshman quarterback next year, probably two of the new guys uh, are going to transfer and we will be back in the same place. I I, I don't know about two guys. You're going to always have an opportunity or, or, or a, a danger of guys transferring. I mean, Deuce Hogan leaving doesn't help. Um, doesn't help competition at quarterback this coming spring. I think it would take a while. I don't know about Labus. I don't know how long he'd stick around. He just got here. Um, but I would hope that he could develop and, and provide some serious competition for those guys back there. But you're right. The transfer portal is a part of college football now. Allen, did Casper commit to Iowa? No. But again, he's a class of 23 guys, so give him some time. Um, and I, I think they got a good shot. I think they got a really good shot with Kyler. Quincy Johnson, I'm excited for David Kov. Yes, he dealt with an injury early um, preseason, and I don't know um, where he's at now. I haven't heard from from Iowa's coaching staff recently on the, the development of David Kov. But yes, I was extremely, um, I, I was extremely concerned before the 21 class because I thought the offensive line was was pretty thin, and then boy, they added a lot of talent up front. They've done a nice job these last two these last two cycles, uh, I think, on the offensive line. Um, Steve sports says there was a severe level gust sustained up to 50 miles per hour in the Northwest corner wind with gust up to 90 miles per hour decreases from, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Again, I've, the, the windows aren't busted here at the house, but I'm not really seeing outside. So Sebastian, I'd be so irritated if Tyrone balls out for Purdue, he was supposed to be the guy this year and just never was a factor. If he balls out for Purdue, that might be a bit of an indictment on Iowa. Can we agree with that? If he goes out and just just destroy, I mean, just tears it up, that's an indictment on Iowa. But I agree with Drew. Keegan and Bruce were simply better. They earned those spots, and uh, they deserve what they got. Um, all right, Steve, appreciate you here. And, yes, please be safe if you're out there um, chasing these storms. I know it's uh, uh, you, that's your job, but just please be uh, safe. Um, Charles Harris. Yes. Purdue does throw a lot more than, than Iowa. So it's going to help the, ch it's going to help a guy like Tracy to be a factor. Um, Tyler, when does K Ron Crawford, c uh, commit any second now, Tyler, any second now the, the, the word that I got on, on K Ron was that he would be announcing here soon. And I don't have that update for you. And here, here's what I'll say, okay? Beings that I don't have that update for you, and the University of Iowa did just send out an email um, about um, Iowa's recruits that signed on today. K. Ron Crawford is not on that list, okay? So I, I'm not. I, I, I assuming that he is not signing with Iowa. That's what I'm going to assume, because I don't know why you'd send out that email before he commits. So let's just wait and see on K Ron, but I would guess that he is going a different direction. Um, but again, we'll, we'll keep up to date here on the, as, as we um, finish out this show. Good to see you back here, Erica. Um, be sure to check out our interview with Kale Crow that you missed earlier when you were gone. Um, Brian, yes, TJ Hall is a Hawkeye. He has signed. Hawkeye Nation, yes. Uh, no info on K Ron Crawford. I'm guessing that he's going a different direction but I have no insider information. I'm just hypothesizing about the fact that Iowa did just send out a media release um, with all the different signees and Crawford was not on that list. And I believe Crawford was scheduled to make a selection at three 30 today. 
I was thinking it was 2.30, but I have not heard a darn thing about K. Ron Crawford. So stand by on that. I mean, I'm sure we'll get confirmation here any moment about where Crawford is going, but there, there have been no updates that I can see. So let's just wait on, on the K. Ron Crawford news. Again, I'm guessing he's going somewhere else, but I have no insider information there. Rafe, is Kerner coming back? Again, no inside information for me. Um, I would think it would do him well to come back. Um, you know, he's undersized. He's probably not the best athlete that Iowa's had at safety. Um, he's got a great nose for the ball. He hits hard. He's a good tackler in their open field. Um, but I, I don't know. If he moves on, I think Iowa's going to be okay. You bring Kayvon Merriweather back, you're going to get Wampa in there. Um, I think they like Quinn Schulte, who is a walk-on, who I'm sure has earned a scholarship by now. Sebastian Castro is back there as well. But again, with Wampa, and then, you know, I don't know if TJ Hall, I'm assuming TJ is going to stick at cornerback. The discussions I've had with Don Patterson makes it sound like they project him at corner. Again, he's a long, athletic cornerback. Reminds me a little bit of a guy like Julius Brents, just because of his length. Of course, Brents ended up transferring and going to Kansas State, um, but he had his moments at Iowa. Um, space boy 74. I've been gone for an hour and you guys are still going strong. Well, my, my, uh, my mind is starting to check out. I can feel my mind starting to weaken and get tired. I am not Mark Rogers. I cannot go 24 hours straight. Erica, we're not going to know about Caden Proctor for a while. Caden, uh, Caden's not going to be announcing anytime soon. I would guess. I, I, I don't even know if he's outlined when he's announcing. It'll be sometime next year and that's fine. Um, you know, again, he could sign, he could announce as late as a year from now. He's a 2023 guy. So it's possible. Now, if he's sold on Iowa or he's sold, sold on Bama or wherever he wants to go, he could announce early, but, um, certainly a kid like that can probably wait as long as he wants. And, and there's not going to be any, any, any fear of a, a team saying, well, we're, we're passing on you because you, uh, you didn't commit to us soon enough. Okay. Hawkman. 2111 says that uh, Iowa has now elevated itself to the 25th ranked class in the country. That is not a surprise to me, Hawkman. And I actually, before we went on live, I, I kind of was, uh, I had made that statement. I think uh, I, I was thinking at the time before we even found out about what well, the TJ Hall was, the news was in inevitable, but the other kids who have committed here late, including Brian Allen, it would not have surprised me again, uh, before it all happened, it was not a surprise to me that Iowa, uh, had they gotten these kids, that they could be in the top 25 range. And again, according to Hawkman 2111, they are now, according to Rivals. I've not confirmed that, but uh, that does not surprise me. And I wouldn't be surprised if that goes up a little bit. Again, they're not going to add anybody else unless Crawford surprises us. Again, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but, and again, I'm just refreshing my social media here and I don't see anything on Crawford, any news from him. So I have no idea. I have no idea what, ha what happened there. If I, I, again, I think I'm assuming Iowa knows he's not committing, but we'll wait and see on that. Mike 3883. I think it's been a terrific class for Iowa. Absolutely. Uh, a terrific class for Iowa. And yes, thank you, Mike, for reminding everybody. Um, we've got over a hundred people on here watching right now. If you haven't already done so, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. If you have not done so, you can share our show on social media, but if you've not already liked and subscribed, please do that real quick. It is much, much appreciated. The Real Hayden. Yes, TJ Hall, Fresno, California guy. Again, his dad um, his dad did play for, for Don Patterson. And my understanding is I don't know that he was ever real serious about Arizona or Washington. I don't want to speak for him. But recruiting is a game of, of uh, time, and it's a game of, um, you know, You've got as a student athlete, you have to make sure that you have exercised all your options, but you also don't want to get left behind. And that's a that's a tight line to to balance. And I think that's what he was doing. And it's just great to have him as a Hawkeye today. Okay, do I think Van Kickerix could play uh, wide receiver? Uh, that that's a I have no. 
listen, I very I know I'll just admit this. I know very little on Van Kikerix, and maybe I should have spent more time talking about him earlier, but I just don't know much about him. So if somebody knows something about him that I don't, feel free to call in. Um, but you know, he's a, he's obviously a good athlete. Um, you know, whether he ends up projecting at linebacker, that's an interesting question. Um I guess when I as when I'm watching him on film, I never thought he's a receiver, but um Again, Iowa does interesting things. I mean, you look at a guy like Tyler Linderbaum. You know, he switches from defense and becomes the best center in the country within a couple of years. I mean, it's incredible. So um, Iowa's ability to develop guys cannot be understated. Erica says it's getting windy in Chicago. Um, well, it's windy all the time in Chicago, right? But you're right. Uh, it is. Uh, my understanding is it's it's getting windy here as well. Space Boy, yes, Tracy has announced he is going to Purdue. It is official. Tyrone Tracy is a Boilermaker. He has announced that on Twitter. Mike3883 does from the Hawkeye of the Storm track storms. I did go storm chasing about a year ago. We had a, a tornado or two uh, up in the Story City area and uh, didn't do very well tracking that storm. I could see the tornado from a distance, but uh, it was an active day. It was a very active day. I have no, I am not endorsing ch chasing storms. I have no training in doing that. But yeah, it's an active day for our storm chasers out there. So hope everyone is staying safe. Ryan, how many stars is Hall? He is a three star, but again, offers from the likes of Washington, Michigan, et cetera. Um, I think he's underrated. He's one of the guys in this class who I would immediately look at and say, I think he's underrated. I think, you know, again, I'm no recruiting expert, but I see him playing at Iowa. I would be very surprised if he comes here and doesn't see the field fairly early. I'm not saying he's going to see the field his freshman year, but I think he will play here. I really do. I think he's that good. Um, how many stars is K-Ron? Let me pull that up because I, I don't have the answer to that. 247 has K Ron as I believe a three star. No, they don't have him, they don't have him ranked at all. Yeah, he's not ranked according to 247. I must have been thinking of someone else. And K Ron, um, it's interesting how these recruiting analysts look at these things because to not rank a kid who's got offers from Nebraska and Iowa, I mean, I know he's got a lot of power group of group of five offers. He got an offer from South Florida. Um it just surprises me. Now, if he were to commit to an Iowa, then I could see, I could see him being ranked right. Um, he's six foot five, two thirty five, and he is an edge rusher from Memphis, Tennessee. And Iowa doesn't really recruit in Tennessee a lot um, that I'm aware of. Now, uh, as far as who who recruited him, it was Kelvin Bell, according to Two Four Seven Sports. But again, I have not gotten any information on. K. Ron Crawford. So if anybody's heard, but again, I'm assuming yeah, I'm assuming that um, yeah, Kirk is talking, I believe Kirk is talking to the media now or he just got done talking about it um, and no mention of K. Ron Crawford. So I think it's it's pretty much a done deal that K-Ron is not going to be a Hawkeye. Um, because again, why would Kirk be talking before that announcement came? I just, I don't think that's going to happen. So um, K-Ron's likely going somewhere else. Um, kid from Briarcrest Christian down in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, that's okay. I mean, of course, that's one kid that Iowa was in on late and thought they had a chance at, but have not heard anything. And I'm going to... Uh, give this another shot here. See if I can pull any information up here, because again, he was supposed to have committed at three 30 and not heard anything here in the past 10 minutes. All right. Just got the word in here. K Ron Crawford has committed to Arkansas state. So perhaps somebody has that in the chat and I just missed it, but he has committed to Arkansas state. So I see this, this uh, comment from, the real Hayden. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this up here. He really was the last guy on the Iowa radar today.
Now, again, I, I I can't speak for Kirk Ferentz and how this uh, this recruiting staff how they operate, but you know, did they sort of wrap things up and tell K Ron that they didn't have a place for him? I I I can't imagine that they would do that the day of. But again, when you're weighing a bunch of kids who were recruiting on the on the last, well, it's not the last day of of sign, but it's it's the day bef- it's the day of signing day. I would think that this was a decision that they were just aware that Crawford was making and they just moved on. Because again, the announcement of as to the, the entire class was made prior to Crawford making his announcement, his commitment to Arkansas State. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Uh, Nick. Hey, Nick. How are you? Not bad. Hey, I just have a couple comments. Sure. You know, I'm always the, you know, the big Iowa hater when it comes to looking at stats because stats prove a lot, but... This Iowa offense under Kirk France, I think, has averaged 93rd in the nation. Something's got to change for us to take that next step. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I agree with you 100%. Have you, uh, are you new to the show? Have you listened in the past? No, I listen. Yeah, I'm Nick Steinkler, the one that comments quite a bit on there. Oh, okay. What, from, say, from what's your username Iowa, again? You know, home of Brandon Sheriff. Yeah, what, what was your, I, I missed your username, sir. Nick Steinkuller. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I think you know Nick ba- based on what you've heard me talk about. Um, it's not just one problem. You know, we want to identify the offensive line and play calling and clock management and quarterback play. It's all of it. It's all of it. And I, I, I think multiple problems require multiple solutions. And it's, in my opinion, now that this class is signed, sealed, wrapped with a bow, it's time to hit the transfer portal hard for a quarterback. That's my opinion. I agree. And, and uh, you know what? If I was Iowa, I'd call Proctor because I'm, I'm just telling you, I think they need to get Proctor to commit early, and then you're going to see the biggest domino effect ever. Just say, hey, say yes to us. Go visit everywhere else. You know, don't don't stop the kid from visiting other places. But, man, we need his commitment to further our process of getting some of the best kids in the nation to come here. You're talking about on offense, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, you get I, Jaden Proctor here, it, it's pretty much game over. For, for that her. matter, uh, Kyler Casper coming here would be not I'm not saying it would be as big as Proctor, but Casper is wanted by everybody as well. So I think, and I think they've got a great chance at both. But I don't think they're going to get a Proctor commitment for a while. So, um, God, it'd just be nice if he would just say, you know what, yes, and then you know, then you'd watch that domino effect. I know, I think Kyler's going to come here. Because his dad yeah. just loves Iowa, I do but, too. you know, you get him, and then you might see another huge offensive tackle that's ten spots behind Proctor come here, and maybe a an actual dual threat quarterback that we've never seen before thinks about coming to Iowa because he's got the protection, he's got a running back, you yeah. know, he's got wide receivers to throw to. You got Keegan Johnson. I mean, this could be it could be amazing next two years if we can get this sealed. Well, Nick, let's just say this. I mean, let's make it clear to everybody who isn't real in touch with the transfer portal. And I've talked to Mark Rogers about this yesterday. If there's any time for Iowa to go to the portal, if there's any offseason to do that, it's this offseason. You're struggling at quarterback. You've got good four-star prospects coming in, but one doesn't get here until 2023, and the other doesn't enroll early this coming year. So he won't be here until summer and fall camp. So if there's any time to do it, do it this year. The transfer portal is loaded with proven quarterbacks. We're talking Keaton Slovis. We're talking Zach Calva- uh, Calzada from Texas A&M. We're talking Adrian Martinez and Michael Pen- Penix committed to Washington. But there are a lot of proven guys. Bo Nix from Auburn's another one. The kid from a couple quarterbacks from LSU, both of which have played. Um, if there's any year to do it, I just don't know why you wouldn't do it this year, but... I don't know that Iowa believes it has a problem at quarterback, and I think until they accept that there is an issue there, you're not going to see any movement, especially in the portal. Oh, I agree. I agree. And and not only that, but I, I think the fact – I'll give Kirk Ferentz credit for this. I'm not a huge Kirk fan because of how, you know, he can never seem to take that next step. It's always – I was always under the radar. Well, how many times do – how many years, you know, do we have to be under the radar to finally be good, you know, <laughs> you know? You know what I mean? It, it I, seems like I, I every do. year, everybody's like, well, we didn't expect you guys to do good anyway. You know, every year it's like that. It's just like, why can't we just see 10 wins average this season? I mean, it. you know, yeah. I think we're getting too used to reading the same story. 
Well, I, I respect where you're coming from. I always, you know, I always bring up the fact that it could always be worse. Iowa, if Iowa, if Kirk Ferentz leaves, this program could go to six and six every year. Um, it, it, and honestly, yes, it could. And I, I give Kirk Ferentz credit for this. Those Parker boys, the defensive gurus that have been at Iowa, that's I, I know for a fact they've saved his job multiple times. There's a reason why he's so respected is because, you know, he's held on to the Parker boys. That's yeah. the only credit I can give him. Well, I think he deserves I, – I would disagree with you to a degree. I think he deserves a lot of credit for what he's done um, in de- as far as development, and I think he deserves a lot of credit on the defense as well. You're right. The coordinator, uh, the coordinator position is, is, uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, invaluable, especially at Iowa with Norm and Phil. And certainly his Kirk, he's got, he deserves credit for what he's done as far as hiring guys like Kelton Copeland and LeVar Woods yep. and um, Kelvin Bell on the defensive line as well. Um, I think he deserves credit for, for those staffing hires. And I think you got to give him a, a good amount of credit for what Iowa has accomplished. Yep. It's just as far as development. I know Chris Doyle was a part of that, but so was Kirk. So, I understand your frustration, was, though, do because you remember, do you remember who the uh, offensive line coach was? I think he was the head coach at North Dakota State, and we got him. Tim Polisek. Uh, yeah, have you noticed like our offensive line play went way downhill after he left? Kind of. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I've thought about that, and and you might have some. You might have. Um, there might be some substance to that. I'll tell you this: look back at the 2019 tape when Polisek was here. Iowa was terrible at guard that year. So yes, they were. Th- th- it, I don't think it's just Polisek. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, but they've been, they've struggled. They've struggled in multiple seasons at different times up front. And I think there's this narrative about Iowa that Iowa is just, oh, well, they're just a dominant offensive line, you know, in college football. And they rarely are. They have good pieces. You think about, you know, guys like Sheriff and, and, you know, uh, Brian Bulaga and Werfs and Alaric Jackson and of course Linderbaum now, but they usually have pieces. They don't usually have a line that's just stacked all the way across, as opposed to a Wisconsin that tends to always have a stacked line all the way across. So yeah, I agree. I think uh, I think Polisek. You know, we'll see if if, if Georgia Barnett struggles again next year. Uh, you know, gets because Georgia hasn't been here very long. I mean, he's only been here a matter of months, so they need to. He needs to uh, be given a little bit more time, and of course, work with these younger guys from the twenty-one class. But if the offensive line struggles immensely next year, then I'll I'll come back to you and say, well, maybe we maybe we made a mistake uh, with Barnett. But I, I think you got to give him at least another season to to uh, even get an indication of what he brings to the table. I agree, and let's just hope that Tyrone Tracy doesn't do a Purdue kind of thing against Iowa when he plays this next year because that could expose a lot of things. For if if he Iowa does that, off. let's yeah. If he does that, it's an indictment on Iowa. I agree, but yeah, I just want to call in. I always chat with you on the yeah. chat deal, so I might as well call in once. So appreciate you calling and do it again. Yeah, appreciate it. Talk. To Thank you, later. you, sir. Good call there from Nick, and uh, he's right. I mean, the offensive line needs to improve. I, I like I said, I give I would give. Kirk Ferentz a, a whole lot more credit than than maybe our caller did as far as just what he's been able to accomplish. I think we have to understand that, um, you know, the program wasn't in a great spot. Um, you know, it had a couple, well, one specific really bad season before Coach Fry uh, resigned. Um, and, you know, Hayden had brought so much to the state of Iowa in that program. But uh, Ferentz needed to work with it, and he did. And he got it to a point where now we're complaining about 10-win seasons. So not saying it's right or wrong, but I think you got to give him a little bit more credit than that. But it is, it's okay to be frustrated when it doesn't feel like Iowa can get over the hump. And at times, it does feel like Iowa struggles to get over that hump. They got over the hump this year as far as winning the West, though. And that's you got to be thankful for that. They got over... The, the West hump and they won it this year. They won it outright. There was no disputing it. Now they did get their, their butts owned against Michigan, but that doesn't take away from the fact that they did win the West. So you got to give them credit for that. 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601. We're over three hours in here. And I promise you this, um, we're going to be here through the four o'clock hour, but I, I'm telling you this, I'm going to pass out at five. So I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to stick around much longer than that. But if you want to call us, do so now you can talk about the class. You can talk about 
uh, Tyro and Tracy or the offense, whatever you want to talk about. 515-635-1601. A reminder to everybody, too, if you're here listening to our football coverage, join us following the Iowa-Utah State game on Saturday. Um, following the game for Iowa post game with Coach Gary Close right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm on YouTube. Of course, the game will be televised on BTN. Uh, Hawkeyes versus Aggies from the Pentagon in Sioux City. But again, join us for Iowa basketball post game with Coach Close. So be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on. 1977 Punks Unite. I love the uh, the uh, username there. According to the scholarship count, Iowa has four scholarships left. Any idea if any of those scholarships would be reserved for players in the portal? Well, um, Quinn Schulte is going to be on scholarship. That's just, he's going to be on scholarship. So I don't know. I'm, I'm banking that that's the correct number user. Um, that, that he, that that's the correct number. Um, I can't confirm that. I'd have to do some, some digging on the, the scholarship count. I know rivals has the Hawkeye report has that scholarship count up on their website. You can look at, but if that's the case, if they have four left. I'm sure there's a kid or two, at least it'll be awarded a scholarship, but I would hope that Iowa, Again, I'm assuming the quarterback is a position of concern. I would hope that I would make room for it. Let's go ahead and take our next call. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hey, Corey, this is Benson again. Yeah. I just uh, um, was listening. Did Tyrone Tracy pick a transfer destination, and was it Purdue? Yes, sir. Purdue. Wow. Okay. Yep. It, it, now you're going to get another number three back there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, he's not a David Bell, but uh, no, he's not. Yeah, I, I, that was a little surprising. Um, and lastly, well, it's, it's uh, back home. It's it's back home, Vincent. I mean, he grew up in Indianapolis, so um, it was the logical once they once they offered him, it was the right decision to go there. I mean, who? What? I mean, if you're a Tyro and Tracy, what school in the country would you rather go to? I think he's got an opportunity to play right away. He's back home. He's got an offensive genius in Jeff Brom. I think it's a perfect. I think it's a perfect storm for Tyrone. I'm 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 happy for him. Yeah, I I don't blame him. I just I for some reason I was thinking um, he would go to the to uh, Miami of Ohio since he's got a, a brother committed there. Uh, but no, it makes sense. I mean, he's an Indiana kid. Might as well go back home. And I would never any player, you know, even if they've been on the, just like Trace, you've been on the Iowa roster for a while. If they want to go back home to to play, I would never fault him. I that's. I would uh, wish him nothing but the best as well. Absolutely. Um, lastly, um, I know you guys were talking about some of the guys that have uh, another year of eligibility left per, I think, COVID protocols or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, is Jack Corner and Riley Moss, are those guys in that category? I know Hankins is not. Riley Moss uh, entered the Senior Bowl. He accepted an invite to the Senior Bowl, so he's done. If you play okay, in a postseason game, you cannot retain eligibility. And again, that was something that I confirmed because I had the same question. I confirmed that with the university yesterday. If you play in the Senior Bowl, you're you're moving on. So they lose both Moss and Hankins. Um, and I think you asked about Kerner. I have no idea about Kerner. I, I hope he comes back, but I, I haven't gotten a feel either way on that one. And is there anybody else that uh, us fans might be missing that that could come back for another year um or is it just those guys really um before i answer that question i want to let the caller that's trying to call in we only have one line open so if you're trying to call in now please just wait and then call us back as soon as we uh get off the, the line with vincent but in answer to your question vincent um yeah i'm sure there are i'm trying to think in my mind because obviously don't. i don't know who i had to look at the list of true seniors um you know, Belton comes to mind, but he's not a true senior. He's a, a, a junior who could declare early, I think. Um, you know, Linderbaum obviously is the first one, but I, I don't see that happening. Um, no, he's gone. He's gone. He, his stock is too high. <laughs> his stock is way too high. I, I agree. Um, yeah, Kerner's one. Man, I'm drawing a blank. Um, Kyler Schott. I, Kyler Schott's another one. Potentially okay. who could come back. Um I was trying to think of anybody else notable that could, you know, whether it benefits both sides, you know, somebody who may not be necessarily looking at NFL potential, but could really benefit from another year at Iowa. And we could also benefit that 
I think those are the only ones. But that answers that question, Corey. I, I won't keep you. I'll let your next caller come in. I just was still listening, and I hadn't heard Tracy went anywhere yet. But Yeah, I would say, Ker- to answer your question, Kerner and Schott are the guys that come to mind. It's a young team, so we don't have a lot of true seniors. It's a young team, so Kerner and, and Schott would be the guys that I'd be. And Belton, again, wait wait for that announcement from Belton when that comes. Okay, and then um, have you heard, has, has Mia been chosen anywhere to – I, transfer to? I don't believe so. I have not heard. And by the way, one guy I missed, Kelly Martin, I guess, could come back. I don't see that happening, but I guess it's possible. But no, I have not heard about Miaman. Okay. I'd be curious to see where he and uh, I'm really curious to see where Deuce goes because he had some some other Power 5 offers, you know, the, the likes of, I think Georgia was another one. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, thank you so much, Corey. I just want to clarify that. Appreciate it, Vincent, and uh, call anytime. All right, get that five-hour energy, man. You got another hour, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we'll we'll see if we make it. Appreciate it. All right, right, bye. Take care. All right. Um, Again, our line is open, so if you want to call, go ahead and give us a call. I see uh, we've missed some calls here. One, two, okay. Yeah, give us a call. Um, if you were trying to call us during that last caller, um, give us a call back again. And that's exactly what they're going to do. This, uh, Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Yo, what's good, Corey? This is Jackson here. Hey, Jackson. What's good, man? Nothing much. Uh, I just, I really enjoy your content, man. And it's nice to see a younger face uh, promoting Hawkeye football. So Appreciate that, great, sir. Man. Yeah, man. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask, what do you think the chances are that they look for a transfer portal QB? Like, what, uh, what would you say the chances are? Like Zach Calzada or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I spoke on that earlier. Uh, the chances, yeah. if I had to tell you what I think Iowa is going to do, I would give it about a... Oh, 5% chance that they're going to do that. Yeah, I don't think I they're going to do it. I'm thinking to myself, you know, old school Kirk, maybe somebody will get better. Um, I don't yeah. know, but I, I, thing, you know, you, you think I would love for them to better. do it. I would love yeah, for them to do too. it. Yeah. yeah. I just don't think so it'll happen. Realistic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, man. But I they just, could prove me wrong. But hey, they could prove me what wrong. What a good DB haul, man. What, what a good DB haul. Like, seriously. Yeah. Yeah, they're like I'm shocked that we pulled that many, and I think uh, in Wonka or whatever his last name is, I have trouble pronouncing it. I think he uh, pretty much sealed the deal on some of those DBs. I I think it didn't it didn't hurt, and I know Wampa was there this past weekend with Hall and and uh, you know a Stringa and a bunch of these guys. There were a lot of recruits on campus this past weekend, and, and you know it helped seal the deal absolutely. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, and I saw I saw I think I saw a picture of them all with Phil Parker. So I was like, damn man. He's already recruiting a couple of days and he's already recruiting, but yeah, I'm hoping maybe they get, they get somebody in the transfer portal, but you know, I, I think Kirk's motto is like, you burn us once. Why should we bring you back? And I mean, that's a rightful thing. Just like Will Levis, you know, they, he kind of burned us. Cause I remember reading an article that he, uh, he wanted to go to Iowa, but they picked up somebody else or something like that. Um, but I, I think that's Kirk's motto, you know, stick with the people we have, but yeah. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll see a you know a top notch guy go to Iowa, but you know, quarterback. But I doubt it. But they I think need the they need help at quarterback. Right. You're right on that. Yeah, yeah, I think the future is bright though for the position. Yeah, you know, we got a lot of people coming in. Absolutely, yeah. They've done well recruiting. Um, they've done very well recruiting at that position uh, with with again not just Carson May, but with uh, with Marco coming in in 23. So they've. They've got a future, but I think they need help immediately. That's just my take. Yeah. And then I just saw that uh, Ty- Tyron Tracy. I heard you talking about that. I went to Purdue. Oh, my God. Man. It's yep. like a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hawkeye fans are going to have fun with that one, right? Yeah. It's like I was looking at it. And I'm like, this has got to be a joke. Like, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't – if I played at Iowa, I probably wouldn't go anywhere in the Big Ten. But, I mean, that's his choice. I guess it's close to home, and, I mean, good for him. But Yeah, it's, it's back yikes. in his yeah, – yeah, I mean – Purdue is a perfect yeah. place to revitalize a wide receiver career, I would think. Yeah, what they've done yeah, with wide yeah. receivers. David Bell's burned us. All those people have burned us. So yeah. Hopefully it doesn't turn out that way. But I appreciate you taking the call, man, and keep it up, man. All right, man. Appreciate you listening. Appreciate you calling. And, uh, 
Yeah, he's absolutely right. Our caller's absolutely right. Purdue has had a track record of wide receivers who have consistently burned Iowa, whether we're talking about Rondell Moore. Although Moore never really did a whole lot against Iowa. He burned Ohio State, right? But he had dealt with injuries against Iowa a couple years. But Bell, Moore, um, I always forget the kid that burned Iowa in 18. Man, I always forget his name. Somebody's going to comment in the chat. That's fine. It, let, tell me who the kid in, in 18 was that continued to burn Iowa at wide receiver. Big kid, and I just can't think of his name. Very odd name. Um. All right, Hawkeye Kyle. This was um, this was about 20 minutes ago. He says, Council Bluffs here. The storm hasn't hit yet, but will any minute. Sirens going off across the river. Thank you for that update. Um, and uh, again, please stay safe. The real Hayden, according to 247, the best DB class in Iowa history, <laughs> obviously helped by uh, Nwampa. I can't believe it. I said Nwampa. It's Wampa, like Willy Wampa. Wampa still uh, impressed since we had zero DB commits before last week. You're you're absolutely right on that. Yeah, according to 247. So now that's went from, what, eight in the Big Ten to six in the Big Ten. That's a terrific class. That is a terrific class. And Spaceway 74, I have heard that ISU's class was highly ranked, and it was one of their better classes in the history of the program. I have not delved into their class and, and, the, and the personnel, but I have heard it's a good class. Elon, what have I missed? We're going to run through all these recruits before we sign off. Again, our number is or our line is open. If you want to call us, I'm going to throw the number back up here on the screen. Our number, if you want to give us a call before 5 o'clock, all right, we're going to be out of here before 5. 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601. All right. And you have missed a lot. You've missed an interview with Kale Crow, Iowa's uh, newest addition to its uh, future tackles um, on the offensive line. Okay, this is interesting. I, I like this comment. I have not heard Kirk speak. I have not heard Kirk speak. Let me just make that clear. According to the real Hayden, Kirk just said, never say never about taking a transfer quarterback and brings up banks. That's better than saying no. <laughs> you never know, right? That's why oh, I just felt my, uh, my blood pressure increase a little bit. That made me happy. That's a good thing. Good things happening here. Good things happening here. Hopefully that's hopefully that's true. I hope Real Hayden's not just trying to toy with my emotions here. He says, you guys really need to either look at the script or watch Kirk's presser. I will be doing that after we're done with the show. But don't don't go now. We're we're still chatting on here. But after we're done, absolutely go. And the real Hayden, thank you. This is this is clear. And I want to make this obvious to people. This is absolutely true. TJ Hall, Don Patterson was was the reason for the connection there. And I'm not saying TJ Hall wouldn't have gotten offered by Iowa, but I think Don Patterson, there's no question. Don Patterson sealed the deal. And so everybody loves Don Patterson. I love Don Patterson. This is just one more reason to love Don Patterson because his, his dad, TJ's dad, Terrence played football for Don at Western Illinois. And yet Don recruited him here. That shows you what kind of person Don is. That shows you who Don is as a, as a fan. He's, he's a Hawkeye through and through. And so, Absolutely. A big, big shout out to Don Patterson. All right. Just responding to a text here. And again, if I've missed your chat, if I've, if I've overlooked it, I apologize. Uh, Sebastian says some, somebody want to talk, well, somebody want to talk me off the ledge on losing Deuce. I really thought he had the potential to be a QB talent that we hadn't seen in Iowa City for a while. Um, was he no good, or did he just not get reps? Well, we'll never know, Sebastian, because we're not there in practice. I know he was the third guy on the depth chart. I know the depth chart doesn't go three deep at quarterback, but I'm disappointed too, Sebastian. I I'm extremely disappointed in the fact that uh, he transferred, because I think it would have been great for competition this coming spring, but you can't blame a kid like that, especially when Kirk made a comment that was – Sort of a dumb comment. It was just a, it was an inappropriate comment to make when he basically stated that uh, 
had Deuce ended up being the starter, he would have probably stayed home. I, Kirk would have stayed home in Iowa City. Of course, that was following the Nebraska game. That was not a good thing to say to about a kid who's obviously working his tail off and had the respect of a lot of his, his fellow teammates. So, and, and he apologized. Kirk owned it and apologized, but that certainly helped Deuce out the door. And so we'll never know. We'll, we'll find out what Deuce does somewhere else. Tyler, we should bring back C.J. Beathard. C.J. Beathard on this team would be very, very intriguing, wouldn't it? Um, all right. Uh, if you're not happy with this class, I can't help you. I agree. Absolutely agree. And just want to let everybody know, during this hour, here in just a few minutes, we are going to be joined live over the phone with Coach Don Patterson. So we are going to speak with Don, his reaction to the class, the commitment from T.J. Hall, so I want to ready everybody for that. So if you want to call in, call in now because we're going to have Don call in here in just a few minutes and the, the line will be tied up for a while. So if you're going to call, please call in now and uh, ask your question, share your feelings, whatever. Sebastian had this lingering feeling that Kirk Ferentz might have just refused to play him because Peterson Padilla had experience. Uh, he adds, I'd hate for him to have missed out on serious, serious talent because of that. Again, we'll find out if he goes somewhere else and, and really plays well. I guess that will tell us a lot. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hi, this is the outlaw Josie Wales from over by Sioux City. Yeah, it's outlaw 40. Josie Wales. You and I don't agree about wide receivers, Josie Wales. Yeah, I, I just Josie Wales is fine. That's fine. That's just my <laughs> YouTube handle. Okay. Um. I thought I better call. I was going to put in the movie Twister and have have a uh, bottle of Shock Top <laughs> Twisted Pretzel, but I think that might not be a good idea. How, so, what's the weather like out there right now? Uh, it's darker than crap, and it's uh, lightning and thunder, and it's uh, we're not supposed to get the worst of it. Omaha, and then going up through. Uh, you know, the Des Moines area and then on up into Minnesota is supposed to be the tornado alley risk. But right now here, it's just looks like a bad thunderstorm coming in. I actually live in Dakota Dune, South Dakota, but that's just 10 okay, miles yeah. from Sioux City. Yeah, um, absolutely. I have two questions, Corey. Uh, one, did I understand you right that uh, Riley Moss will not be playing in the Citrus Bowl? No, no. He is not coming back for an extra season. He'll be playing in the Senior Bowl, but I don't have any reason to think he's not playing in the Citrus Bowl. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry if I didn't make that clear. I have no reason to think he's not playing in, in Orlando. And last question, uh, are we thin at wide receiver, in your opinion, and I, are, are the Hawks looking to recruit somebody for that position that is a burner somebody that's got some speed well they're somewhat thin because they lost desmond hudson and tyrone tracy and as i just said that i think our lights just flickered in here so if i lose power just be aware of why um but uh no i, I don't think they're thin because i think they're with the talent they have i think they're it, it, a lot of it will depend too on if nico regani sticks around and if charlie jones takes an extra year if charlie jones leaves which i think he'll stay but if he leaves then I would say, yeah, maybe go after somebody in the portal. But I like the crop they have with Keegan Johnson, Arlen Bruce, Reganey, Jones, and then they got Jackson Ritter, who's not on scholarship, but got some time early this season. I think they've got an opportunity to be okay at wide receiver. But if Charlie Jones leaves, then I would agree with you. I think it's time to maybe look at the portal. But until that happens, um, I'm okay with where they're at. And they did add Jacob Bostic um, today, kid out of, I believe, is it Illinois? Um and uh, he's, you know, he's 6'2", 6'3", about 170. So he's got to bulk up a bit, but he's got an opportunity to, uh, you know, work his way into the rotation in the coming years as well. Thank you, Corey. Uh, be safe, my man. We'll All talk right. to you again later. You as well, and everybody there in Dakota Dunes. Thank you. All right. Good. Appreciate, it, our, appreciate our call there from the outlaw, Josie Wells. And I did see we had a, another individual try to call in when uh, he was on the, f the phone. But again, if you tried to call in, call us again now because uh, our line is open and we're going to have it tied up with Coach John Patterson here in a little bit. So um, please call in if you if you were trying to a moment ago, 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601. And I think we have our caller here on the line. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? 
Hello. Can you hear me, caller? Anyone there? Well, I don't think he could hear me, or I certainly couldn't hear him. Um, try to give us a call back. Uh, I could hear nothing but nothing. So I hope he's not being violently attacked in a storm. Let's take our next call. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the storm who's on the line. Oh, and then he just hung up. Well, I don't know what's going on at the caller lines. I hope it's people not um, calling, in, like I said, in the middle of a storm and needing help. Don't call me. Call the proper authorities. Um, again, 515-635-1601. Right now, I'm hearing absolutely nothing <laughs> when I answer the phone. So uh, give us another try here. Um, all right, let's get down to our comments here. Um, yes, absolutely, Elon. Go Coach Patterson. Again, he has been huge. The TJ Hall commitment, I got to give Coach a lot of credit. And I'm sure he'd sort of deflect some of that, but he deserves a lot of credit there. Uh, Jermaine Jackson, he brings up Terry Wright. He was a good one. He's not who I'm thinking of. And I think, was it Elon that had the right guy here? Let me pull up. Somebody commented it earlier, and I didn't mean to skip over it. Let me see if I can find it here. Ah, here it is. Thank you, Kenneth. The receiver I was talking about was Anthony Mahungu. Kind of an odd last name. And he torched Iowa in 18, if you recall. Iowa used like three different cornerbacks on him in one drive, and he still torched him for a touchdown. So Purdue has a history of doing that to Iowa, and let's just hope that doesn't happen moving forward. Brandon Stanley is much more of an athlete than Petrus. Padilla struggles, I think, because he simply is not able to see as much. He is shorter. Yeah, it doesn't help. You like to have a guy that can see over the line of scrimmage. But some of the best quarterbacks in the league right now are guys who are short. Okay, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray is a perfect example. I know those are sort of outliers, but there's more and more guys that are uh, finding success in the league doing that. Um, let's see here. 1977 Punks Unite. Caleb Johnson looks like the bruising running back with speed that Iowa has been lacking with Goodson leaving early. Do you think he has a chance for real playing time this year, or this coming year? Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll see what Ivory Kelly Martin does. I expect him to move on. I have been high on Jazzy and Patterson. I've been high on higher on Patterson than I have on Johnson, but both guys have had four-star st status at some point during this cycle. I would not be surprised to see those guys get a chance. And I think we're starting to see the results of what Liddell Betts wants as far as a running back recruit. An all-around guy who's strong. He's got, you know, I think Caleb and Jazzy and both, they have a knack for staying on their feet, breaking tackles while also having a good amount of speed. And they're kind of the, that tweener that you want at this level at running back. Um Hair Trigger brings up Purdue had a good recruiting class as well. So they're going to be right there in the West. There's no question about it. Um, again, if you tried to call in earlier, I hope our, our line is working. If you tried to call in and weren't able to hear me or I wasn't able to hear you, you the line's open. So give us a call back. 515-63-51601. And... K. Ron Crawford, thank you for this question, Hawkeye Nation, go Iowa. K. Ron Crawford has committed to Arkansas State. So, uh, and I see the real Hayden did answer that question, but uh, he has committed to Arkansas State. Spaceboy74, I love that Don is still a part of the recruiting process. What a guy, absolutely. He asks, would Patterson Johnson have more upside than Wager Robinson? Far too early to make that comparison, Spaceboy74, I hope so. Uh, we had a lot of hopes for that that young class with Wager and Robinson. Of course, both those guys ended up going their separate ways. But this is a really good class, a really good group of skill position players with Bostic, Caleb Johnson, Jazzy, and Patterson. Um, and it's got an opportunity to get even better into the following cycle if you can grab a guy like Kyler Casper. Uh, that would help the offense immensely. All right. We are going to get uh, last call for... Uh, Last, last call for a call before we get Don Patterson on here. I'm going to uh, get our number over here to Don. But again, call now if you, uh, if you have a question. 
Uh, otherwise, we're going to have Don Patterson on the phone here moments from now. Hawkeye Nation, go Iowa. How many recruits did Iowa get today? Um, well, I have to count them up. They got, what, five just today? So, you know, that's that's impressive. Again, I, I'd have to go back here and look at Cohen and Tringa, Alondo Trader, Brian Allen, TJ Hall. And then I'm missing a guy. I'm missing the... Uh, yeah, Landon Van Kikarix, if I'm pr- pronouncing his name correctly. So five guys just today, plus I believe 12. Are we looking at 17? Um, I want to say it's yeah, 17. Yeah, 17. And we'll run through those. But again, um, awaiting a call here from Coach Don Patterson at any moment. And of course, Don will talk to us about his thoughts on the class. And of course, specifically, TJ Hall. Does Iowa ever sign kids on scholarship? That's a good question. They, I believe they have. I mean, I remember they're bringing in Ryan Gersande on at punter. Um, but uh, I guess we'll get to that in a second because we do have, I believe, Coach Don Patterson joining us. Don, um, I, I would be interested to hear what the day has been like for you. But um, certainly let's start off by talking about your, your uh, thoughts on TJ Hall's announcement that he is officially a Hawkeye. Well, I'm very pleased, um, Corey, that he's decided to, to cast his lot with us. Um, I've known his dad, of course, ever since he was coming out of high school. And for that matter, I've known his mom a long time, too, because they were high school sweethearts back in the day. And uh, it's been fun for me to get to know TJ as well. He's just a wonderful young man, and we're lucky to have him. Uh, I will tell you this. A couple of years ago, Terrence contacted me and said, Coach, I want you to do me a favor. If I send you a video of my son, would you would you go through a thorough evaluation of him? And, and even after you do that, would you give us some recommendations on how to shore up his weaknesses? And, of course, I was happy to do that. And even then, he, he showed a lot of promise. But I do think he's uh, improved a lot, even from his sophomore year to now. So I'm happy that he's had such a wonderful high school career. He's the kind of young man that any any parent could be proud of. And uh, I think he's going to make us an outstanding player. He's long, Don. I mean, I've seen, uh, I think it's 247. Um, it, they list him at like six foot, but I've seen another recruiting database that lists him at 6'2". So, uh, you know, I think of a guy, that, the first guy that comes to my mind as far as recent Iowa defensive backs who were long was Julius Brents, who, of course, ended up transferring to Kansas State. Would you say he compares to Julius, and, and what does he bring to Iowa that's unique to the defensive backfield? You know, I don't remember that much about Julius. I, I'm not sure what years Julius played, or maybe he was a reserve most of the time, it sounds like. I remember him vaguely, but not, not anything specific. Uh, but I did make this observation. He reminded me a, a little bit of a guy I recruited years ago that the Iowa fans certainly remember because uh, this other recruit was also long and lean. Uh, his name was Merton Hanks. Okay. And if TJ turn, turns out as well as Merton, we're going to be in great shape with, uh, with the way he performs. Talk a, b- a little bit about Terrence. I watched a, a highlight reel of his dad, Terrence, playing for you. I believe it was a highlight from that LSU game, Don. Um, he was quite a receiver. He was. He was an outstanding player. I told our coaches when we when they were first inquiring about TJ, I said, uh, if he's like his dad, he's got great hands. His dad had super hands. He caught everything. And uh, he was a good route runner and, and a great young man. And he he was a very valuable receiver for us and played on some of our best, very best teams at Western Illinois. And um, we'd stayed in touch all these years. But I really hadn't had a lot of contact with TJ and – I'm sorry, with Terrence until recent recent couple of years. And we've been in touch for a while now. And – it was fun to see him on the weekend of his official visit. That was the Penn State weekend. Uh, that that worked out really well for for them and for Iowa. And um, and I had a chance to see him just last weekend. He was back in town uh, just to uh, I guess solidify uh, any any doubts he might have about this being the best place for him. Uh, so it was wonderful to see him again. Uh, his dad was an outstanding player and and. Um, I think he's uh, got the same kind of athleticism that his dad had. His dad was certainly a top-notch player and a, and a great person, and and that's what excites the coaches too. I know they. Uh, I made a comment. I was over today at the football office because I was 
turn in the analytics on Kentucky and discussing that and and of course discussing recruiting too. I I knew mid morning this morning that he already signed, even though it didn't become official, I guess, until the press conference uh, this afternoon. But but I made the comment and 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 Kirk agreed with me. I said, you know, the funny thing about recruiting, Coach Fry is the one that first said this. He said it years ago. He said the funny thing about recruiting, it seems as if the guys that do the best for us are the ones that are the most excited about being here. Yeah. And there's a lot of a lot of truth to that. Absolutely a lot of truth. Uh, it, just to have a, a unusual athletic ability is not enough. We need rare athletic ability coupled with uh, huge commitment and a determination to be as good as you can be. And uh, it all starts with just not not wanting to disappoint your coaches and not wanting to disappoint the commitment you made to your school. And I'm confident that, that TJ's commitment is strong. And uh, I think for those kind of reasons, I think he has a great chance to become an outstanding player. I'm I'm curious to get your thoughts since it is the early signing period, Don, uh, and we do appreciate you joining us here for a few minutes, but I want to get your thoughts on the early signing period. Um, what are your thoughts on that, that change? And I know there's probably more changes coming. Um, this perhaps could be the, the final of the uh, December signing period, but I know it puts more pressure on, select students or student athletes it puts more pressure on coaches how do you feel about the early signing period in december yeah the, the timeline is such now it's accelerated the timeline's so accelerated that you have a lot of guys making decisions of course during their junior year not their senior year and uh, i'm not a great fan of the early signing date for a couple of reasons one that comes to mind for me uh so many days make in my mind, pretty hasty decisions about changing coaches and their, their mindset, their rationale for doing it in midseason is so they can get the next guy lined up so he has a chance to actually sign people in the middle of December. Um, you know, I think that's unfortunate because in my mind, I'm sure that most players and coaches would agree with me. You know, a season is a 12-game a regular season stretch. And uh, if you play six games, you know, and that's halftime. You're only halfway through uh, what you're prepared to do. And uh, to be relieved of your duties after half a season seems unfair because, let's face it, things could change a lot from one month to the next. Absolutely. Um, Don, I don't know how, how much you've studied this. Uh, I'm sure not a whole lot because a lot of these guys just committed today. But this class, uh, I know you're probably not into rankings either, but the class has really elevated itself. And um, I got to give Tyler Barnes a degree of credit. The 2021 class ended up being a top 25 nationally, according to most pundits. And this class appears to be a top 25 class as well, from what we've heard thus far. And I go, and I know it's still early in the period because there's a couple more days left here this week. Um, what, what are, do you have any thoughts on, on the class and what, what Tyler Barnes and that, that whole staff have been able to do? Well, I do know that Tyler works uh, long and hard at it. He takes his job very seriously. And uh, I'll just sh share this with you. I can't remember exactly when, but it was sometime back in the summer. Maybe it was in June or July. Um, I was um, over at football one day, and and Tyler said, Coach, tell me what you know about T.J. Hall. And I said, I'm not sure um, that I know that much more than you do, but um, – you know, his dad played for me at Western Illinois and was an outstanding player and got a wonderful mom, too, because I know her as well. She worked in the football office at Western Illinois as a student. And um, um, I, um, I said, uh, I just know he's got very high character. I know he's a good leader. Uh, you know, he was a leader even within the student body, not just on the football team, but a, a leader within his, uh, his class. And his classmates certainly looked up to him. So I said, I don't see any any negatives at all. Um, and um, one thing you'll find interesting, one of the questions that, that Phil Parker asked me early on, or maybe Tyler brought it up to me first. They said, you know, we're impressed with everything we've learned about TJ, but our concern is that he's maybe just trying to be nice to us. You know, we don't want to go to the trouble of recruiting him if he's not really serious about, about giving – Iowa a chance to sell their program and and um, if he's going to give a serious consideration that's one thing but we don't want to we don't want to waste time 
unless we know for sure that that's the case. And I went right back to Terrence, you know, TJ's dad. And I said, I said, Terrence, uh, you know, Iowa football just wants to verify that TJ's serious about, about considering Iowa. And he said, he said, coach, he said, let me explain why he's serious about Iowa. Uh, he knows this, he knows that I played for you. And he knows that the offense we ran at Western Illinois was very much the same offense that we ran at, at Iowa. So in a crazy sort of way, he feels a special tie to Iowa because his dad played for a coach that ran the Iowa offense. And he said, I realize TJ's a projected as a cornerback, uh, but he still feels he has a tie to Iowa just because of the tie I have to you and because of the tie you have to Coach Fry. So it's just interesting that that, that was uh, – enough to really pique his interest, I think. And, of course, once he saw uh, – and, of course, the guys do a good job of recruiting. They do a good job of selling our program. But let's face it, one of the best sales tools we have is 70,000 people in Kinnick for a game against Penn State. That doesn't get much better than that. Absolutely. Um, what impact do you think that made? Because, obviously, Xavier committed, and he talked about that atmosphere that week. And I, I know we talked about that game leading up to it, and that well, this was maybe the biggest game at home and inside Kinnick since 1985. And then, you know, we got disappointed because you get your hopes up and then they lose two straight following that game. But now we look back and we see these commits of these kids that were there, TJ being one, of course, Xavier Wampa. We know Kyler Casper could be another one. Jaden Proctor was there. That day That day was much bigger than just what happened on the field, Don. Yeah, you're exactly right. Those guys really got along well. That's what you hope for, of course, as a recruiting coordinator, that these players – these recruits that are coming in, they have a chance to get to know each other a little bit. And of course, it's still going to fall flat unless the game, uh, you know, lives up to their expectations and the fan support, those kind of things, just the, the environment, the culture, the program. And obviously, we hit it out of the park that weekend with the way the game played out. And, and uh, those guys developed a friendship. And I don't think there's any doubt the fact that I don't know who made the first uh, verbal commitment to Iowa, but as, as those guys all made their final decisions, they all, um, and for one specific reason beyond just the sell of the program, the fact that they liked each other and appreciated each other and could see each other as teammates, that played into it also. And I think that's one reason we had such a successful weekend is those guys really bonded well over that weekend. Don, I've got two more questions for you, and then I'll let you get back to your evening. Again, we appreciate the time. Um, Obviously, Wampa jumps off the the page be, just because of uh, who he is and, and what he's been able to accomplish at Southeast Polk. And then, of course, T.J. Hall with his connections to you and his length and defensive back. And, of course, Iowa's losing Riley Moss and, and Matt Hankins, so they're going to need help at corner next year. Is there anybody else uh, that Iowa recruited? Of course, Carson May, the quarterback from Oklahoma, Caleb Johnson, the four-star from um, Ohio, or perhaps even Aaron Graves, the four-star uh, defensive end from Gowrie. Is there anybody else that you've seen that has jumped off the page to you on, in this class? You know, I'm afraid I, I'm simply not a good guy to ask, Corey, because I simply haven't seen them all on video. Um, you know, I've read about them, of course, like like most of our fans have, but I guess there's a lot of fans are more interested in seeing high school video than I am. Uh, I have great faith in the coaches. I don't doubt for a second that these guys all have the tools to become outstanding players for us. Uh, and the other reason I have great faith in the selection process, you've heard me say before, I think we place a higher priority on character than most coaching staffs. And I think in the end, character does matter. It's one reason that guys come so close to achieving their full capabilities of, of play. Uh, you've heard me talk about Marv Cook in that regard, you know, you want guys that are that are absolutely committed to being as good as they can be, and anything short of that is not enough. And we talked before about five-star players that that uh, don't pan out. And and I remember years ago there was a study done on the very top recruits, and basically it was about a 50-50 proper proposition. Some of them became great players, of course, because they had exceptional ability. Others never quite achieved the full potential because. It wasn't that important to them, or they made a bad choice in terms of where to go to school, or maybe made bad choices once they were there. Obviously, that's where the coaching comes in again. You know, your job is not just to teach them how to play football, it's to mentor those young men so that they make nothing but good choices in their college years. And let's face it, 
there's a lot of opportunities to make bad choices when you're a college student. Uh, but that's where the mentoring comes in. That's where it's so important that the position coach really is like um, like a father figure to the players or maybe like a favorite uncle, if you will. It's a close relationship, and it's all built on trust, and it's all built on love, and I think that gives us an advantage over a lot of teams we compete against. Absolutely. The last thing I want to ask you, Don, the uh, the news, and I know we'd heard rumblings of this earlier in the week, but Tyrone Tracy made it official. He is headed to Purdue. Um, I made the comment on this show, there's not a better place in the country for Tyrone Tracy to go and, and have a chance at revitalizing his career. There is not a better place in the country, in my opinion. It's his hometown, of course. Or his home. I shouldn't say hometown. He's from Indy, but of course, West Lafayette's not far away. And you're going to an offensive staff that has a knack of producing excellent wide receivers. David Bell is moving on. This is the perfect storm for Tyrone. You're just your thoughts on that that transfer. I think it's a wonderful choice for him. Uh, as you've said, you've heard me say before, uh, I would put – uh, Purdue and Ohio State at the top of the list in the Big Ten for pass offense. I think they're both exceptional. Uh, you might even argue that Purdue gets more out of their players than Ohio State because obviously Ohio State's recruits in general are a little highly more highly regarded than Purdue's. Um, but I also give a ton of credit to Jeff Brom for the, the way they game plan, the way they attack other teams. Um, I think they're they're outstanding in what they do, and that's how Purdue's been able to win through the years. In so many cases, they've had to outscore the opponent. Uh, and now that their defense has gotten better, of course, that's why you end up with an 8-4 Purdue team this year. And I certainly wouldn't want to play them in a bowl game because that uh, that opposing defense is really going to get tested by a Purdue offense that's really well-conceived. Well, Don, uh, again, as always, it's been a pleasure. And I know we'll talk uh, again over on the Iowa at the Voice of College Football Channel as we lead up to the Kentucky game. But thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, talk with us this afternoon. It's been it's it's always a great day to be a Hawkeye, but this class has been impressive. And thank you for your help in recruiting. I know it's, again, as you alluded to, is a big factor in TJ Hall's commitment. So thank you for uh, for what you've done. Well, it was my pleasure. You know, I, I, I explained to Terrence, Terrence was thanking me, and I said, Terrence, you, you got to realize you're part of my football family. And, and in that regard, you know, I'll be available to you for the rest of your life. You know, there's a, such a strong bond there. It's kind of hard for people to understand maybe the kind of relationship that a, a coach might have with his players. Uh, but hopefully if it's the right kind of relationship, it's a lasting relationship that'll be with them for the rest of their days. I, I know our, a lot of the listeners remember the weekend of the Minnesota game we had a 40-year reunion of our first Rose Bowl team. And it sounds crazy, I know, but some of those guys you haven't seen in 40 years, it's like you've never been apart at all because you just remember them so well yeah. for what they did for Iowa football. And and it's um, those relation, relationships that will stand the test of time. You know, those guys are going to be um, dear friends and special to each other for the rest of their days. That's just the, the nature of college football. Well, Don, now that you're done recruiting, <laughs> at least for now, enjoy the the fruits of what you've been able to uh, help with with TJ, and and we look forward to seeing him on the field. We look forward to talking to you here later this month. Always a pleasure, Corey. Take care, Coach Don Patterson. Love the uh, the uh, call from him, and and again, if you're just joining us, we're recapping here in the last few minutes of our show. Iowa football signed 17 athletes in its class of 2022. Um, and again, we're, you see on the bottom line here that we have typed out here, one five-star, four four-stars, seven three-stars, one unranked. I know you can debate, is Wampa a four or a five? Uh, Rivals has him as a five. I believe he's a five. Um, Aaron Graves is a four-star. Caleb Johnson, again, four-star according to Rivals. Carson Mays a four-star according to Rivals. Um, Brian Allen is a four star according to rivals. We did not give the nod to Jazzy and Patterson. He lost his fourth star on rivals. So he's considered a three star. So assuming he's a four star, if you want to go that direction, um, then you're looking at five, four star athletes and six, three star athletes. And then, um, Landon Van Kikerix is not ranked and boy, that's going to be a lot of motivation for that young man. And I've heard nothing good, nothing but good things about him from people who have been able to see him play. I've seen very limited information on him. Um, 
I see this comment from our user here that his tape is quite impressive. Any any thoughts on him? All I can say is he looks like a kid who can be used in a variety of ways. Perhaps they end up breeding him into a linebacker. Perhaps it's a, an edge rusher. I don't know. Um, somebody earlier commented that he could be a receiver. I don't know that I'd go that far. Again, I've not seen enough tape on him, but certainly an under-the-radar a guy, again, from the state of Iowa, you have to think that uh, he's uh, he's one. He, well, you know he's wanted. You know, Iowa used a scholarship up on the kid, and and I'm sure he'll produce once he gets here. And, and special teams is the way to the uh, way onto the field, and uh, all these guys are going to have a chance to get on there early. Uh, Don knows he's appreciated. Appreciate this comment from Spaceboy74. I let him know often. Yes, Don the Goat, absolutely. Um, and I just want to see. Again, in response to this question, 17, if you're just doing a 17 total, five more signed today for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Um, Valid comment. If you don't have guys leaving early, you're not doing it right. And I apologize to Oatmeal for Life here. Um, We'll have to make sure you comment this on our next live stream with Don because, uh, again, I didn't want to... Uh, Don just, you know, this is kind of a last minute thing to get Don on here. And I didn't want to take a bunch of questions, a bunch of his time. So be sure to ask this question next time we're live with him, Oatmeal for Life. I'm sure that Hayden had plenty of walk-ons and, and he could certainly he could speak on that. All right. Final review of what we have um, for the class of 2022. And I'm going to pull this up for everybody. Final review. We start at the top. And again, some of these guys, I'm not going to claim to be an expert on. Again, I got a lot of tape to look at because you got five new recruits that committed today, but I can give you a, a, a basic synopsis and then look for more recruiting videos right here on this channel from the Hawkeye of the storm, as well as Iowa at the voice of college football on YouTube. So stay tuned for that. And we'll continue to uh, preview uh, what, what has become a very impressive class for the Iowa Hawkeyes. All right. Class of 22. We start with the first guy who committed, Aaron Graves, four-star defensive end out of Gallery. He actually lives in Dayton, Iowa. Um, big kid, obviously 6'5", 270. I don't know how much how much bigger he can get. I'm sure he, he'll gain some weight. Does he stay at end? Does he end up at tackle? That's a question. But again, Kelvin Bell likes to make these guys interchangeable. His, he's got a great motor. He dominated competition in high school. Again, it's not the competition that uh, he's going to get at Iowa, but he did dominate when he played. So he's going to be a huge asset. I think he has a chance to see time immediately. Xavier Wampa. We all know Xavier five-star defensive back six, two, one eighty-five. Everybody wanted him from Ohio state to Notre Dame to Michigan out of pleasant Hill, Iowa. And again, played at Southeast Polk has a chance that recruitment, that commitment has a chance to help in Iowa's recruitment of Jaden Proctor, Carson may the four-star from Jones, Oklahoma upgraded recently on rivals to four-star status and, of course, he has an opportunity to help elevate the QB room. It doesn't sound like he's going to be um, enrolling early. I'm just going by what somebody said in the chat. I don't have that official from Carson. But certainly, uh, he's got a big arm, but he does put touch on the ball, which is nice to see. But he is a prototypical pocket passer. He's not a dual threat guy. I do think he's more mobile than a guy like Spencer Petrus, which will make fans uh, happy to know Caleb Johnson, four-star running back out of Hamilton, Ohio, six one two ten. He's a big kid. Uh, he he knows how to break tackles. He knows how to stay on his feet, but he's also got good speed for his size. He's not going to be a guy like Goodson or certainly a guy like Wadley that struggles to maintain weight in the Big Ten. So, and of course, he just up, was upgraded to four-star status according to rivals this past week. Caden Crawford, three-star defensive end out of Lansing. Um, Lansing, if in case you don't know, is near Leavenworth, Kansas. Defensive end, again, good motor. Kelvin Bell loves to recruit kids that have um, a solid motor. And, and again, he's a big kid, 6'5", 250. He's going to have to put some weight on. We'll see if he stays at D-end. I would think he would, whereas a guy like Graves is built maybe more to play inside and out. But we'll have to wait and see on Caden. And we will be um, talking to Caden. We have an interview scheduled with Caden here later in the week as well. So we're going to have interviews being released as the winter months dro drone on, especially as we get past the bowl game, stay tuned right here. If you're not already subscribed again, what are you waiting for? Subscribe because we're going to have interviews and, and, and discussions with um, a number of Iowa's class of 22 
recruits. If you just tried to call us, you tried to call us twice and then hung up. I don't know what's going on. If you're having issues getting through, but uh, you're welcome to call. Okay, let's get our caller here. Can you hear me, caller? Hi, I'm just calling this morning to ask if you're a supporter of the United States military. You're on a live call-in show. Okay, well, we're going to... uh, What in the world was that? Is that a different number than... That was I've not okay whatever and then they they didn't want to they didn't want to get the answer to the question they asked me a question then they wanted the answer they hung up whatever call us back if not that person but the other person that tried to call a couple times and then somehow hung up I guess um all right apologize for that let's move on to Jack Dotsler we talk with Kale Crow about Jack he's a big kid six seven he's going to be a, a tackle at Iowa he's not playing inside. He's playing tackle, another steal out of Wisconsin, a three-star kid. Again, very similar to Kale in that good motor. You, obviously, if, if you're playing for Iowa, I don't care what side of the ball you're playing on, you have to be able uh, to finish. And we see that with Tyler Linderbaum. He finishes every play, and I see the same out of Jack Dotsler and Kale Crow. But again, these guys are going to have to be exceptional in pass protection. That's where Iowa has struggled this year. And if they want to compete for playing time early, and, and I was proven. Kirk Ferentz has shown that he's he's willing to play linemen early. Look at Richmond, look at uh, DeYoung, and look at uh, Connor Colby. But if he wants to be able to do that, you've got to be able to pass protect. And so we'll see where Jack's development uh, takes itself. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hey, Matthew here. Um, I just had a question on offensive line play. I've noticed in the last few seasons, we've been kind of getting higher and higher recruits. And most of the time, it's been a three-star lineman we've been getting, but now we're getting some four-star. Do you think that's maybe the Tristan Wirfs or, you know, recent success in the draft? That's a good question. I mean, let's be honest. I always had success with uh, the offensive lineman being drafted for years, well before Tristan Wirfs. I think of, again, Marshall Yonda, Brandon Scherf, Robert Gallery. I mean, you can go down the list. Um, so I don't know how to answer that question. I think, again, I give a lot of credit to Tyler Barnes since he's been the recruiting coordinator. I think he's helped. Um, I don't really know. I don't know how to answer that question. I just give credit to this coaching staff. They're they're man, they're managing the land kids that maybe five, six years ago would end up going to a Wisconsin or even like with Wampa would go to a Michigan or Ohio State. And I give them credit. They're doing it. You, you brought it up. 2021 was an excellent class. And it starts with the guys up front. This class was really more defensive back. Um, it, they've just recruited very well these last two seasons. You're absolutely right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Matthew. Um, all right. Jack Dotsler. So we, where were we? We're Jack Dotsler. And then, of course, Kale Crow. We, we brought him up. If you missed our interview with Kale, um, go back in this. We'll, we'll edit it and we'll we'll throw it up on the channel later over on Iowa, the Voice of College football interview with Kale. But uh, certainly, again, he's going to have to come in here and pass protect. But he is all business. He will not be enrolling early, according to Kale. He said that on on this show. He will not be enrolling early. But once he gets there, he's going to have an opportunity, just like Richmond and gets just like those young guys on the line. Uh, they're going to have an opportunity. I am by no means an offensive line guru, and so uh, you hear my breakdown of offensive line play. I'm going to leave that to uh, the experts, and certainly we'll have those conversations with Don Patterson. Um, as we continue, and we'll have Don on over the Iowa channel later this month to break down the Citrus Bowl matchup. Jacob Bostic, this one excites me, 6'2", 165. So he's thin. He's a, he's going to have to gain some weight, certainly, to play at this level. But he's got the size of uh, the height, I should say, of a guy like Desmond Hudson. Obviously, he doesn't have the build yet of a guy like Brandon Smith. But he does provide that X factor that maybe Iowa's been missing. They don't really have it. He's going to be the tallest receiver, I believe, on this team. Brody Brecht might be in the 6'2", 6'3", range as well. Those two guys have an opportunity to to emerge as that jump ball type threat. And they had that with Brandon Smith, Hudson Lees, because he just couldn't get in the rotation. I know we've talked to Don Patterson about how important it is that you have a tall wide receiver. He kind of downplays it, but certainly Bostic has an opportunity to bring something that Iowa just doesn't have. And he get, does have good speed for his size. Addison Estringa, another kid we interviewed earlier this week. We'll be releasing that interview here on the channel in the coming days. Talk about flying under the radar. He's ranked like, according to rivals, like 1,134 or something like that in the country. Um, but again, a kid that's all business, overlooked by many. He was a big Wisconsin fan growing up. So you know he's going to have motivation against the Badgers. And he's going to have an opportunity because Josiah Miaman left. And I could say the same thing about Kale Vanderbush. At tight end, there are opportunities without Miaman 
They have Yelverton. That's it. It's Lachey, Yelverton, and uh, Laporta right now on scholarship. So Addison Estringa, and that leads us into Kale Vanderbush. Estringa 6'4", 230 out of Sun Prairie. Kale Vanderbush, uh, 6'6", 200. Big kid out of Plainfield, Indiana. A three-star kid is going to have an opportunity as well. Kale, you probably saw my recruiting video on him earlier in the uh, season. You know, he's going to have to learn how to block at this level. I'm sure you could say the same thing about Estringa. Both guys, excellent hands. Estringa was a wide receiver for much of his high school years. Um, Vanderbush, you know, he, he seems to have good hands, but he's going to have to figure out blocking, and that's just the case anywhere you go in the Big Ten when you're making that transition from high school to college. Let's take our next call. Hopefully they're there. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm, and they hung up. All right, I don't know what's going on. with the, All of a sudden, we're getting spam calls like crazy. So uh, we'll try to figure out why. Um, or we'll just stop taking the calls. That's, that's I guess that's a solution. We could just shut down the caller lines. Um, okay. Let's move on to Jazzy and Patterson. Again, he was a four-star. I th- This is one of my, throughout this class, he was one of my, um, I wouldn't say dark horses, but I was most excited about Jazzy and because of his ability to make guys miss. Um, again, kind of that tweener back, so similar to Caleb Johnson, Deerfield Beach, Kind of a tough year down there in at Deer, Deerfield Beach for um, Jazzy and that entire team. But I think he's going to ca- come here kind of flying under the radar. And again, you lose Tyler Goodson, you likely lose Ivory Kelly Martin. There are opportunities for a kid like Patterson, a kid like Johnson to emerge. Um, and of course, Gavin Williams, LaShawn Williams, Devin Hilson all will be competing for playing time as well. Jaden Montgomery, two-star linebacker out of Wisconsin, 5'11", 215. Don't look at the two-star status, folks. Look at the fact that he's a linebacker and that Iowa offered him. Phil Parker knows what he's doing. Seth Wallace knows what he's doing. Um, And again, they're not going to recruit kids that don't have high motors. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know as much about Jaden Montgomery as some of these other guys, but uh, you have to put faith in in the coaching staff. And they went out of the state to grab a kid that's a two-star. So that tells you something as well. Brian Allen, we talked about him earlier, a Connecticut kid, committed two-day, four-star defensive end slash outside linebacker, where he projects, I'm guessing he plays at end. He's 6'4", 250, a little undersized, but he's got a good motor and good power for his, uh, where he gives up, I guess, a few pounds, uh, if you will, on the line. So he's got an opportunity. Reminds me a little bit of Deontay Craig. He finishes plays well. Um, I could see him being a really good pass rusher for these Hawkeyes. Orlando Trader, three-star corner, played a lot of receiver in high school, which you'd expect. Again, long kid. I was getting some lengthy defensive back, six foot 185 out of Jackson, Michigan. Um, impressive that Iowa went into Michigan and got him. Again, had some really nice um, offers, I believe. Let me pull him up because since we're talking about him, um, Trader had offers from had an offer from Nebraska. That was the big one. Of course, he flipped from Central Michigan. Several of these guys flipped, including Alondo Trader. And I believe back to Brian Allen. Let's see what we got here. Well, I'm pulling that up. Let's see if we got our caller on the line. Do we have you, caller? Hello? Yes. Yes. Are you there, caller? All right. Tell you what. What we'll do is we're going to shut down the caller line because I think we got some clowns who think they're cute. They're not cute. All right, let's get them. Uh, let's get them out of here. We'll bounce them. How about that? Let's bounce the clowns. Um, all right, we'll shut down the caller line. Now we don't have to deal with it, and we'll finish our little discussion here as we cap off the four o'clock hour. Yes, Brian Allen um, was originally committed to Illinois, but he also had offers from a lot of other Power Five schools, including Kansas, Iowa State, Oregon, Purdue, Virginia Tech, West Virginia. Um, was recruited also by Michigan, Notre Dame, Cincinnati, Ohio State. Had a lot of high major offers. And again, this was a big grab. Um, Brian Allen Jr. today. And then again, Orlando Trader as well. All right. Almost through here with our recruits. I think let's let's get to our next guy here. All right. This one, another one. I, I, I'm not going to be able to tell you a whole lot other than a little bit of tape I've seen. Cohen and Tringa. An athlete from Wald Lake, Michigan, another kid they went into Michigan and grabbed. And here's what I can tell you. This is the biggest thing that I take away because, again, I've not seen a ton of uh, 
tape on in Tringa. Of course, he committed today, but Wisconsin wanted him. Michigan wanted him. Notre Dame wanted him. Utah wanted him. Syracuse, I mean, it's unbelievable. Maryland, a lot of offers. And um, again, um, Iowa managed to steal him from the grips of all of those Power 5 schools. And that is an impressive get, again, for this coaching staff. Um, and then finally, last but not least, I think this is our last recruit, Landon Van Kikerix from Rock Valley. Um, again, an athlete. Haven't seen a lot of tape on him, but we've had a couple of people comment in the chat and call in. A high motor kid, powerful. Again, kind of flew under the radar at Rock Valley, but he could play a lot of different positions. He's only he's only 195 pounds at 6'2". So they could play him anywhere. This is the definition of an athlete. I know he's listed at linebacker here, and he's unrated according to most services, but he is an athlete, and it'll be interesting to see how Iowa uses him. He could end up being Iowa's next great special teams guy with a name like Van Kiekerix. I guess it has to be it has to be true, right? All right, appreciate uh, I appreciate everybody and, and for sticking around here for as long as everybody has. It's been a great day for Iowa recruiting, and. Um, yeah, they're real hating. LOL spamming live shows. Isn't that, you know, isn't that nice? Um, all right. Well, again, appreciate the uh, discussion. Appreciate sticking around here throughout the afternoon. And again, if you haven't already, subscribe here. Iowa post game at the Voice of College Football, or excuse me, Iowa post game from the Hawkeye of the Storm, or our Iowa basketball post game with Coach Gary Close. And we'll be on after the Iowa and Utah State game which is Saturday. So subscribe, be sure to turn notifications on for that. We'll be sitting down with coach Gary close recapping that game. And then of course, uh, just subscribe for more great content, regular recruiting content, regular football and basketball content right here from the Hawkeye of the storm. Be well, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.